Act, the accounting officer would be either the CEC finance or any other person designated. However, what we have equally found strange, and I think one honorable senator pointed it, the CEC finance refused, and it's on the record, to submit the documents to the assembly in our submission on completely outrageous and frivolous grounds. The second matter we found strange is that the documents presented by the governor in answer to the charges are not authenticated by that CEC finance. They are not authenticated by the chief officer in that department, among other people. We also found it strange, Mr. Speaker, that when this matter arose, the governor chose to call our head of legal as the witness to explain, as opposed to the CEC finance. There is a question of goods supplied and services not rendered. We cited section 45 of the Anti-Corruption Act because it is one of the many sections that address this question of prepayments and the specific reason we cited it, Mr. Speaker, is in our very humble submission, impressed cannot explain the prepayment of 78 million shillings. And even if it were to be accepted for argument's sake, just for argument's sake, that impressed would be an answer, that would be an admission to abuse of impressed by the very definition of the same, because the law specifies what type of expenses can be defrayed by way of impressed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Chimera. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I just have uh, two questions directed to either the witness or the counsel to the governor. The response that you filed before us, Governor, uh, page 105 to page 112, on the if mispayments relates to just three individuals, yet what have been uh, given by the county assembly has many other recipients. Perhaps you can clarify on that. The other question I have is on the if mispayments. Their payments made to one Jane Karimi Kaiva and uh, on a particular date, I think the 20th of September 2022, she received payments totaling to about 3.9 million in one single day. Are these payments also if mispayments or the payments related to other services perhaps? If they are not, if mis uh, impress payments rather, how come the county government was paying this particular individual if mispayments as impressed and not in other form, maybe RTGS or any other form of payment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Council for Governor. <coughs> Thank you. The question I think uh, Mr. Speaker has been directed to either the council or the, wit the witness. I proceed to respond then. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the reason why we have given documents in relation to three people or three persons mentioned, uh, the answer is in the motion itself and the manner in which it was framed, where it was indicated the allegation was that uh, the, the governor has violated, grossly violated the law. Uh, in the following, through embezzlement of county funds through the governor's sisters and the nephew to the governor's husband, all of whom are collectively referred to as the governor's relatives. That was uh, A. B says is with the draw of county funds under the guise of payment for various supplies by the governor's relatives. <clears throat> So uh, the money in which uh, this um, particular uh, count was framed 
we were required to respond to the issues of the persons refund and collectively refund in the motion as governor's relatives and they were listed, they were enumerated there. So uh, if the motion indicated that the governor or the allegation or the claim was that the governor has embezzled fund through Jane Karimi or any other person that appears in the IFNIS, then we would have substantively responded to that. Thank you. Lastly, Senator Sifuna. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, to Council for the Assembly. There have been uh, repeated references to uh, alleged forgeries. Uh, this is specifically with regards to a work ticket whose serial number has appeared uh, severally. I want the Assembly to clarify whether those documents have been subjected to any verification pro pro process, which Council is aware, whether there is a document examiner's report to back the allegation or assertion by the Assembly that in fact those documents are forgeries. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Council for the County Assembly. Mr. Speaker, we only received those documents, I believe, on Saturday evening. So we've not had the opportunity to subject them to a forensic examination. However, you don't need to be an expert in forensics to point out that the dates in that work ticket don't follow natural chronology of events. You don't have to be an expert in document analysis if you're familiar with the frequency of the use of motor vehicles to know that the same work ticket cannot apply to different motor vehicles or even the same motor vehicle for a period of four months. And it is on those prima facie, on the face of it, discrepancies and irregularities that we concluded they were forgeries. The next reason why we concluded they were forgeries, these are documents that should be easily available in the governor's office. They were not availed to the assembly when they were requested and they were not availed to the assembly in the impeachment motion. We are being slapped with them at the tail end. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, counsel for the governor, you indicated you had four witnesses. You may now proceed to call your fourth witness. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Our next and last witness is Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the governor of Meru County. By way of time indication, counsel, how much time do you think you will need with this witness? I think that uh, with one and a half hours, I will be through with the witness. Swear in the witness. I, Bishop Kawira Mwangaza, do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before the Senate in respect to the matter before the Senate shall be the truth and the old truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you, Your Excellency. Kindly introduce yourself, uh, your full names and the capacity you hold for record purposes. Thank you, Speaker and Honorable Senators. 
I'm Bishop Kauro Mangaza, the governor of Meru County. Thank you. You have received the notice of impeachment and subsequently the County Assembly of Meru resolved to remove you from office through impeachment. Is that the reason why you're before the Senate today? Yes. You have had an occasion to look at all the materials presented by the county assembly in support of the impeachment. You've yes. also had an opportunity to file a response to that motion. Yes. That is the response before the Senate, the one dated 3rd of November 2023? Yes. Together with your affidavit in yes. support of your response? Yes. Would you wish, first of all, to affirm that the contents therein form part of your response? Yes. Thank you. You were also present at the Senate yesterday when counsel for the a county assembly described you in a certain manner through comparison with a certain criminal in yes. Europe. Yes, I was. Is that a true description of your personality? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Specifically, the council for the county assembly accused you of demeaning this house by making a mockery of the impeachment process that found you not guilty in December last year. Did you at any time make a mockery of the council proceedings? Council for Governor. No. Yes. The Council for the count, uh, County Assembly did apologize and uh, indeed uh, sought to have that record expunged. So as Most far as we are concerned, that particular record does not form part of the record. Most, most obliged. Then I withdraw that uh, line of uh, examination in chief and uh, proceed. Uh, Madam Governor, you have been accused of not being capable of working with leaders in Meru, particularly members of county assembly. And this particular allegation was that you were only able to work for a few weeks after you reconciled with the MCS. Is that true? That is not true. That is not true. Yes. To the best of your knowledge, for how long have you been having an harmonious working relationship with members of county assembly? We've been working together with the members of county assembly until the last almost two months only. The last two months? Yes. Are you talking about the month of uh, August and September? August and September. Yes. So it is your evidence that throughout the year, save for the two months, you have been in a perfect working relationship with members of county assembly. Extra perfect relationship working with members of county assembly. What made it possible for you to have this harmonious working relationship with the members of county assembly? Did you have any intentional uh, efforts to mend the fallout that you had with MCS. Did you make any efforts after the impeachment? The first uh, solution was made by this Senate the last time we were here, and I followed the advice of senators. We want to start down with MCS. We again sat and had a long, lengthy discussion with some other leaders, and from there we've been working together. Particularly, there was the issue of, for lack of better word, uh, word development fund. Were you able to facilitate development projects in all the wards of Meru County? Immediately after we left here, we facilitated or I facilitated word development fund to every MCA to the tune of 10 million, and this year, 15 million for every ward. Thank you. You have produced a video KMV1, which I now ask the technical team to play so that we see the kind of efforts and the fruits that were borne by those efforts. KMV1. Leo, Peter, 
We were in the premises of County Assembly of Meru with all the members, the 69 of them, and also the county woman representative was present, and we agreed that the past is over. We start working together for the sake of Meru. Thank you. And uh, that, can you remember the date of... Uh, Council, I'm informed the video is now ready. Th thank you, let's, Mr. Speaker, sir. Meona ni viema kuwa tuna embrace one another Mambo ya lio pita Tunasema sindwele ama tunasema ni Ya lio pita sindwele Duganga ya jaya Sisi ya lio pita ni past Kwa hivyo tumeamwea Kwamba hakuna mtu watakumbuka ya lio pita Yule ya likuwa impishti Walo walikuwa na impishana yote tumeweka nyumba Ya lio Tumesema ni kaende kaende ya maendeleo na kabati kabati ya maendeleo. Kwa hivyo tunafraa siku ya leo kuleta ujumbe kwa wameru ya kwamba we are one. Na tunaomba walio hii ambao walikuwa na celebrate maybe disunity wakae kando kidogo maana tunasonga tukiwa pamoja. Atuta kubali kuweka tena na fasi ya watu kuingiria katikati yetu. We've kept our personal interest kando for the people of men. Uh, mimi naitu Ayubu. Uh, kundi ni kwa hivyo wa mbuki ya meru na siku ya leo ni furakubwa kwa sababu ile shinda kidogo tulikuwa nae kati ya ofisi ya governor a excellency bishop kwa wera mwakasa na mbunge ile na ngoza hapa tumefika yu madeni mefika mwisho sema kuringana na uongozi wa his excellency william luto na depte wa katikachewa tulianza kuongea wiki moja umepita na siku ya leo mama safi au imelepa akatumwa na section zile katikachewa akaambiwa akuje tumalize ile maneno ilikuwa imebaki na kila kitu mmemaliza amen kwa hivyo sisi tunataka kuambia Meru na Kenya mzima yeah. ya kwamba sisi tuko kitu moja na tumekubaliana kwa miaka ine na nusu ile imebaki tutafanyia watu kazi na tutakuwa timu moja amen na tunasema asante kwa president ligadi gachagua kwa kuona ni vizuri meru yongee kwa sauti moja na governor ni malisi nikisema wewe kwa siasa wewe ndio kiongozi na ndiye mkubwa yetu sisi zote na sisi tutakuwa ni mayako tutakusupport wewe ukua mama yetu na ukua baba yetu ndio meru Ikae vizuri kana kumero wa karepoeka. Thank you and God bless you. Jina langu ni Evans Mwaira Karia. Ante wa mitungu wadu na kiongozi wa alio wengi katika mungile tula meru. Pameria kipeo. Na nataka kusema leo ni siku kupa sana 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 kwa wa meru. Sababu tangu tupanyo uchaguzi hapa meru. Uh, tukachagua governor, tukachagua MCAs. Hakujakua na amani na kujakuwa na kuelewana katika upande wa bunge letu la Meru na upande wa gavana uh, uh, excellency Kawera Mongaza lakini siku ya leo sisi tumekubaliana ya kwamba for the interest of Meru tuweke hayo maneno yote ambayo yalikuwa nasumbua tuwaachane nayo kutoka leo 
na tukamua kushikana na kuelewana kabisa ndio tuweze kufanyia wa meru kazi na sisi kama bunge letu la meru tumeambia gavana wetu kwamba sisi tuko tayari uh, yale ambayo yote yanahitajika kufanywa na bunge wale mawaziri ambao watukupitisha wale chief officers ambao hawakuweza kupita kuletwa katika bunge letu supplementary budget na mambo yote ambayo yanahitajika sisi kufanya kama bunge tuko tayari hata kama ni kuanzia kesho ndio tuweze eh, kufanya ku make sure that mayors uh, do receive uh, their services that they do need so much we, we can stop there pili, we can stop there thank you. Uh, thank you uh, are you able to identify the people in that clip are they members of the county assembly of meru they are all members of county assembly of meru led by the speaker ayubu bundi we have also seen the move of this motion in the, that clip the majority the majority yes. thank you uh in that clip is there any indication that you bragged about the fact that you went scot free no you have also used a certain slogan that you are now being accused of using kabati kabati kaende kaende did you actually use those two slogans in that in your speech with members of county assembly present i used it because it is it is a slogan for development the speed of development in meru the speed of development in meru it is kaende kaende kabati kabati just for us to be able to understand what does this slogan actually mean what is kabati what is kaende kabati means like accelerating to the fullness of everything that is high highest speed possible and then kaende kaende is non stop that is that the development will be non stop and at a very high speed thank you so when then the move of the motion comes here and tells the senate that kaende kaende kabati kabati is a don't care slogan that says you don't care about anything is that a misinformation and distortion of facts it is thank you let us proceed so so then you are uh seen in many instances using that slogan kabati kabati kaende kaende even the mcs have embraced the same slogan and they also use it thank you let us proceed and watch the next video and you have alluded to the fact that you agreed to give at least 15 million for every ward for development projects was that done it was done can we watch video KMV2? Anto ya ya kwetu ya oversight na jo. Ndenda kuburi ojo bwe. Muntu ureo kuthidiri oversight na ara na irobi ubisine. Na oversight yeje ture aja tukinyete nda kaseji. Ne oversight yeje kwenye to kwenda ne TV na na irobi kanane ya kweja kukinya morandi. Jona to kuona. Bure nda oversight ya ngira undine. Kana bure nda era ya ubisine na ara na irobi. Even yama ntuja yo tinda kuto yo oversight ka iri turaugire ba tu turi mbunge ya meru no ntubatwe itwe tunengeri mandate mca no nengeri mandate ya kuthi the oversight ya mirandi onde ya county government ikatiba ya kenya no boba nengeri isheria kinya report ire ra thoma kwa ya control of budget etibati kwa amba kuita ara senate ya kamba kuja county assembly ya meru report ire thithagi ya oversight ya senate ni report ya ke ya ondita njeneru na etira uma Kwa mantu ya ya ngiba turugira ova site kanere tuna siasa tufanye nini atutaki ito akiri gento kita kwa DTF na ara mitungu mantu ya otheru wa bioro na kinya babu na ibonete mantu ya orobira biaki na ndito akire plant ya na ara bioro bira bia ojura bikeja bikandrinwa ikaikwara mitungu project ya million 17 tingaringe nipe Bwaja ire roje wa mitungu rwa rweta kwa rota supply Ruaru ni yawa mitungu yonde iru di diru rehabilitation na project yu ni andere te kavana e fifteen percent dan project ya miru ni kumi na inya inya o mitungu e yeto boy thatu boga yata guma karinge ne ibuje karinge ne te karinge ne kara kanya ne kara kamuguru guma ara karinge ne oga yata muguru oga yata muchagara bara bara yu ni di diru na di diru na mbeche chia kavana ni yato kuita chia flagship. Na nidi dhe tuwe na interview percent na aru andu wawo inyaku kaura kana kukaro Tero pateta na andina yetu mirete shiringi milioni itano Ringa ringira ringa vana ampe Aipo kutara 
Tia ki nyengana mwa kata hai 17 plus 18 plus 5 Omwe nda ya kutara Naka seje ya nuto kinyete aja na haru eze Ere ya weto kwa matumo Keri imba mbridge Na yobo teko wana nire kiti ya Ibora una ero We can stop there The video is quite long Thank you Madam Governor Who is the person making that speech in that video? The majority leader and the person who was the mover of the impeachment motion. That is Honorable Evans Mawira. Yes. You are also seen in that video. Yes. Kinde, are you able to recall the date and where that event took place? I can't recall the date, but the event took place in his own ward. Which month was that? No, I don't remember the month. You don't remember. Yes. Is it recent or? It is very recent. Very recent. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mawera seems to be making certain remarks about your performance. What is he saying? He's very right because he's trying to praise the work that we do in Meru County. One, for the 10 million that we usually give forward development and the flagship projects. What I do as a governor is I go around all the ones and then give the list of all the development projects to the area MCA to read to the people to understand and to also for us to be accountable for the funds. Every word we do a visit with the area MCA and I usually carry a booklet of the projects that is word project and flagship project for the area MCA to read to the people to understand what they are doing. And that is what exactly the majority leader is doing in his own world. Can you recall the number of projects that he is mentioning by name that have been done in his particular ward? On that particular day, we were opening a bridge, just talking about the rooms done, and also the bowels, and so many other things that we did with more than 50 million. Thank you. I've actually retrieved the date of that event. It was the 2nd of August 2023, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so then, when you are accused of not being able to work with leaders, by the same mover of the motion, do you find some form of hypocrisy? Yes, and also maybe it's being misled. It's being misled. Thank you. So as of 2nd of August 2023, the mover of the motion thought that you're perfect and you're in good working relationship with at least all the MCS. Yes. Thank you. Let's move to KM3. Dam that costed us 39 million in his own word. Are you able to recall the date when you launched this particular dam at Mudara? I think it's three, not even three months ago. Less than three months ago? Yes. Thank you. Uh, now, I will move on to the second issue, which still touches on your relationship with members of county assembly in respect to projects and Okolea. Let us play the video KMV20. Kinyang'ani kwa ni 
and post the video you are making certain remarks and before we go to the remarks we have also seen the leader of majority again in that uh, video where were you with him on that particular day that is an Okorea program which is run by my family and my church we usually go to do the Okorea every Sunday afternoon and I always invite if they wish to come and join me on Sundays and with me is the Honorable Mawila, the mover of the motion or the impeachment who was also involved in that operation of Korea Kana Kamiru. This was on 13th of August this year, 2023. 13th of August this year. You are making certain remarks about the capacity in which you are in that event. Yes, I, I always tell them that in Operation of Korea events, they don't see the governor, but they should see their mother and also a bishop who is coming to assist, not in form of a government, but as a church and as, and as their mother. Did you explain the source of the resources that you were giving, including the microphone you were holding? I heard you talk about that. I always do that in every meeting, that everything that I use in Okorea, there is nothing that comes from the county government of Meru, because I've been doing that for the last 12 years. Thank you. May we proceed with that video? Aringa ringere mwari kama pema mbele mbeta kanisene Are ta shiri ingie mwe mwe ngiri eganare mwe Ambela kinya waga ongele ekia mbalisi ya kumahuta Kinya waga ongele ongele mbele ingeti ya bajojo Nani nga ringere wakarwe Thank you. I think we've had enough of that video. Thank you. Uh, Madam Governor, again you are heard and using the same slogan, Kabati, Kabati, Kaende, Kaende. Yes. The members of County Assembly were again present. Yes. Did they join you in that slogan? They joined me in that slogan. Did they understand the meaning of your slogan? They will understand the meaning of the slogan. Honorable Mawira is also making certain remarks about the funders of Okolea. What is he saying about who funds the Okolea program? He says as the county assembly of Meru, they are the ones that pass the budget and they have never passed any coin to be utilized in the Okolea program. It is purely my project to assist the disadvantaged people in our community 
and he, as part of the well wisher, that very early morning, gave me 100,000 shillings to fuel my vehicles. So he contributed towards your charity uh, project? Yes. Let us now move to the next video, 1C, and see another member of county assembly. I think it's in the same event you will confirm. 1C. <laughs> We can stop there for a moment. Thank you. Who is the person making that those remarks? He is the MCA and he was the mover of the first impeachment. He was the mover of the previous motion. Yes. This again is on 13th of August this year. Yes. Do you in any way seem to have any disagreement with the mover of the previous motion? No, he's even telling the public that he is now a changed man. They used to disturb mama, but he has changed from Saul to Paul. That is in difference to the biblical Paul, yes. who was one Saul. Yeah. He's also talking about them being forced, if, if I can uh, hear him correctly, to join the opposition. What was he talking about? He was talking about the pressure amounted to them by external forces or by external people that not belong to the county assembly to fight the government, but he has vowed not to repeat again and support the government. Thank you. Let's proceed watching that video. <laughs> We can, we can stop here for that video. Thank you. Honorable DMK Kyogora says, Mimi Sita Tishwa, Sita Weka Uoga. What was he making reference to? He was making reference to the leaders, the national uh, leaders, and also the party leaders that were telling them to keep, keep off from supporting the government. And also he is also talking about the Kumi Bila breaks because the people of Meru have started another slogan again, Kumi Bila breaks, and they were warned as MCS not to continue saying Kumi Bila breaks. So he's telling the people that come from Nairobi to keep off the one development. Thank you. We will be moving on to the source of that pressure sourcely, but finally in support of your Okolea program, let us watch video 1E. It's a very short video. How are you? Governor, 
kwenye na mombe. Tende tinga wana demolevi, tende ya mombe, tende ya mburi. Sikuinga yu na bikini yu na mburi ya liya. We, we, we can stop at that. Madam Speaker, who is the person uh, making the remarks in that video? This is the Speaker of County Assembly of Meru. And you confirm this was during an Okolea program meeting? Yes, in Mwanga Ndia Ward, Mojo. Who is the MCA Mwanga Ndia Ward? It's Mr. Njoki. Mr. Njoki. He was present. You also are in the company of other people in that? Those are all MCS. All MCS. Yes. What has the speaker just done? The speaker has donated a goat because I usually give the single mothers and widows cows. And he says because we've given and donated a cow and they are senior than me, let me donate a goat. And he has done it. Thank you. Again, what date was this? This barely around three months ago. Three months ago. Now, we have alluded to some forces that were behind, or others that were not happy with this unity between you and MCS. I want you to identify and tell us what is happening in the next video, 1D. Kind of May we play video one day? Peri MCA, go Karibu Santora ya Bogota East. Na mbuge otwe, on behalf ya Ntoma Bogota East. Na Bogota West, na wezangu pare aja. Tucho, keri enkado non tu poe kinya lereo kinya. Oni mbigiru en tomba kodera ante aja non to lereo kinya gatia. Kana kana kamu mero koringi dia gatia. Ipati akwa. Na imbuwa kweli imbati kuweja kuona na ndo nipati ya maendeleo dene ndura yetu. So ngabana uwea so hampo ni togwele tuwe sana. Baju tole ya msie tole mpia edi u. Na ikia tomi okuona na alwa dote na mantoa mainge. Na alwa intukue wokore ya kana kamu mero na mami ume nye baju tole mpia edi u. Na andena uwea ngabana toka amo kari ya na inya. Na ola kuombe keka kendo mba kwa boli tulangoge. Na ndo toa amo wagi ya thaya. Utoko na inyala hatu amo wagi ya thaya ate jaka wuko. Na na ande mbigi ilo eto ilo eto kaja si asa ande nuji eto mba ukani ya lima muntu wa ndo uko waja maratasi. Na ande kula ndo waka mateta ilo ilo eto uvira na nara maowa. Na ito abato mele na ilobi kutake ya imbi eto michukari ila itirie. Batake ya imbi eto miyogoti buku wangeroa. Koto kwa aliri yogoti. Inga wana baku eja uvira. Mbesa iku ekiwa seneti countess si yongeroa mbesa. Iba aregele kuangere, hindi bali uge ibeja ita kuwa basa. Ule basa iti mbesa hile ku. Kututu unina ku mandam gavana. Na wakageta mtu, otu ito uge ila toga. Tule, na wanga tuwa nyonge ula uwe ni ntobe mwero. Ala to mbako kira tuwa wu ito rangoge. Iyo to mbako chenja. Asro nga sika ula mwangasa uwe ni ntobe mwero. Oni nda ki uwe mbwe matu. Wa mbwe rani. Isa asawa. Na, we can post there. Mbwe beto nga store beto. We have seen the first uh, speaker, no, actually the second, the one in the black jacket. Are you able to identify him? He's the mover of the first motion of impeachment, DMK Kyogora. He has had making certain remarks about Kiberi and forces from Nairobi. What is he talking about? He's referring to the Meru and peace and also the senator that they should keep off Meru because they have their own leader maybe referring to the end of state and then the MCs have their own leader and he says last weekend they were in a certain town named Maua where they and the Kibiri the starting stake or spoon the meaning the governor and they are saying that they will not be part and parcel of what the members of parliament are doing. Thank you. So the Honorable Member for County Assembly, Abogeta West, talks about a force that is being 
uh, advance using the Kiberi tool. That is what he's saying. Yes. And he's telling them to keep off. Yes. Thank you. Let us move to video KMV 14. KMV 14, kindly. So, Andre Atokoromba, do Burungu Arimbere, Governor, na Deputy Governor, Bomba with Bajoata Naira, Nijeda to Bomba with the Korean Tomwe, Korea to Bembe, a Korean Tien, a Tonga River on the branch of Bodurite, and then a man in Mantua on the Agombegan, like in the Tuku and the Zaito Agulubian budget, Jazz Ganjiria, Nijeda Mwemba Bomba with Baita, I am in the Leo. So, Baba Goya, Namantua Kaveri, Kaveri, Mwana Kaveri Naso Government, Mwana Kaveri Naso Ketiania. Manto ye embe na rekane ayo, e embe tu kongangari kokaria mama. Non to embe zibeto odum piwa yoke kongwa kuma mama. Ende mungu aru mogeni ajo ato janga nyagili, ato vogi agili ato vogi ora mama. We are not ready. Ende ora kolo gubu tu gwe na kiberi kiu aya te kadi ana kiberi kiu kira to adi ana kio. Oke ang koram baneo iba imenyere. Lagi no kia kuli mandela wale tadi wale tadi leo. Ende manto a kiberi na ina kiberi ato vogi ana tadi embe ato. Ambedon <laughs> Thank you. You can post that video there. Governor confirmed that was on 27th of August this year. Yes, 27th of August. This year? Yes. Are you able to tell who the people speaking in that video are? Those are all MCS from Egembe, apart from one who comes from Central Unity. The Thank rest you. are Egembe MCS. They are making a specific grievance about Siasa Zakeberi. Yes. What are they talking about? They are talking about <coughs> the members of parliament who had just begun a movement by the name Keberi, coming all the way from Nairobi to Meru. And they are warning them that they have been given work to do in Nairobi. They should continue with their work there and leave them alone because they have only one mama who can assist them to do development. Thank you. So this was 27th of August, 2023. Honorable Governor, if then someone comes here and says that you only were able to work with MCS for a few weeks, are they lying or they are telling the truth? That is pure lie. Thank you. We want to understand this Kiberi movement, Siasa the Kiberi movement. And I want you to listen carefully to video 3A and see where or the source, the genesis of the Kiberi movement. 3A. Are you able to even explain what he's saying?
He is talking about that. They will use that thing too. I'm not able to explain. Because it has been done by so many, so many men, and now they are ready as members of parliament, him being the leader, to do that to me. And he has recruited so many young men for the purpose of that Kiberi movement, together with the deputy speaker of this house. Can we watch KMV 12? members of parliament and the deputy speaker of this honorable house is telling the public that I defeated the men and th in this case they are going to use that staring stick and they recruited so many young men for that purpose and they have been holding rallies almost in all towns in Meru, doing the same over the weekends. Honorable Speaker, I want to say this is purely politics. Purely politics. Thank you. Uh there is another video, I think that will be my last, 3C on the gender profiling and harassment. 3C. Only key that the American or a can, a camorera, like it was a morena de la gana. You want a boy? You want a boy? Uncle and Romana Cabela Mangata, Oten Vario, Ocavatia Mono, Mueno Gedata. You want a boy? So and Aqua can take a morena, Morea Bezu, Imoroku, Yaman and Way. Yabanto pronto a bori, agera mano mbele na kanyuju, agera bale, agera bala to tenja maloi, kanta tenja ba. Kana ko mto dala ubora masiara. Deko elega, nancho kembe na na keberio, kwa wake da kala kala kala, heke da heke da heke da, heke da kawira udire, heke da kawira kuwa heke da. Na alemera alume kawira, hangu ni oya kawira alume kawira. 
ndenda kenda menya wa mwekuru wale mwekuru mchorokwa eta wa mwenda na mulungete ke urenga wa yukandaka endukisha ndaka siakwa no mwekuru mukuru thank you uh the honorable member is making certain remarks about your husband what is he saying he's saying that he has given me nine months to be pregnant and if that is not done you will do it via what is holding Eventually, Honorable Governor, your deputy joined the movement and made similar attacks on you and on your Korea program. Can we watch KMV4? We can stop there. Thank you. Speak, uh, Honorable Governor. That is your deputy governor. Yes. He's making certain remarks about the Okolea program. Yes. What is he saying? He's saying that the Okolea program is a poverty program. They have refused it in the area. The area which, that, which area is that? That is again the south where he comes from. So he's telling members of his ward to reject the... To reject the poverty program that is Okorea and they should not be ready to receive anything in terms of Okorea. Honorable Speaker, to add to this, for the last 12 years I've been doing the Okorea and this gave me favor before God. And my deputy governor who was just a prison Ascari. God gave us favor because of this program. And out of the program that raised him for being Ascari to His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Meru, is the same person that is seen on video the campaigning or demeaning the same, same program that God used to give us favor before men and women. And he continues. And he continued and we watch KMV 15. 15.
video was played yesterday, but for your sake, can you explain what the youths are chanting, led by your deputy governor? That is my deputy governor, with some youths from his area, saying that Kawira doesn't have a home. She only does prostitution in the county and they are praising him and warming him up to be the governor or take over the position of the governor of Meru. So that you. is exactly what has been happening to our members of parliament, including the senator or deputy senator of this house. They have started warming him up to be the governor and take charge because I'm just a woman before them. Thank you. It got worse by slaughtering of a cow that you had donated. Can we watch KMV 16? Confirm whether that's the same cow you had donated and to whom had you donated them? <laughs> Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I see like the cow is still alive as it's being slaughtered. Yes. Was that the cow you had donated? Yeah, we were in the area of the Igembe South, and then we identified the old woman who was to be given the cow as it was entering into the field. Then they took the car, <coughs> slaughtered it just before us. And they are singing the same song, but they are also making other remarks. What are the other remarks? Before I say about the other remarks, is that Iyongombe Rikua in the Beba Ndama Yamesisita. And then they are saying that the same way they have slaughtered or killed the cow is the same way they will do to Kawira Mangaza. Thank you. We can have the video removed from the screen. <coughs> that has not also <coughs> been the only thing. You have also been accused of not being a proper meru. Are you aware of that fact? What? That you have been accused of not being a proper original Meru, therefore unfit to lead? Yes, they have been accusing me of not being a Marian, but a Kikuyu. Thank you. Let's, let's first watch KMV 5. You will make those explanations. Mon 
Kuna wale wana. Wana wana. Kuna wale wengi. Inaelewa aidha wa mgure. Hello. Mgure. Hello. Mgure. Kabla ya kawia. Umbe wa mgure. Mgure. Umbe wa mgure. Mgure. Baadhi ya watu hapa imekuwa baba ibwa kwa tobe uko mbiete. Hebu tuanze mbele. Ni sokere ya watu ya mwana wao au tapita kabilao. What is the honorable member of parliament saying in respect to your ethnicity? He says that the father of Kawira Mangaza is a Kikuyu from Sushi Kiridaini by the name Jogona and the mother is Mogore from Kikuyu and they don't want to be ruled by a Kikuyu in Meru that's why they want to change to get a real Marian who is Peter Gatirao Munya, the first governor. Thank you, uh, Madam Kawera. Is it then your evidence before this Senate that pressure has been asserted on members of county assembly to ensure your removal from office on charges that do not hold any water? Pressure has been mounted to members of County Assembly of Meru by the same leaders as we have seen, and they had no option apart from adopting an impeachment motion where they were forced to sign and impeach. Can we watch KMV 11 on the nature of? that threat and whether the MCAs indeed succumbed to the pressure. Na bunduki yao ina chochi ando cha kuromba. Baadhi ya watu wao ameni, ulat ugatu ila mbazi ni kila itu. Na ndio rudi ndo akila itu na bunduki sio kwa rombe tadi. Ukawa na yuko ala soka bunduki ndo ya ya bunduki. Dole ndole ka umogira bunduki sio sio ndiye. Bange ba ya ameni no menyenya tadhuri yake ama. Is that the same Saul turned Paul going back to being Saul? What DMK Kiyokora is telling the public is that because I was elected as an independent governor, I've been operating with hired guns. And now Medeka Rintori has taken his own, Kiraito has taken his own, so I'm left without any weapon to fight and I should be very careful because they have withdrawn their support as the leaders of political parties or as the senior most people in their parties. That is barely three weeks after DMK Kiyogora had been seen dancing, praising you, and saying that he will defend you and will reject it's any like, influence from above. It was like two weeks. Two weeks. Let us watch then 3E. Thank you. Who is the person speaking in that video and what is he saying? Is the Honorable Senator Deputy Speaker of this Honorable House? And he's saying that he might withdraw or is ending to withdrawing support of UDA members from being part and parcel of my agenda of development in my country. Was that withdrawal, threat to withdraw, made a reality? Indeed, after I spoke that, after three or four days, it was made a reality. Let us watch KMV9 on 
whether that support was, was actually withdrawn. KMV9. Number nine, we officially withdrew our support from the governor due to recent events and our and proven inability to lend uh, effectively. Our, uh, our, de our deaf honorable members are, are, are instructed not to in any way associate with the governor in person, Honorable Bishop Kawira Mwangaza. Number ten, we express support for the impeachment of the governor uh, Kawira Mwangaza for the best interest of the people of Meru, uh, Meru County and, and commit ourselves without reservation to this cause which we commence for the week. Uh, number 11, we support CS on our medical interest, political leadership and endorse the proposal to make in the county's spokesperson for, the, for a unified voice of Meru County. Number 12, we have learned the new found unity among political leaders except uh, Governor Kawira Mwangaza for the sake of peace and development. Thank you. KMV8, I think that is self-explanatory. KMV8. KMV8. Given instruction by our SG, who is uh, Honorable Kanini Kega, yes. that as you believe, forward with, forward with, I'm going forward with Jubilee withdraws its support to one Honorable Kawira Mwangaza. Kabla of December, the Kona Governor Mgirimpia. Because the Babu in Kitriansa Kitampo, not even see her papa. We were talking about the Governor. Those are members of county assembly and with them is one member of national assembly. I think he has spoken in Swahili and English. There is no need to emphasize. Was there a press conference formally by other parties to withdraw their support and I'm looking at KMV10 and I think that is my last video on this issue of withdrawal. KMV10. In this county, we have decided uh, for the, to withdraw the support within and outside the assembly that we are given our government. Number three, <coughs> we have resolved to start a fresh impeachment motion to the governor of Meru one Honorable Bishop Kawira Mongaza, and we have already signed, appended our signatures, the 27 of us who form or comprise uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, focus in the county assembly in preparation for our fresh impeachment motion. Thank you. The I think we, can, last we can stop there. Thank you. Madam Governor, <coughs> you have seen a series of press conferences by various leaders of county assembly all seeking to withdraw their support. Were the timings of these press conferences within the same period of time? It was within the same period of time. Can you remember the month? I think it's not more than two months ago. That is the month of September? Yes. What do you attribute towards the sudden change of heart from you being their darling, being a performer, being their mother, to now castigating you in the manner they are doing, to the extent of them withdrawing support. Is there anything gross you did to provoke them, to the best of your knowledge? I did totally nothing. And from the last clip, can hear the move of the motion saying that allow around 27 of them have already signed an impeachment that they are proposing to have. So they signed way back even before. That is what he has said. Number two, the pressure from members of national government, some few elites, leaders, some few leaders of political parties, the Deputy Speaker of this Honorable House, 
before God, I want to say they are misleading our MCS. Thank you. Governor, it go to the extent that even in the performance of your official duties, you are threatened and barred from performing that which you are allowed to do under the Constitution. Is that true? Yes. Can we watch KMV6 and tell us where you are, what you are doing, and what happened? We see you clearly there, Honorable Governor, and there is a young gentleman speaking. Tell us what he's saying and what you are doing in that event and exactly where you are. That is an event done by the county government of Meru. The county assembly passed a budget for us to take care of the disadvantaged mamas in our community. And that program is dubbed as one cow per one poor family. We go around the villages, we have a committee to vet and see the most vulnerable person in that certain area. We take a cow to the area and give or donate as government to that particular person that has been vetted by a committee that includes the area chief. Thank you. So this is not part of your Korea program for clarity purposes. This is not part of my Korea program. My Korea program we usually do on Sunday afternoon and this is an official duty. A program that has county government employees and done purely by the county government of Meru. One cow per one poor family. Was there any commotion or violence uh, in that event? There was no commotions. We started with the prayers, as you can see, and we went silently, we did not even advertise. Those are just the neighbors that saw what is happening and came just to see. You confirm this was in the homestead of one of the poor married women? It is in the homestead of the beneficiary. Thank you. Can we watch that clip again from the beginning all through to the end? So, Madam Governor, this is an official function of the head of the county. Why are the police disrupting your function? The same, same leaders. Doesn't specifically mention the leader that I'm sending, but now the influence from the national leaders led to this. 
So were you able to complete your donation on that day? I was not able to complete because it was stopped. And then when they say that we leave, We tried to explain. After three good hours in that vehicle, when people came, surrounded the vehicles, that is the time the officer said that it was a mistaken identity. Mistaken identity. But isn't the officer calling you by your title when he comes? Yes, he's calling me Governor Kuja. Governor Kuja. You actually pleaded with him to allow you to finish. You have 10 minutes here, Kuja, Kuja. And everyone was dispersed. Everyone was dispersed. That was, if I'm not wrong, a day or two before the impeachment. Can you remember the actual date? I think a day before impeachment. A day before impeachment. So that clip is not complete, cancel. Yes. I think we've not heard the officer saying as to why he had come to arrest me. You can tell us because you are present. We may not have the benefit of the full video, but kindly because it is a first-hand experience. Tell us the explanation you got from the officer as to why you were seeking to interrupt your official function. The officer was the area OCS, and then when people came in big numbers, the other bosses came along, and then he was asked to allow me to go. And then he also apologized before everyone that it was a mistaken identity. And I forgive him. Thank you. You have been accused of vilifying leaders. We have seen WhatsApp messages. You making certain utterances on WhatsApp groups. And even in one or two political rallies through the videos that were produced. Number one, have you vilified the leaders in Meru? Have you in any way vilified, demeaned the leaders in Meru? I have not vilified any leader in Meru. There was a particular comment you made on Facebook, on WhatsApp group, regarding the deputy governor. And you said, U Ujinga, Sita Kubali. What were you talking about? I was talking about him having or gathering young, young men going around demeaning the governor and calling me a prostitute. Was that a fair reaction considering what we have seen? Was it expected of any human being to react and defend herself in the wake of such attacks? Honorable Speaker, I'm not an angel. You must have feelings. Thank you. Let us go briefly to the responses, and I believe you have answered to all the response to all the allegations in your notice in your response that you first alluded to. You have answered. Confirm that you have answered. Yes, I have answered. to all the charges. I have answered. I want us to look at the first count, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. You came here and you also invited at the county assembly to answer to specific allegations. Correct? Yes. Those specific allegations in respect to embezzlement and misuse of funds are found at 10 A and B. Confirm? Yes. Embezzlement is A. Withdrawal of counter funds is B. Yes. 
those were the only particulars of the allegations that you are invited to respond to. These are the only particulars. So then you could not have responded to anything outside what no. was framed. I responded to the particulars or the charges. Let me read to you. Embezzlement of county funds through the governor's sisters, Rose Kenya, Miriam Guantai, Kenneth Guantai, Nefat Kenywa, Edwin Morangit. We will not go into whether they are your relatives or not because we did that in another forum. Was there any table of particulars to indicate how much money Rose Kenya received? when they received them, how they have not accounted in A and B, because that is the only place where we see the particulars. Do you see any particular place where you are told Rose received this much, Miriam received this much, Nefert received this much, Kenneth received this much, Edwin received this much. Do you see that in the particulars? There is no specific way or amount of money that is allocated to every person that the name appears in this accusation. What he said they did is to throw a bush of infinite inf infamous extracts and told you to look at those infamous, identify where Rose is, where Miriam is, Kenneth is, Nefat Edwin. Is that what they did? Just giving you an infamous extract? Just an infamous extract to do it by myself, extract maybe the amount of money for Miriam, for Rose, for Kenneth, for Nefert. Is there any mention in, in A and B where the amount of 78 million is mentioned to have been, that you are able to respond specifically to what you are facing? There is nowhere a figure of 78 million is being indicated in this, as for the Miriam Rose, Yantai, and the rest. Apart again from the IFMIS extract. It is only the IFMIS extract. You, yes. you have also seen the basis of their complaint. It is another complaint by Salesio Mutuma, who tables his own computation and files it with ESCC. Is that correct? Salesio Mutuma is an activist. He files a report to ESCC and the county assembly uses the same report that has been taken to the ESCC by Salesio to accuse me of embezzlement of county funds. Nothing else apart from the report by Salesio Mutuma. So then, even as you're making this re re response, uh, Madam Governor, it is only out of abundance of caution that you supply the Senate with what you thought was necessary. Yes. Did you even have the guide to lead you to where you are supposed to get materials in support of any claim? No. None whatsoever? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, was there any audit query or report that was generated by a competent body touching on embezzlement of county funds? No audit report, no other report apart from an infamous report by Saresio Mutuma, an activist, to EACC. But you have also taken time to explain what you thought the complainants might have been looking for, isn't it? Yes. And you have created a schedule that appears in your response. Kindly look at that. Appearing from what page? 105. 105 of our response. The small booklet. Yes. So, so then, the computation you did there is it conclusive or is it based on what you understood to be the case from the county assembly because there were no particulars it is not conclusive it is not conclusive yes the document again that you attached was there any particular order to which you are 
preparing those documents or you are basically looking at the if miss extract and giving what you thought was a suitable answer because there was no particular charge or request for you to look at any specific issue I tried my best to look at it so that I can give a feedback. Thank you. So had you been properly guided by the motion, you would have done a better job in giving them very specific answers to specific queries? Yes. Thank you. Let us proceed to the other charge of nepotism first of all let me ask you about this gentleman called nefat kenwa who has been said to be a brother-in-law to you do you know nefat kenwa no he's an employee of county government of Meru. he's an employee of county government of Meru. is he married to your sister none of my sisters are married your sisters are single so then nefat cannot be your brother-in-law no Edwin Mutuma, is he your nephew? Nephew rather to your husband? No, 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 no. You know very well the relatives, or rather siblings to your husband. I met him around four, five months ago. That is Edwin. That is Edwin. Yes. Yeah. So he's not, again... Uh, he's not your, a relative. He's not a relative. Your husband, and now that I'm a teacher, has been accused of vilifying other leaders through a musical performance. There was a video that was played. For the sake of time, I will not ask for it to be played, but you are also present. I want you to look at the relics of that song. And even before you look at the relics, you were present. Yes. That song to begin with was sung in the Kiswahili dialect. True? Yes. So there was no need for it to be interpreted. But Council, it's my prayer that we see the song so that I clear myself from that allegation. Very well. Can we play? I could be guided where that clip is. It was a clip by. As we wait for the song, Madam Governor, we will watch it. But did your husband make reference to any elected leader? He did not. Did he make any reference to any other leader by name? He did not. What was the first gentleman saying in his song, to the best of your recollection? That's why... But we have got the Kiswahili. Uh, just read a few. At page 251 of volume 2 of the county assembly's document. Very quickly, Madam Governor, I urge you to read. We are pressed for time. They want, is that for me? Yes, just, just read in Swahili. They want Kawira to come and help them still. Kawira is against it. And when Kawira refuses the I, I would I would love you to read the Kiswahili version. The song was sung in Kiswahili version. That is the translation. Kindly read the Kiswahili version. This is also a Swahili speaking Kila siku wanamtaftia makosa wanataka kawira awasaidie kuiba kawira akakataa akasema yeye hataki wizi wakati alipokataa wakasema wakaanza kumshimbia mashimo Wanataka kawira akule pesa nao, wanataka kawira wakule pesa za barabara, wanataka kawira akubali wakule pesa ya dawa hospitali, wanataka kawira awasaidie kukula mali yetu, 
igembe na waeleza ukweli kabisa mpaka sasa sikilizeni kwa makini wanapanga pia kuchukua maisha ya kawira wanapanga sasa mpaka kumuua kawira lakini najua maombi yenu huyo shetani ameshindwa katika jina la Yesu ati walikuwa wanasema tangu ile wakati ya impeachment ya kwanza kawira hajawahi kunywa chai kwa mikahawa ya Nairobi mara ya mwisho kawira kunywa chai mikahawa ya Nairobi ni ile wakati ya impeachment na hiyo sasa ndiyo inafanya maadui wake wakasirike kabisa eti wanamtaka kawira kuliko akuje okolea awe akienda Nairobi kule wakunywe nao chai na meza na pesa zenu Kawira naye amekataa katakata akasema kazi yake ni mashinani Wenye wivu wa jinyonge Wenye wivu wa jinyonge Is there anything demeaning or targeting any leader in those relics No nothing no leader is being targeted or mentioned by name Is it true that you are facing a threat to your life that the first gentleman in a musical performance passed that information It is Is there anything wrong in that in the in your husband coming to your defense when your life is in danger He should come and defend the wife Thank you You have been accused of particularly assigning diplomatic duties to your two sisters and qualified sisters yes you have made Uh, an explanation to that allegation can yes. you point out where that response is it's in page 10 As we peruse through Mr. Speaker sir Mr. Speaker sir, I note that my time is up. I'm seeking your indulgence for just more 30 more minutes for me to wind up. You need an extra 30 minutes? Yes, indeed. Most humbly, Mr. Speaker sir. Okay, proceed. Thank you. Tell us the response you have offered to the allegation that you assigned your two sisters diplomatic duties. I was invited courtesy call to embassy in Nairobi that is Slovakia while on my way I was diverted to attend a state uh, a, a function at the state house my, I can explain without reading yes, again the kind of proceed on my way I was accompanied by the county secretary of Meru my personal assistant my bodyguard and my driver and then on the way there was an urgent meeting i decided to attend the meeting first so that i can join the other team later the county secretary joined or went to to the embassy 
as I was finishing from the state house, they had already done with the meeting. So I did not assign my sister any duty. It is just because I had traveled with my personal assistant and also the bodyguard to attend the meeting. Did you later offer an explanation as to who attended that meeting and what was discussed in your Facebook at page 94? Yes. You confirmed that the person that attended that meeting and presided and had discussions was the county secretary. Yes. Thank you. Let us go to the China trip that you have been accused of sending your sisters and relatives to a tour. You got an invitation from a company. Yes, to to China. To China. Yes. Did that company represent itself as having affiliations with the Chinese government, to the best of your understanding? Yes, at first, in the first case, it associated itself with the, the national or the country of China. The state of China. Yes. You had planned initially to attend that uh, trip. Is that the position? Yes, I am planned to attend. But before that, tell us, how often do you travel outside the country as the governor of Meru? How many trips have you had outside the country from the date you were sworn in as the governor? I've only traveled once. To which country? South Korea. When was that? Around six months ago. What was the practice when you traveled? How do you travel? Do you travel with your team together? Do they travel in advance? What, what happened during your last trip to South Korea? For this specific one, I sent my personal assistant, my bodyguard, and the team in advance. And then I met them there later. Okay. Yes. Why did you send them in advance? For preparations and also to know exactly what I'm supposed to do and okay. arrange everything before I get there. Okay. Was that the case with the China trip? Yes, it was the case. So who traveled to China and for what purpose did they travel? Those who traveled to China are four people. One is the C Waziri for health. Yes. And one is the external linkages acting director, my personal assistant, and my bodyguard. Did you eventually travel to China? No, I didn't. You did not? Yes. Why didn't you travel to China? When my advance team arrived to China, it was contrary to what the Chinese people and the brokers the message that was given to our office was different because the private company or the people that came to visit Meru associated themselves with the Chinese government and upon arrival of my team there, it was contrary to what they said. It was just a private business company interested in investing in Meru. So the assertion that this was an opportunity for a cancer center to be established in Meru by well-wishers through a private uh, public partnership, is that the position? Is in the position. If at all it was a, a donor donating even a single item, I could be the first one to get there. But it was purely a business company interested in doing business in Meru. You have read the affidavit of your CCM, George Kekunda. Yes. He explains clearly that they even discovered that the people who had invited you did not even have a physical office in China. Yes, I've read it. That they took them through various uh, companies that manufacture items. Yes. Could not prove that they have any affiliation with any of those companies. They did not have any was it then safe for you to proceed to China with that information having been availed to you? 
to me it was a waste of time even though the company was offering full sponsorship but now going to china just because of assisting some people to come and do business in meru it wasn't a priority to me uh, thank you you have been questioned why the CEC or yourself did not seek any visa clearance to China. Do you have a Chinese visa? Yes. Yes, you do. So there was no need for you then, for the CS to ask for a visa to be provided. You already had one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The governor, the deputy governor, sorry, has also accused you of arbitrarily relocating his office from your from next to your office to another block changing the locks uh, let me just read uh, specifically number one he is accusing you of arbitrary reduction suspension and withdrawal of budgetary facilitation were you in any way involved in reduction and withdrawal of his budgetary facilitation no and i cannot do that in our office we have AIE Older, who used to be the chief of staff, and he does via other officers facilitation to our travels, facilitation to our offices, and it has been done according to the way I know things. In fact, yesterday during cross examination, it was discovered that one Nefat Kenya received a lot of facilitation on behalf of the deputy governor. Is Nefat Kenwa, an administrator in the office of the deputy governor. Yes, it is the deputy governor himself that suggested that Nefat Kenwa to be the administrator in his office. Thank you. You have been accused of threatening the deputy governor to inflict bodily harm against the governor. And this is in reference to one of the WhatsApp group that you said, Nitafinya Kieleweke. You remember that WhatsApp group, WhatsApp uh, post? Yes. What were you talking about when you said Nitafinya Kieleweke? You were also accused, to combine with that, of mobilizing Jeshi Yaku Maliza, Deputy Governor. What were you referring to when you said Choma Jeshi? Specifically, Council. I would like to see where exactly I have referred the Kufinya Kiereweke or the Jeshi to my deputy governor. So you deny make, making that particular The allegation is that it's to the deputy governor. Yes. Where exactly have I referred to my deputy governor? Thank you. Who then were you referring to or what was the context? I was referring to the kind of things going around in Meru County, the type of bullying that is going around. Of course, as a leader, you have to respond to some of the issues that goes around. Kufinya Kiereweke, what's wrong with that? Thank you. So you were not making any reference? To I was not making any reference to any particular person. You have also been accused of forcefully breaking, entering and ransacking the criminal or the relevant authorities for doing such an act. I've never done that. Thank you. Arbitrary relocation of the deputy governor's office. Is it true that there were reorganizational uh, issues in the office of the governor that so certain offices moved from one location to the other? Yes, there was reorganization after we earned a big team of acting chief officers. In where we have two blocks, the old block and the new one. And then the old block that has been used by the first governor, Kiraito Morongi, and partly by Honorable His Excellency Peter Mia. And that is where the deputy governor is, was relocated to stay. Thank you. Let us move on to the issue of accusing 
other leaders of being the 10 cartels in Meru in an event where the head of state was in attendance. Were you referring to the members of parliament? Because that is what was said yesterday. Council, why would one suggest that I was referring to anyone when I've not mentioned one? Who were you talking about when you said Kuna Makatel Zaidi Akumi? There's a certain story in Kimeru. Maybe to take one minute to explain. One person gives broke to his home, stole his own good, and then there was a chief's meeting with everyone in that village. And that old man, Akainda Mebeba Mkuki, Akasema Yakwamba, Katikatienu Minaona Kunamutu Ambaya Meiba Ire Mbuzi Yangu. Just in one matter, I will kill that person. Akujua ni nani. Mutumocha akachomoka tumaramocha akaenda. That's when now the man realized who the person was. In my case, when I talked about Makatel, I not mention anyone. I said this county will not be micromanaged by few cartels or ten cartels and few rich people to assume that Meru is the way they want to paint it bad. Thank you. I did not mention anyone. You did not mention anyone. That yes. is quite important. There are these WhatsApp groups in Meru, County Admin Services, Third Government, 012. Are you the admin of these groups? I'm not. I was added in that group. You were added in that yes. group? Yes. Is it an official WhatsApp group in Meru? No, we don't have an official WhatsApp group in Meru County. Did you at any moment incite or encourage any admin to remove the deputy governor? From I don't know even the administrator. Of, I was just handed. Thank you. Did you encourage anyone to demean or insult? No, 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 no. You did not. Uh, thank you. I'll not talk about... Let me ask you this question. It's quite important. It's the issue of sending certain employees of the county on compulsory leave. You remember that issue? Yes, I remember. You remember that issue? Mm -hmm. Number one, are you the one who sent these people on compulsory leave? I'm not the one. Who did that? The county secretary. The county secretary? Yes. Are you aware that they were sent on compulsory leave? I was notified after the county secretary sent them on compulsory leave due to some allegations that were reported to EACC. So you are not part of the decision to send these people on compulsory leave? No. But you made a comment on Facebook yes. about that issue. Yes. You confirm that you have appointed certain people to take charge of the revenue board. Again, the appointment was done same as the sending of the same for the people on campus and leave. Mine was to show or for people to know that these people are no longer doing or acting on behalf of the county government and these are the new team that is on board. Later on, you were subject of court proceedings in a case where these people cited you as a respondent and subsequently there were contempt of court orders issued. Why were you cited as a respondent in that matter? By virtue of my office, not even that single matter, but almost in all matters, I'm among the third or the fourth or the seventh respondent by virtue of my office. So does it point out to any personal responsibility or it is normal and ordinary for parties to file cases? against the office of the governor? It is normal, especially when it touches the county government of Meru. 
Indeed, Madam Governor, when you came to office, you continued defending cases that were filed against the office of the governor for actions that took place even before you got to office? When I got to office, I met 800-something cases in court. Those cases were citing the governor as a respondent? Yes. Did they in any way communicate that you personally had a responsibility to the action that offended the person who went to court or it is by virtue of the office? In all those cases, there is nowhere where I was directly responsible. Thank you. Lastly, we have an issue of appointment of the following person. But before I go that, I go there. Let us talk about the traffic marshals in Meru. You have been accused of creating this office called the traffic marshals without following due process. Did you commit that offense? I do not. I do not appoint anyone for the traffic marshals. That was a pilot project from the Department of Public Service. Just like any other governor or leader, you are mandated or you're supposed to launch a project. But I did not participate in employing any of the traffic marshals. Did, did you later seek the approval of the County Public Service Board to create this office? The County Secretary did it. And those discussions are ongoing? The discussions are ongoing. Thank you. Uh... And one council may ask who then were the drivers of the border border. We have the enforcement team and some few others that were piloting or were used to pilot the project. So we've never employed any single person to do that duty. Thank you. You have been told that you bear the ultimate responsibility even for actions of your CECs, county uh, chief officers, directors, drivers, your uh, chief of staff. What is your understanding of your role as a governor of Meru County? Of course, to provide leadership council and also even though in some ways I might be involved where I'm directly giving a direction, maybe via memo because a government has a way of communication. But in this case, or in all these allegations before me today, none of them that I have alluded my signature, neither given a memo for the accusations that are before me. Thank you. The very last, we have seen a lot of, and I do not wish to go uh, deep in it, but we have seen the county assembly trying to make, to make a big deal of some payments that were done on one day to Rose, to other members of uh, county, uh, county government. Is it that these people are being paid for forged impressed? Or why is it that there is an indication of many payments done on one day? To the best of your understanding, though you may not have the technical. In county government, Mr. Speaker and the Honorable Senators, we receive funds not uh, in one bunch. At times, funds are delayed, and some functions have to continue, like traveling, like meetings. And in most cases, we do or they do using their own money, like traveling. And then when money gets in or lands to our accounts, then they are paid. The issue of paying 10 payments in a day might have been a delay 
of payments which has not been done for a month or two. Thank you. When you travel, is money put in your account or it is deposited in the account of your peer or it's your peer who receives it? Since I became a governor, none of a single or no single coin has ever been deposited to my account. How do you travel? Who then receives that money for your facilitation? The PA. Thank you. The so administrators. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, sir, that is all for this witness. I wish to hand her over for closing examination. Thank you. County Assembly, you may proceed to do your cross examination. <coughs> By way of indication, Council for the County Assembly, how much time do you need? Mr. Speaker, if it finds favor with you, we request two and a half hours. You request? Two and a half hours. We only make this request, Mr. Speaker, based on the scope of the issues covered by the witness. They are not issues we can address in a short time. Our main witness, I think, was cross-examined for a similar amount of time. It's only fair for purposes of equality of arms. Let's try one, a, one and a half, and then we'll get it from there. The Honorable Governor Mongaza, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. Would you agree that the cultural structure and values and attitudes of the Mount Kenya community are substantially similar, even though there may be small details of variation? No. So it is your case, the culture of the Ameru, Aembu, and the Agikuyu are vastly different. Yes. Are their languages also vastly different, or are they substantially mutually intelligible? Different. Are they mutually intelligible? No. I put it to you, Kawira, that anyone who lives in this country actually knows there isn't much difference in the cultures, values, and attitudes of those three communities. What do you say to that? There's difference because, for example, in Mel we have Jorincheke. Do the Kikuyus have Jorincheke? They have Kiyama, and I'm sure you know even the Jorincheke is also called Kiyama. It's just a difference of names. Anyway, Governor Kawira Mwangaza is the governor of Embu a man or a woman? A woman. To the best of your knowledge, is this woman governor being hounded out by some misogynistic male leadership? Unless she's here to testify, I cannot testify. To the best of your knowledge, has the woman governor of Embu been impeached three times? Has she faced three impeachment motions in the last one year? I know of one Anwai Guru who was impeached twice. Let's 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 stick to Embu for now. Has the governor of Embu faced the re impeachment motions in the last one year? No. Nakuru equally as a woman governor, right? Yes. It has a huge population of Mount Kenya diaspora, true or untrue? True. true. Has that woman governor in Nakuru faced three impeachment motions in the last one year? No. Kwale as a woman governor, true or false? True. The people of Kwale are Bantus, just like the people of Mount Kenya, correct or incorrect? Correct. Has that woman governor faced three impeachment motions in the last one year? No. 
Oma Bay, which is a different cultural area, as a woman governor, correct or incorrect? Correct. Has she faced any impeachment motion in the last one year? No. As a matter of fact, Mary itself, as an elected woman MCA, correct or incorrect? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, has that woman MCA in Meru encountered any backlash from a toxic masculinity to wound her out of office? Several times. Have you adduced that evidence anywhere in your response? No, because it was, it was not part and parcel of my response. Meru as a woman representative, correct or incorrect? Correct. In fact, you yourself were a woman representative of Meru for a whole five years. Yes. Did anyone try to recall you because you are a woman? No. Good. Let's go to, you just told Mr. Speaker, it's more common story in Meru. Tell me whether you know of this story, which is also very common in Meru, of a woman who would beat her husband, then scream, and because the society is socialized to think it is the man beating the woman, they, and she has locked the house, people would think it is the man who was beating the woman, while the truth was the other way around. Have you ever heard of that story? No. Of course, you've never heard of it. <laughs> Because it's not convenient. <laughs> Let's agree, Governor Kawira. For argument's sake, for argument's sake, without conceding, let's agree the MCAs are indeed acting under the influence of external people. Would that mean your sisters never received the monies we allege? Pardon? If we, are, we, we temporarily agree for argument's sake that the reason the MCAs have impeached you all these times is because of toxic masculinity and evil motives and malice and whatnot, we want for argument's sake in my next series of questions to work on the assumption that that is true. If the MCAs are malicious, would that be an answer to why your sisters were receiving monies irregularly from the county? No. If the MCAs are intimidated or influenced, would that be an answer to the count on usurpation of statutory functions of the County Public Service Board? No. Indeed, Governor Kawira, the motivations of the MCAs, you will agree, are therefore irrelevant as long as there is evidence in support of the charge. There is no support in the charge. That's for the Senate to decide, but assuming there is evidence in support of the charge, is it your position the charge would fail because... Even though there is evidence the MCs are driven by an ulterior motive? Is that what you're inviting the Senate to do? Assuming the Senate believes you're an innocent victim of evil machinations, does that undo the evidence against you on the charges? The charges should have evidence. If they have the evidence, my question is, would evil intentions on the part of the MCAs 
and do that evidence? Would the evidence cease to exist because the MCAs are acting maliciously? No. The answer is? No. No. So you will agree with me, therefore, the case against you should be decided on the evidence, not on the motivations of the MCAs. Yes, on the evidence. Thank you very much. That's a very useful answer. Let's go to the complaint by Celestia. Mr. Speaker, that would be from page one of volume two. You just told the Senate that the reason you did not account for the entire 78 million is because the motion only related to your sisters. Is that still your position? Yes. Did you read volume 2 as you read the impeachment motion? Where is the volume? Did you read the battle that contains the assembly's evidence? The evidence is the influence extracted by Celestio. Correct. Yes. In fact, the impeachment motion says the evidence is in the complaint by Salesio, correct or incorrect? Correct. It would mean, therefore, the impeachment motion must be read together with the complaint by Salesio, correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Can you refer to paragraph 11 of the motion? Eleven A, can you read it to the Senate? Yes, I can read. Read it for us. Eighty seven of sixty eight evidence of the governor engagement, convenience and complicity in the proceeding. Two gross violations of the Constitution, three, two gross misconduct, three gross abuse of office to be found in accomplished by the Ranira Saresio Mutuma to Ethics and Corruption Commission on 11th August 2023. So you agree you are given sufficient notice that the assembly will be relying on the complaint by Celestia in the motion itself. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Fair enough? Incorrect. We, we said it's okay, we can live with your answer. But let's go to the, to the complaint by Celestia. Can you go to page 4, volume 2? What does it say? At 2.5? Four for you. It refers to Kadure Rukaria Catherine, isn't it? Yes. It is therefore correct that you had prior notice there is a complaint by Celestio regarding payments to this particular person. Did you or did you not receive this page 4, volume 2, Governor Kawira? Either you did or you did not receive it. I want to see the charge first because the charge talks about embezzlement of funds by it, relatives. Yes, we, we move from the charge to the evidence where you are already referred to the complaint by Celestio. The complaint has to be read in its entirety. The 
the, 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 the author of the IFNIS report, Saresio, in the IFNIS report, we have more than 100 persons who have received the funds. And Especially all these 100 persons are persons working in your office, correct or incorrect? And these 100 persons are not mentioned in the impeachment. Fair motion. enough, fair enough, Governor. Mm -hmm. Do these 100 persons work in your office? I'm Either they do or they don't. I'm not aware of everyone who works in my office. Good. But does page 17 indicate these are transactions by persons who work in your office? At the top of page 17, does it show that these are transactions by persons who work in the office? Currently, county government of Meru, we have 6,000 employees, and I cannot know every person by name. Uh, Governor, unfortunately, you don't have the luxury of ducking my questions. My question is, does this if miss indicate in black and white that these are transactions by persons working in your office? I don't think Either it does or it doesn't. I don't think so. Can you read the top, the very first item on that page 17? Yes. Read it to the Senate. Vote. Vote. So small ones I can't see. I don't mind if your assistant can Good read night. for you. Okay. She can read for you. Vote 3562 Meru, Office of the Governor. You will agree, Madam Governor, the document itself indicates it's about transactions in your office, not another office. In my office? Good. Fr from July 20. 22, when yes. I was not the governor of Meru. Yes, and while you were seated here, we pointed out only 12 transactions lie in the previous regime. All the others have happened when you were the governor. Correct or incorrect? And that's why, council, you want me to know everyone who, including those who worked in the previous regime from this document? Uh, you won't get away from this, Madam Governor, by being clever. Can you see page 17? You confirm the transactions begin on 1st July yes. when Kiraito was the governor, yes. right? Yes. And it follows like that, 1st July, 1st July. And when July ends, the next entries are for... 20th September 2022. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Correct. You are the governor as at September 2022. Yes. It must therefore follow that for all these hundreds of transactions, all of them except the first 12 happened during your tenure as governor of Meru. Yes. Good. Let's go back to the complaint by Celestio. At page four, Celestio talks of withdrawals by Kadure Rukaria Kadrin. Correct or incorrect? Correct. And he has analyzed them. And most of them are indicated the payment description is not applicable. Correct or incorrect? Correct. In your understanding of government accounting and PFM, should public money be expended and the accounting description is not applicable? Council, I'm not an accountant. You are the governor, unfortunately, so answer my question. As the governor of Meru, the way I understand is that after this IFMIS report, if it's a genuine one, of which I doubt, follows an audited report. Before me, if it was an audited report, which clears or rectifies any mess that is in IFMIS report, then it could be a question.
that I could be easily able to answer. Does the county government have access to IFMIS? Yes. In fact, your junior officials have credentials to IFMIS. Yes. Therefore, they could easily have just logged in and printed the correct IFMIS if your case is you doubt the authenticity of this one. Correct or incorrect? I repeat again that IFMIS extract is not the final document. That's not that my question, Madam Governor. The question is would your CEC finance, would your chief officer finance, would your own chief of staff, who is the accounting officer in your office, do all these people have login credentials to IFMIS? They have. Good. And therefore, when the assembly asked you to present the IFMIS extract, all your officials needed was to log in, print, submit. Correct or incorrect? There was a reply by the... There is a reply, answer my question. All they needed to do, if there was any reason to doubt the authenticity of this IFMIS, was to log in and print. Council, do the assembly rely on IFMIS? Madam Speaker, I ask that the witness answers the my question. Account. I don't want to have an altercation with her. I need your protection, Madam Speaker. Madam Governor, just answer the question, please. They have the right to print the... Yes, the and therefore you will, you will acknowledge all they needed to put this matter to rest if there was no embezzlement was to log in and print. Correct or incorrect? Correct. But instead of doing that very simple task, your CEC and your officials, what they did is to manually type their own figures instead of those on the system. Page 105 of your response. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Are you saying the document at page 105 of your response is a system generated report? This is generated from my office or from the Salesio? It is from your office. It's in our response. It is in your response, Madam Governor. In your response, we are dealing with the IFMIS report by Salesio, the activist, or a report from my office. If I, if I unpack your own defense for you to answer the question, I don't know Madam Speaker who is answering questions. In your defense, you actually rely on the report by Celestio, and in addition, you have brought something you have manually typed, which is a parallel document, not the one from IFMIS. Council, you are insisting that she has typed and she's saying they did not. Can, can you re-ask the question so that she can answer that? On its face, the document in your defense, is it generated from IFMIS? Or is it manually typed? Because that should be clear from the face of the document. This is the summary of IFMIS payment. It is not an extract from IFMIS, is it or is it not? It is an extract of the IFMIS. Does it have a timestamp? Time stamp? And if timestamp? Yes. Where is the timestamp? Show it to us. Just the voucher number, the pay. Expense. I'm not talking about voucher numbers. I'm talking about a timestamp. System generated report from IFMIS indicate when they were printed, when they were downloaded. They leave a footprint. Who keyed them and when? You will agree, Madam Governor, so that we save time. Your document is not system generated. And that's why I said you typed it. If you refuse to answer the question, I'll proceed and invite the Senate to make whatever conclusions it wants to conclude from that refusal. Council, you can put it to her and proceed. There? You can put it to her and proceed.
Madam Governor, I'm putting it to you that you're refusing to answer this question. I'm not refusing to answer any question. I put it to you, you are dodging my questions. Which one particularly? Whether the report at page 105 of your defense is a system generated document or a document typed on a desk by someone. It's a system of a summary of IFMIS payment. We'll leave it to the Senate to see you to believe on that so that we don't spend all the time on one issue. At page 10 of our volume 2, how much money does Celestio say Catherine Rukaria irregularly withdrew from the vote for the office of the governor? 29, there is a total there. It is how much? Can you read it for the summit? Grant total payment made by Catherine Rukaria, 29-018-714. How much does he give as the total that was withdrawn from your office during this period covered by the IFMIS? Grant total paid to the county government of Meru. Yes. That is one, one eight eight million. That is the grant total paid to the county government. Read the exact figure. What is the exact figure? Eighty eight million six hundred nine thousand three seventy three. And he says the amount withdrawn by just one Catherine Rukari is what percentage of the total? It is indicated there in black and white. Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. Yes. Let's go to lead and cover, same page ten. Again, Celestio has outlined many payments where the description is not applicable. Correct or incorrect on the face of it? Correct. Let's go to page 12 that involves your sister. Celestia has again listed all the specific payments to your sister. Correct or incorrect? Correct. And again, most of them, the item description is not applicable. And on the if means the description is prepayment. Correct or incorrect? Correct. And what is the total amount this is of yours? 2,769,000. Is this amount smaller or bigger? than the total amount for the impress you have submitted to the Senate. This amount here of 2,769,000, is it smaller or bigger than the amount you have accounted for? Let me see the, the booklet that I have accounted for. You have only accounted for 2.6 million, Madam Governor, <laughs> for all the relatives, and yet for just one of them, the amount irregularly disbursed is 2.7 million. I'm putting it to you that the, 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 the sum of the amount of money you have accounted for, for all your relatives, is actually smaller than the amount paid to just one of them as per this document. And as per this document, which is an infamous report, the audited report clears any error that is in this report. We have cases in this same report that you are referring to, some of the payments named as hospitality payment, which are Hospitality surprise, hospital surprise rather than hospitality payments. We will rectify the mess which is still 
in your evidence booklet named as hospital surprise rather than hospitality surprise. Governor Kawira, who is, who, is, are... who is responsible for inputting transactions on IFMIS at Meru County? PFM Act Section 103 gives the responsible person to correct the measures. It so establishes it... the CEC -E -C ah. finance is the end and it makes all decisions. And the Public Audit Act 31 spells out the audit process for documents to be tabled before Parliament and Assembly. So you will agree with me? So this IFMIS report must go through the audit for us to get a final copy that can be relied by this honorable e Except house. that's not the question I asked you and I agree with you. But you agree the answer to my question is that it is your officials who enter the data in this IFMIS. Who is right now? Is yep. it our officials or the activists? Answer the my question, Ms. Madam Speaker. Please. Answer what is your question? My question is whether it is county officials in Meru who keyed in the data on IFMIS. Uh, Governor? Yes, it is the county officials for our case. And therefore, you will agree with me if there is any misrepresentation of hospital as hospitality in IFMIS, the person that should take responsibility for that is your own officials, correct or incorrect? Correct, and that's why we have another process. I have received my answer, audit. Madam Governor. You have said it's correct. You have given an explanation that the reason your officials and relatives receive all these payments is by way of impressed. That's why on IFMIS it is captured as prepayment, isn't it? Yes. Are you aware an impressed is to be surrendered within seven days? Prepayment council is money requested for activities not done, and after the activities have been done, the accounting person accounts for every coin before receiving any other money. Again, you are dodging my question. The question is... Was it, isn't an impress supposed to be surrendered and accounted for within seven days? Surrender of impress are surrendered within specific days? My question is very easy. By law, should an impress be surrendered within seven days? It's either yes or no. Should an impress be surrendered and accounted for within seven days? What's your answer, Madam Governor? I'm not sure if it's within seven days. Fair enough. You will also agree with me. This report covers an entire year, financial year, July to the date, the last date there. Correct or incorrect? Correct. And therefore, if payments made in September last year by way of impressed still appear as prepayment, the only conclusion that arises is that those impressed were never surrendered and accounted for. It is the only accounting conclusion that ensues, Madam Governor. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. And the reason is that you cannot receive funds from the Treasury before surrendering everything that you received earlier on. As a matter of fact, Madam Governor, so that I show you you're a liar, can an officer be given an impress without accompanying hard cash?
repeat again is an impress given with, is an impress when an officer takes an impress aren't they given cash is in that way it is indicated as a prepayment because they have been given cash to expend and later account it depends whether the it is yes is or no madam governor can one be given an impress without a cash disbursement to them would you call that an impress it is a prepay prepayment madam your governor i put it to you you can't have it both ways it is your case that all the reason these items appear as impressed on ifmis is because they were by way of impressed isn't that your defense madam Council, governor can you ask clearer what what is it do you, do you what question do you want her to answer the the question madam governor which i'm putting to you is that your answer that officers take impressed and then later on when money is disbursed from treasury they are paid that is why they are paid several they appears what is uh, the question the Put, question are you putting it to her or you asking i'm putting it to her madam speaker that your answer cannot hold which you gave in chief that the reason your relatives have several payments on the same day is because money is paid after the event and after there has been an accumulation that cannot be correct because an impressed is is always supported by hard cash so it is given on cash basis so the question of waiting for money does not hold madam governor these are prepayments and these are money requested for activities not paid before and when money arrives to the county government they are paid for example if i'm traveling today from here to a certain destination we will use our own resources and later surrender the documents for the person concerned to receive the payment let's Travels use your own example madam governor pose there if you travel today on your own money which will be refunded later would you be given an impressed for spending your own money you will be paid for spending that's your not money. my question madam governor you are going on a trip and we all agree it happens every day on your own money to be refunded later are you given an impressed on that occasion when you're traveling on your own pocket to claim later you will be given impressed if there are some goods you are required to buy on cash and the amount of money that the council we are discussing is the office of the governor where there are no projects apart from the usage of money by way of travels and other things like purchase of items in the office of the governor no project is done in the office of the governor how else do we expect the office of the governor to work or to receive money if not by this form i which did is, ask you is any question formula. madam governor about projects we are talking so can you can you uh, wrap up on that question and can you uh, I, I think the Senate might be able to appreciate the issue of impressed. Uh, I request that you move to the next question. Uh, <coughs> Madam Speaker, my name is Moreru, and I have a few questions for the Governor. Madam Governor, we were told by the 
your witness, the CEC for Legal and Public Service Management, that the originals of the surrender documents are with the auditors. Is that your position? Yes. And he told us that the originals that are with the auditors are signed. Is that your position? Yes. So if the originals are with the auditors and they are signed, where did you get these surrender documents that are not signed? Council, what happens after you surrender the impress? When you surrender the surrender of the impress, you have a voucher that is of in your documents attached to your files, signed, verified, and examined by an examiner. I think those are the documents you have. Are they examined and verified? No, the documents we have are not examined or signed by the director of accounts or by the chief officer of finance. And if your, if your testimony or your evidence is that the originals are signed and they are with the auditors, where did you get these copies that are not signed? Can you have two documents, one which is signed, the original, and another document that is not signed with respect to the same transaction? Of course, every person has to keep a record of what maybe you might be asked to give and give it out. So you would agree with me then that the documents you provided here are not a proper record or representation of the documents that are with the auditors? And that's why we no, have... No, there is no question. Would you agree with me then that the documents that you've provided here, because they are not signed, and the ones that are with the auditors, the originals, are signed? then these documents, obviously, are not a proper representation or copies of the documents you submitted to the auditors. They are the same documents submitted to the auditors. Uh, Madam Speaker, I think at this point I'll invite the Assembly to make the necessary conclusion. Governor, you can turn with me to page 295 of our volume 2. And my first question, Governor, is whose responsibility is it, by law, to appoint chief officers? Is it your responsibility to appoint chief officers? No. By law, whose responsibility is it to appoint chief officers? Public Service Board. <laughs> Governor, maybe I can clarify there mm -hmm. that the position of the law, if you check Section 45 mm -hmm. of the County Governments Act, is that the governor appoints chief officers on recommendation of the County Public Service Board. Yes. The County Public Service Board advertises. Yes. They, they shortlist. Yes. They interview. Yes. Then they submit names. And in, in fact, in your case, they submitted three names for every department. Yes. To the governor for formal appointment. Yes. Correct? Yes. So who does the actual appointment? The governor. Yes. The document on page 295, now that you agree that it is the governor who formally appoints chief officers as by law. You will then ag you, you, you will agree with me, Governor, that the document on page 295 emanates from your office. It is signed by the county secretary for our excellency the governor and it communicates your decision as governor to appoint certain individuals as chief officers some in acting capacity some in substantive positions correct council i would like you to it's a yes no question governor so that we move there's no so you have not appointed these persons i've not appointed okay I'll defy you then to number one, Naomi Kamunde that is appearing. Ca can you read aloud what the document is on number one? I want to read from slide three above number one. Okay, you can start there then. Redeployment. Okay. Redeployment, go ahead. Or maybe your assistant can do it. to improve on efficiency and effectiveness in the service delivery, 
the following changes have been agreed upon. Okay. Naomi Kamunde to move from office of the governor, director of protocol, to perform to perform functions of chief officer, office of the governor, awaiting substantive chief officer. Okay. Yes. So, by this letter, Naomi Kamunde is to move from the office of the governor, correct? Yes. And perform the functions of chief officer, mm -hmm. awaiting a substantive chief officer, correct? Yes. And we've agreed that the power to appoint chief officers resides in you as a governor. Is that appointment? No, we have agreed that the power to appoint resides in you as, uh, in you as a governor, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it your position that in appointing chief officers in acting capacity, the governor need not consult the county public service board? In this case... No, it's a yes no question, governor. Is it your position that in appointing chief officers in acting capacity, the governor need not, the governor need not consult the County Public Service Board. Is that your evidence? Who has signed this document? It is signed. Answer my question. Um, Madam Speaker, I think at this point I'll seek your protection. May the witness answer the Madam question. Madam Governor, just answer the question, sir. It's a yes? Repeat again. Is it your evidence that in appointing chief officers, in whatever capacity, whether substantive or acting, the Governor need not consult the County Public Service Board. Is that your evidence? When appointing a new chief officer. But when appointing a new chief officer. But so I take it me. that it is your evidence that when appointing a chief officer in acting capacity, the governor need not consult the County Public Service Board. That is your evidence. The County Secretary also has the powers. By what? By which law? By which law? Show me the law. I am willing to be persuaded, Madam Governor, show me the law. What allows the county secretary to appoint chief officers? Not in to whatever appoint, capacity. But to redeploy. Governor, the question is not on redeployment. The question is on appointment. The question is on appointment. And turn with me to page 335. What document is on paragraph on page 335? Advisory on transfers and appointments. Okay. This is an advisory. An advisory by the County Public Service Board. Yes. At paragraph 2. Just read aloud what the County Public Service Board has advised all chief officers, because this is an internal memorandum, through the County Secretary as head of public service. The County Public Service Board have advised the County Secretary and the end of public service, but not the Governor of Meru. Okay. Yeah. But we agreed that it is a function of the Governor to appoint Chief of Service. We agreed on that. Section yes. 45. Yes. Okay. Go ahead there and is no Just go ahead advisory and go by the County Government or the County Public Service Board to the Governor. I agree. I agree with you on that. But I'm saying just read paragraph 2. Or do I read it aloud for you to agree? No, I should read. Okay. This is advisory to the County, Sub County Secretary and Head of Public Service with respect to establishment of offices appointments, including acting appointments to all levels of staff Please note that it is the sole statutory responsibility of the County Public Service Board as guided by the section, sections 59, subsection 1, A and B, 63 and 64 of the County Government Act 2012 
to read together with the Section 34, Act 2017, and Section 16 and 23, PSC Regulations 2020. Any other appointments done outside this is deemed null and void. The County it Public Service advised. Board says that all appointments, including acting appointments at all levels of staff, is by law. And the laws are quoted there. It is the sole statutory responsibility of the board. Correct? Yes. So, could you then, you or your chief or your county secretary, in the document on page 295 and 296, purport to appoint chief officers in acting capacity or substantive capacity? Could you purport to do so? Or are you within the law in purporting to do so? That is my question. I am not the one that did this. The letter is clearly signed by the county secretary. But for who, the, the, Madam Governor? The letter is signed by the county secretary for who? For the governor, correct? And the, and the appointment is issued in the, in the letter head of the office of the governor, correct? At page 295. Where? At page 295, on the top of the page, the letter head is office of the governor, correct? The letter head for all the offices in my office have office of the governor, not this one specifically. No problem, but this one specifically is office of the governor. Yes. Is the county secretary... The council, sorry to interrupt. Thank you, uh, I would like to uh, alert all parties of the timelines that we are going to follow and we are going to strictly adhere to this. Uh, the cross-examination will end at 7.10 without any extra minute. The re-examination will start from 7.10 to 7.30. Uh, the clarification by senators will start from 7.30 to 7.50. And then we'll have the closing statement on behalf of the county assembly for 60 minutes from 7.50 to 8.50. Then we'll have the closing statement on behalf of the government for 60 minutes uh, from 8.50 to 9.50. And then from 9.50 to 10, we will have an in-camera in -camera session and uh, the Senate will then have a uh, debate on the motion and division between 10 and 11.50 p.m. So this is to alert you to just bear that in mind. Thank you. Very well, Very well Madam Speaker. We are guided accordingly. So, Governor, back to my question. The specific letter on page 295 is issued in the letter, in the letter of the Office of the Governor. And we have agreed that the governor, as a, the governor is the appointing authority for chief officers, correct? Mm -hmm. Is the county secretary a st staff in the, of the, in the office of the governor? The county secretary? Yes. And the public? Oh, is the county staff secretary? in the county government of Meru. Staff in the county government of Meru. Yeah. You will agree with me that the county secretary is the head of public service yeah. and is therefore not a staffer in the office of the governor. Yes. Correct? Yes. So, in as much as you might want to say that the county secretary was signing on your behalf, is not. The county secretary. is not a staffer in your office, correct? The county secretary has signed the letter. For the governor, though he is not a staffer in your office, correct? Mm -hmm. Governor, turn with me to page 384 of our uh, volume 2. Under paragraph 4, that is the response by the County Public Service Board to the clerk of the County Assembly. You will agree with me that in that response, the County Public Service Board states, and I quote, the board is the appointing authority according to Section 64 of the County Government Act. Not disputed. And the board, however, was not involved in the appointment of the acting chief officers as per the act. You agree with me? At least that is apparent on the face of the document, correct? Maybe. 
You agree? I'm not the one that was writing to them. No, but you agree that is what the board says, Governor? Yeah. That is yes, obvious. according to the letter. Okay. So the board, the County Public Service Board, actually dissolves your appointment and says that the appointment of the 17 chief officers whom you, whom you have appointed on the 23rd of August, most of whom are in acting capacity, was done without its involvement. Correct? And to me, the board, the role of so the board... So no question, Governor, so that we move. And so, the role of the board is to give advisory to the end of county public service. No. The role of the board is to give, is to recommend for appointment to you so that you appoint. The powers reside in you, not the county secretary. We agree on that, Governor. Mm -hmm. So, and the board disowns those appointments and says that you did not consult the board in making the appointments. You specifically. Because you are the appointing authority. And I specifically did not appoint any person. I think. Madam Speaker, we are constrained to seek your direction because we believe the rules of cross-examination is that a witness answers questions, they don't tell stories. And the reason we seek your direction and perhaps invocation of your powers and the relevant standing order is that we believe this witness is engaging us in an out occasion, knowing very well our time is very limited, so that we don't have the opportunity to put to her all the relevant questions that we need to put. Uh, Madam Governor, please answer the questions as asked. Council, I have never appointed Ma Madam Speaker, of this. Uh, Madam Speaker, just hold on. Council, can you ask the question and can she answer it? Madam Governor, my question is, the County Public Service Board has disowned your appointments. Not my appointment. Who is the appointing authority? The person who has signed here. So, Governor, are you saying you have abdicated your roles as Governor and you delegated your authority to appoint to the County Secretary? I have not delegated. So, who appointed these officers? Is it you or the County Secretary? The County Secretary. Okay. So, Governor, you're saying, you're saying, you're telling this Honorable House that as Governor, you can delegate your statutory authority to appoint the Chief Officers. Just a moment, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to show you, you can turn to our volume three, or maybe I can just show you. Our volume three, it's a, it's a small bundle with a green cover. The appointment of county chief officers. Governor, you will agree with me on 45, section 45, it reads as follows, that whenever a vacancy arises in the office of the county chief officer, the respective governor shall within 14 days nominate qualified and experienced county chief officers from among persons competitively sourced and recommended by the county public service board and with the approval of the county assembly, appoint county chief officers. You agree? That is the law. That is the law, Governor. You agree? Council, I agree. Very well, very well, very well, well, Madam Governor. So, have you presented a valid authority before this House to show that you could validly delegate your authority to the County Secretary to appoint this Chief Officer on behalf? The Acting Chief Is there an authority, is there an, is there an authority Madam Governor? Council, can from your, from your documents? Let, me explain. Let me explain, Council. Is there an authority, yes or no? This acting Madam chief Governor, is officers there an authority? are directors in the they, same They want office. a yes or no answer. Just answer. Whether you... No one has been another. sourced from outside. These are directors at acting capacity awaiting... I think, Madam Speaker, I, I leave the Senate to draw uh, a conclusion. 
And that question? Madam Governor, you can turn with me to page 68 of our volume 2. And for, for purposes of clarity, in the exam in chief, you stated that you did not travel to China, correct? Yes. You never traveled to China? I never. Did you seek clearance to travel to China? Yes. You sought clearance? Yes. But you never traveled? Yes. Okay. The document on page 68 says, and the question is, the persons in the letter that is signed by the council secretary makes reference to following the invitation of the, of, of the governor of Meru County, the following technical team. The wording is technical team, correct? Yes. And start with me to page 86. You, in that letter, you can see your name listed there as part of the persons who were supposed to travel to China, correct? Yes. So you never did. I never did. So, because, Madam Governor, your defense is that your relatives traveled as part of an advanced team, yet in the letter of 5th June 2023, we see that you tried to obtain clearance on the same day. Were they tra traveling as part of an advanced team, of another team that was to come? If you are in the same letter with them, seeking clearance, is that defense consistent with what we see on page? Yes, it is. Fair enough. And at page 87, Madam Governor, we see a Mr. Nefat Kenyo Meme, whose title is designated as Director of External Linkages. Correct? Yes. And in your testimony, you say that he was an office administrator in the office of the governor. Yes, and later moved to act in the external leakages. And, and later moved to? External leakages, acting director. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was he competitively recruited by the board in order for him to act? Oh, okay, not, not competitively recruited. Let me rephrase, Madam Speaker, I'm sorry. Was he formally appointed by the board, County Public Service Board, in order for him to act as a director of external linkages. Was he? He was an Yes or no? He was an employee of county government. Was he appointed formally by the County Public Service Board in that acting capacity? Was he? By the County Public Service Board? Yes. No. He was not? By, but by the county secretary. By the county secretary? Yes. And in that advisory that I just showed you in our bundle, in that advisory by the County Public Service Board, it says that all appointments, whether acting or substantive, in all levels of the County Public Service are the exclusive responsibility, statutory responsibility of the County Public Service Board. Is that not a violation of the law, Madam Governor? It depends with the County Secretary. Does it depend on the County Secretary or what the law says? Is it a matter of, of discretion? Or, is it, or it is a matter of about compliance with what the law says? The county secretary council cannot do this minus any law guiding him to do this. So what is the law then that supports your position? Point That's why I law. want someone two minutes to get exactly why the county secretary has power to have a director to act for some few months awaiting substantive recruitment of a chief officer. Again, Madam Speaker, I leave the Senate to draw the necessary conclusion. In the interest of time, Madam, Madam Speaker. Madam Governor, I'll refer you to the screenshots from pages 149 of our volume 2. In your defense, you state that you are the foremost peacemaker in Meru County, correct? Yes. 
in your defense, your defense is that you're the foremost peacemaker in Meru County, correct? And the foremost peacemaker, peacemaker. Yes, yes, yes. The time stamp appearing on the screen grab at page 149 is that is on 20th of May 2023 at the top, correct? Yes. Long before the impeachment motion was tabled. It depends. Between May and October 16th, how many months? Roughly three, four, four months actually. Yes. Correct? And before May 20th is before the videos you played here of the parties withdrawing your support from you. Correct? Yes. And on this page, Madam Governor, we see your Chief of Staff removing the screenshots are provided by the Deputy Governor for information. Your Chief of Staff removed him from this WhatsApp group. You will agree. At least you were a member of that group. You saw that, correct? I'm a member. Who are the other members of the group? So many, I don't know the number, but so many members. Including members of the public? Yes. As per your defense? And at pages 155 in the other group, you can turn me to 155. We also see that the Honorable Mutia, Chief Officer, removed the Deputy Governor from this group, which is on May 27th. Correct? Yes. And in the interest of time, uh, I'll refer you to page 160. This is a screen grab of your message about Kucho Majeshi that you are referred to by your council, correct? Yes. And your most disturbing message on page 163, a transcript of which, Madam Speaker, is on pages, is on page. is on page 446 of our volume 2, correct? Madam Governor, when you say, and DG mobilized fewer levy, yes. can you read that aloud, that message? Yes, I can see the message. I want you to read it aloud. By, I can see it's Kitabu Kanata was copy pasted again. No, turn to page 163, where it's Governor Mongaza, one page, 163. On the top. That is your message, okay. Governor. And the DG mobilized few were levy. Okay. I continue. Yes, continue. Pamwa pagaswa auria pakami ambida yambokando ukaba igwa. Okay. What did you mean, Governor, by those words? I meant that the DG mobilized few were levy. Okay. As you saw in the the clip. I did not see, but go on. As, the, as we saw in the... Oh, just, just proceed, Governor. I'm not a witness. Then I said, some will try to see things easy, according to the proverb, mm -hmm. and they will get hard way. They will? They will get hard way. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the correct translation is on page 446. I don't want to spend much time on it because it seems the government would not as. It's as a it. proverb. In the real <laughs> sense, how do you have the No harm, no harm, no harm Madam sorry. Governor, no harm. Mm -hmm. And this was way before that video by the DG. That no. was way before. No, no, no. When was this message, message written? It was after. You see, Madam Governor, we can follow through. All the way from May 20th to May 27th, correct? When the DG was removed from the group. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the video that you played here by the DG was on 20th September. And this WhatsApp group, they keep 
you get a message and then you repost again using the same message. So are you saying you reposted this message after 20th September? Not myself, but the person who is Kenoti Kanata. No, because, Madam Governor, it is your message. I'm not concerned with the message by Kenoti Kanata. I'm talking about your message. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your message. So after 20th September, you still reposted this message despite having had posted it before. Yes, it was after the verification by the deputy. You have posted this message twice. That is what you're saying. No, no you after cannot the, have it both ways, Madam. After Governor. the verification. And Madam Governor, turn to page 170. Where you make reference to the DG. Please read that, read that message aloud. They want him to recover what? Yeah. They want him to recover what? Toshio invested every Kuyaka Jina Cobalt paper is investment worth CEC finance surety. And great gratefulness is a curse. Results coming up. Governor, I will tell you, so that I move away from that issue, that the message at page 174, or you malign your deputy, the message at 176. What about this one that I've just read? And the message at 179 are all inconsistent with your theme that you are the foremost peacemaker in Meru County. True or correct? True or false? False. Okay. Let us move. Madam Speaker, at this point I request the Secretary to play video in support of Kamdre video number 3A. Secretariat, you got it? Which one? Council? 3A. 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 Three, three yes. Madam Speaker, maybe can my, can my time stop running as we prepare? Uh, uh, technical staff, what's happening? Did you say 3A? 3A, 3A, Madam Speaker. Is there a problem with 3A? Council, are you able to go to another question as they prepare? Or uh, you, Madam or Speaker, at this point, I wanted the videos to be played in quick okay. succession okay. in the interest of time so that I ask the questions that all the four videos have been played.
uh, who who submitted that video? Is it a flash disk? Yes, we submitted three flash disks. It is by a county assembly or by the, by, by the county assembly, Madam Speaker. The clip by county assembly. Yes, yes, in our videos. Our and video it number. is in which uh, flash disk? Uh, it is. Uh, I don't remember the model, but it is. Uh, the team county assembly. Can you kindly assist? Three A. Yes, it is video number three. A. Video. Uh, the, the, the folder is videos in support of count three, and it is three A. Inside the folder. Okay, technical team. Are you able to get that? Kiriamo tumakodidia, kuga Madam Speaker, I request that video number 3B be is played. That, is that the one? That is 3A, yes. I want 3B to be played. I want all of them to be played. Then I can pose the questions. Okay, team. Uh, any, any other? 3B. 3B. Do you have 3B? Proceed. I request that video number three C be played. Say that again. I request that video number three C be played because I'm strained for time. Number C. Yes, yeah, number C now. Okay, move on to C. <laughs> Proceed. 
The work ticket number 874 that has been used in the months of January, February, March, and April. More than 17 times, 17 times in total. This work ticket has been used on pages 104, 118, 129, 138, all the way to page 327, Madam Speaker. And Governor, is it possible that a work ticket, and I, I, I remind you that you told us you don't have the original, uh, you don't have the original surrender documents. Is it possible that a work ticket can be used for a trip in January? And money is paid, which you call impressed. It is used in February, March, and April, over a span of four months. Is it possible, logically, is it possible? As I answer your question, Council. Is it, is, is, it, is it possible? It's a yes no question, Madam Governor. Out of the 600 vehicles we have in Meru, is Governor supposed to verify work tickets for every vehicle? No, ma Madam Governor, these are the documents you've provided in your own bundle of documents to justify the payments that have been made to, to your sisters. And yet you seem not to, expl to be able to explain. And you've, missed, you've used one work ticket 17 times. And my question is, do you intend that that work ticket be used to justify the payments that you made to your sisters? I yes or no? I'm not aware of the work ticket. You're not it has aware. Been photocopied for the purpose of this impeachment. It has been photocopied. Very well. Ma Madam Speaker, I have, I think, I believe, six minutes. I will yield them to my colleague, Mr. Muriyoki. Madam Speaker, Honorable Senators, my name is Mariyuki. And I shall continue from where my colleague has left. And to save on time, I will refer to page 409 of our volume 2. Page 409 of Volume 2. Are you there? Confirm that that is the official county Facebook page? Yes. Confirm that the post made therein is dated 4th of March? Yes. 
confirm that it is opposed regarding the traffic marshals? Yes. I will also ask you to look at page 411 of volume 2. Confirm that that is your Facebook page? Yes. And you're talking about the traffic marshals? Yes. On page 392 of volume 2 still, three hundred and ninety-two, volume 2, you're there, 392 of volume 2. The board, the County Public Service Board, page 392. Please save my time. I don't have much of it. 392 of volume 2. Are you there? Yes. The board has not employed any traffic marshals in the county public service. Yes. That is the item numbered one. It has not employed. There is Volume 4, page 150. Councillor, you'll have to hurry up. You, have, you hardly have any minutes. Ma Madam Speaker, yeah. I, I'd like to uh, beg your indulgence, remembering that uh, the Secretariat took quite a number of minutes trying to get the video. So I humbly, humbly request that you accord me just five more minutes and I'll be done. Uh, Council, I'll accord you three minutes to make up. Uh, uh, you might also want to expedite when you are guiding. Eh? Page 150, volume 4. On the third paragraph, you will confirm that that is an extract of the Hansard of the Meru County Assembly. Honorable Senators can also confirm. And you will confirm, Governor, that your advocate on record for that day admitted that you appointed the traffic marshals since they were in your manifesto. That is the third paragraph. I have underlined the relevant part. Mm -hmm. Can you please read for us the underlined part? The voters in the Meru accepted the manifesto of Boda Boda. The marshals were part of the manifesto that was sold to the voters in Meru. We elected the governor based on that manifesto. We did not elect the others who did not mention Boda Bodas. A mandate is derived from the manifesto and that is why a manifesto as an independent candidate. Thank you. I think that makes my point. Uh, the very uh, next page, that is uh, no, 152, the one after the next page. Confirm that on that page, through your counsel on record on that day, you admit that you have not assigned any duty to your deputy and therefore your deputy should not be paying any bills or asking for any budgetary allocation. On the day, let me...
The deputy governor is paying his bills. He has been assigned duties. He has not been assigned duties by the governor. Why is he paying to do which duties? Which bills is he paying because we have four Thank you. types of bills? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, which duties has he been assigned? That is what your council record asked. My final question, I will refer you to page 339 of our volume two. Council, please wind up. Final uh, question, yeah. Madam Speaker. 339, volume 2. Council, your time is up. My final question, I was waiting for the governor to get the page, Madam Speaker. On that page, who has made that post? Design. Owning the changes in the saga, that is the liquor board, the revenue board, and uh, the, the liquor board the, and the revenue board, more specifically, correct? Press release. Thank you. From you. Therefore, Madam Governor, you cannot run away from the letters on page 336, 337, and 338, all the same volume, which sends these officers on compulsory leave with full payment that you have already owned in your own press release. Am I right? You are not right. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm done. Uh, as the team for County Assembly prepares for re-examination, and we will be strict with time, uh, Honorable Senators, I have a communication to make on the address to Parliament by His Excellency the President, pursuant to Article 132.1b and c of the Constitution. Honorable Senators, as you may recall, on a sitting of the Senate held on Thursday, 2nd November 2023, I communicated of a request by His Excellency the President to deliver his inaugural address to Parliament in accordance with Article 132.1b and c of the Constitution. This is therefore to remind you that His Excellency the President will deliver his inaugural State of the Nation address to Parliament during a joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament tomorrow, Thursday 9th November 2023 at 2.30 p.m. in the National Assembly Chamber. Honorable Members, to ensure a smooth flow of motor traffic and to ensure that preparations towards facilitation of this event are well carried out, parking for Members of Parliament has been reserved at Comesa parking lot in KICC and the parking lot next to the County House on Parliament Road. All vehicles parked around main Parliament buildings, that's the rear gate, canteen area, parliamentary courtyard, and at the Senate parking should be removed by close of business today, Wednesday 8th November 2023. Your cooperation on this matter is highly appreciated. I thank you. Now, to the county assembly team, you have uh, 20 minutes for re-examination. If you take 15, we will be grateful. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will do it in less than 15 minutes. Uh, let us uh, begin from where you have left on the Facebook post regarding the changes in the liquor board. You have been told that you bear the responsibility of sending those individuals for compulsory leave because of your Facebook post. Are you looking at your Facebook post?
You have the page with you? Yes. Madam Governor, why did you make that post? Is it because you had been part and parcel of the process of sending the employees on compulsory leave? No. Why did you make that post confirming the changes that had occurred? I was notified that pending investigation by ESCC, the county secretary and sent on compulsory leave the people mentioned here. And upon receiving the communication, they also say that they have appointed substantive, or they have appointed some people to hold the office pending investigations. So I posted, and you can see clearly that it's a press release that was given by the county secretary for me to release. So your simple answer is that you communicated that which that had been done by the county secretary? Yes, and there. this is the former county secretary was, that was there in, Did the you first, in the second regime. Confirm to us that this was barely a week after you were sworn in office? Yes, barely a week. Did you have any particular reason to have any grudges to send these individuals to for compulsory leave? No, there are issues with investigation according to the county secretary. Thank you. A lot of Ulabalu has been advanced in respect of what is said to be appointment of officers in an acting capacity. To the best of your knowledge, the letter that you have been shown at uh, page 335, Is it a letter of appointment? No. What is it? Advisory on transfers and appointments. Confirm to us that that advisory is from the County Public Service Board it to is. Chief Officers, not to the Governor. It is from County Public Service Board to Acting Chief Officer, Meru Public Service Board, and to Chief officers. Chief officers. Yes. So the advisory is targeting chief officers. Yes. I want you to read. I want you to try and read the first paragraph of that letter so that we understand the import of Reference the advisory. Reference is made to a memo. Reference CGM stroke CS stroke IM stroke 3 stroke 3 286 of 6th December 2022. 2022. Con yeah, continue. This advisory is to emphasize the message by the county secretary that the arbitrary transfers without due consultation with the CS office is discouraged at all times. So, so then it is First one to a previous advisory by the county secretary. Yes. Targeting chief officers. Targeting chief officers. Proceed. Uh, CS office is discouraged at all times. Transfers and deployment should not be done as a form of reprim reprimand. Staff transfer should address issues such as staff service balance, leave, and the staff develop, development, among other positive reasons, as guided by Section 43. Thank you. Thank you. So then, it cannot be said that that advisory was targeting the governor or the county secretary, because the advisory was from the county secretary himself. Yes, yes I can see it is from the acting CEC, Meru County Public Service Board County Secretary, acting as County Secretary, to all Chief Officers. Thank you. So it is Chief Officers who are discouraged from yes. those kind of deployments without consultation with the County Secretary. Yes. So that cannot bar the County Secretary from exercising his right. Yes. Thank you. We have also been 
told that the letter appearing at page 295, quickly let us look at that letter. Is a letter of employment. To the best of your understanding, what is the title of that letter? Redeployment. Redeployment. What is your understanding of redeployment? Redeployment is taking one person from one department maybe to another one, or from one duty to another one. Is employment done for many persons in one letter, or it is done individually, if it were really an employment? This is done for so many people in one letter. In one letter. Yes. Is any of those people a new person that is not yet working with the county government of Meru? All these have been working since even 2016, 2015 as directors and other senior officers in the government of Meru. Is there anywhere where the salaries or remuneration of those persons is mentioned? There is nowhere that is mentioned. Normally, a letter of employment would have their salaries. Yes, it should be. It would also that. have the terms of reference. Yes. Does that appear anywhere in that? It doesn't appear. It doesn't appear. Yes. So in your evidence, is that, does that amount to employment? It doesn't amount to employment. Is there anything that bars the county secretary from making changes within in the entire department within the county? Nothing bars the county secretary from doing redeployment. Thank you. You have been referred to what is now being said to be monies that were not accounted for. And by that, council took you to page 13 of their documents to indicate that monies appearing in the infamy system were not accounted for. Page 2, page 13. And the total amount is said to be 2.7 million that were allegedly paid to Rose Kenya Wantai. Yes. That is the line of cross-examination. Confirm to us that this document that appears from page one all through to page 16 does not portray the IFMIS extract but a mere complaint by one Salesio Mutuma. This is a mere complaint by Duranera Salesio Mutuma. The table that bears the total of 2.7 is not from the IFMIS extract, isn't it? It is not from the IFMIS extract. Thank you. When you look at the charges that you faced, was there anywhere where any specific amount was mentioned that was received by any of the people termed as your relatives that you are supposed to explain why they received such money, specifically figures. No specific figure. Thank you. That will be all for this witness, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. We now move on. And Perhaps I can ask just one more question with your leave, okay. Madam Speaker. Thank you. So, Governor, then, what would you plead the Senate to do, having had the case from the County Assembly, having given your evidence, what is it that you ask this Honourable House to do for you? Madam Speaker, humbly I would request this Honourable House, a constitutional house, to see as we have heard all the allegations that are labeled before me, I'm appearing as third, fourth, fifth party in all these accusations. It is my humble request that as you sit as judges, I'm forced to answer allegations that are done or some issues 
that are not directly involving the governor of Meru. In these allegations, there is nowhere, Honorable Madam Speaker, that I have signed any document nor delegated anyone to any person via the allegations tabled today before this Honorable Senate. Madam Speaker, today I don't count it as an unfortunate day for me because at least the whole world have known the truth. I ask this Honorable Senate, Honorable Members, as you sit today, to consider and give justice. Thank you. Thank you so much, and that will be the close of our case. Uh, thank you, Council. Uh, we now move on to the clarifications by Senators, and I request that strictly we adhere to the two minutes so that we give as many Senators opportunity, uh, maximum two minutes, and uh, we begin with the Senator Sigay. This session will end at uh, 7.50, as I had said earlier. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes. Uh, Senator Sigay, when you're done, please approach the bench. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And um, I'm troubled with uh, three things. I'll ask three clarifications, and this one is to the counsel for the governor, uh, alias Mutuma. Number one, I want you uh, response in particular to the allegation with regards to a gentleman by the name Nefat whose employment history dates back to 2016, employed at Job Group H in 2023, acted in Job Group R, and the document that we've been given appearing at page 384 of the county assembly's bundle from the County Public Service Board. I would wish to get your responses, Council. Two, witness number three, I can't recall the name, um, is, is called Mr. Munene Nganata, sorry. At paragraph 13 of his affidavit, he made reference to employees whose position as at the time of employment was cleaners and a document which has been submitted as evidence before the House appearing at page 47 and 374. The responses that will clear my mind will probably be that coming from you because what Mr. Nganata responded to as he was asked is not clear to me. And lastly, your position with regard to a number of videos which entertain this house on all thing. On the one hand, there was an element of some Senator Sochi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to direct this clarification to the Council for the County Assembly. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there seems to be some disparities in the document submitted by the County Assembly in relation to the invitation letter to China. The document submitted by the County Assembly on page 60 differs in content from the document submitted by the governor on page 425 of the, the bigger document of evidence. Uh, but when you look at the two documents uh, keenly, Mr. Speaker, the document for the county assembly uh, does not refer to the other assignments the county government went to do in China. That is housing and agriculture. 
but another document attached on page 68 of the county assembly bundle confirms that actually housing and agriculture was one of the functions so my concern which i want clarification from the the council for the county assembly is to explain the deviation in the two letters the letter by the governor and the letter by the county assembly and explain to this house which letter is uh, the correct letter to go with council for the governor proceed to respond to the question as asked by senator sigay and then the council for the county assembly you will respond to the question raised by uh, senator osotsi thank you very much uh, mr speaker sir in answer to the question posed by senator sigay my understanding of job grouping is that the posi position to which a person is appointed then dictates the job group they will fall to. So one would rise from one job group based on the new position that they have been given. Indeed, my understanding is that we've had chief officers appointed as CCMs, therefore necessitating the change of their job groups. That would be my simple answer to that question. I'll invite my friend, Mr. Mutembe, to answer the other question on the cleaners. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I wish to respond to the question from Senator Singay. Uh, the question was asking why some cleaners uh, appear to be categorized as senior support staff in the pay slips that have been produced uh, in the bundle of documents by the county assembly. Uh, although the witness, notwithstanding the fact that the witness um, confirmed that the pay slips cannot be authenticated, uh, it is the position that cleaners are actually support staff. And cleaners would be categorized as senior support staff based on their salary. If you look at the pay slip that has been produced, the one that appears as senior support staff is earning a basic salary of 18,000. And that is in tandem with uh, the role of a senior support staff. That would be the simple answer. Thank you. Council for County Assembly. Mr. Speaker, the question was as to discrepancies between the letter at page 425 of the Governor's Bundle and the letter at page 60 of the Assembly's Bundle. It is indeed true, Mr. Speaker, that there are discrepancies, and that's why we have kept telling you the Governor has forged the documents she has presented to you, and here's why. If you check the document at page 60 of the Assembly's Bado, you will note, Mr. Speaker, it bears the stamp of the county government, received by the county government on 25th of April. The one the governor has produced is not stamped by our own county government. That's one indication of what we call forging of documents. And if you, there is any other doubt, Mr. Speaker, when you go to page 68 of our Badu, the county secretary, when they wrote to the ministry, they attached the letter inviting them to China. And the letter the county secretary attached is the version that the county assembly has produced and it is attached at page 69 of our battle with the same stamp and it is our submission therefore the governor must have forged this document as we have been saying all along at page 425 of our battle 
Senator Newton. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question goes to the Governor. Uh, in relation to Okolea, so Governor, who funds Okolea? And if you may, because it's in public uh, domain, that the activities of Okolea were once banned by the Minister of CS for Interior. Uh, why, uh, in your view, was it banned? Number two, Mr. Speaker, the image that has been portrayed uh, of the relationship between the governor and the county assembly members uh, has been uh, very rosy, uh, especially after the past impeachment uh, proceedings. Governor, where and why did the reins start beating you, as in the relationship between you and the members of the county assembly? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those are my questions. Governor, proceed to respond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Okorea program, as I said before, has been there for the last 12 years. It is purely funded by Baita Family Fellowship, where I'm the bishop. All the offerings that we get from the church, the pastors and the members of the church take all the money, buy blankets, mattresses, I also donate 50% of my salary towards the Okorea program. It is purely, purely a program by the church and my family, funded by the donations made in our church and my 50% contribution from my salary. The issue of burning the Okorea it is just the other day when we had one at Egembe where my deputy governor incited the youth, as you saw in the video, slaughtered the cow that was supposed to be donated to a poor woman. There was some chaos. And then from that event is where now the CS came and said because of the unrest in Meru, he has to burn the Okorea until there is rest in Meru. He was not burned permanently. I think for his own wisdom, he decided and acted so that you get peace and continue as a church. It is purely a church program. From the day I left this Senate, during the first impeachment, we've been working well with the county assembly members until the last two months, when people, external forces, tried or are trying to interfere with the leadership just because of 2027 politics. That is the whole truth. And as I stand here, I know that the members of county assembly have no issues with the governor, apart from the external forces forcing them to cause a lot of confusion in Meru for those who, are, who have decided that they will run for the position of county governor to have space and they have a route via the deputy governor or via making it that Meru doesn't work. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Hamida. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Madam Governor, I was just wondering, um, in the event that um, the Senate finds you um, that none of the allegations for the second time 
uh, made against you uh, have been substantiated. I'm just wondering uh, what happens to the Meru County? How do you plan to work with the Deputy Governor who has been alleged, and of course you have said, you have stated and accused him of uh, having planning uh, to impeach you and also plotted all their current uh, activities and impeachment. So how do you plan to work with them? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The first action, I believe prayer works. I will continue to pray for those that are a lot of appetite to become the governor, God to lower the appetite so that we have time to work with the people of Meru. Number two, the time we left this place again, it took us just a month for us to come together and start working. It is very possible, it is very doable that we can still mend all the differences and put Meru first rather than our own interest. As a woman, a woman of God, I will forgive everyone. Thank you, Senator Karen Yomu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First time is happening in Africa. That's where we can measure up where we really are. Number one. Yes. We see on page 409 and page 411 you appointing the traffic marshals and the board denying that appointment on page 392. That is correct, right? Yes. But if not Thank you. Now, I will refer you to our volume 4, page 150. Our volume 4, uh, kindly. Volume 4, page 150. Council, you'll have to hurry up. You, have, you hardly have any minute. Ma Madam Speaker, yeah. I, I'd like to uh, beg your indulgence, remembering that uh, the Secretariat took quite a number of minutes trying to get the video. So I humbly, humbly request that you accord me just five more minutes and I'll be done. Uh, Council, I'll accord you three minutes to make up. Uh, uh, you might also want to expedite when you are guiding. Eh? Page 150, volume four. On the third part. Would she be able to reconcile with her deputy? Senator Mbugo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Madam Governor, having listened to you for two days and the other party, and having watched many videos, I would invite you, as a CEO of the county, to Section 192 of the Supreme Laws of the Land, and I read it for you, uh, uh, Article 192.1. The President may suspend a county governor, government, A, in an emergency arising out of internal conflict or war, as a CEO of Meru County. Do you think it has reached there or there is a chance of reconciliation? Thank you. 
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I think we have not reached there. By doing that, we have killed the dreams of young men that are MCS today. We still have chance to unite and work together. Now, Honorable Senators, that um, wraps up as far as this witness is concerned. Honorable Senators, we, unless I gazette tomorrow as a sitting day, we will certainly overrun the runway. Looking at the time allocated here, if you lose just a minute, I will have to gazette tomorrow to be a date for us to sit to continue here in this matter. It's about the time factor. We only have up to midnight. So it is about the time factor here. I give you an extra 10 minutes and we've messed it up. So for those who, that's why I was giving opportunity to those senators who've not spoken a word uh, since we started. Okay. So uh, at this juncture, you can have a seat, uh, is that, uh, High Excellency, Governor Kawira. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Now we are moving to a different session where we're going to have the closing remarks, closing statements from both sides. Now. Each party will be given one hour to make their closing statement. You don't have to utilize the whole of the one hour. The maximum is one hour. If you can do less than that, the better, so that we can meet the uh, midnight uh, deadline. So, counsel for the County Assembly of Meru, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As communicated yesterday in my opening, this is the third time we have an impeachment motion against the governor of Meru. And as I kept telling you, all through and through, from the time of the first impeachment motion to today, the governor's position has been that the problem is everybody else. To use our own words, she is the foremost peacemaker in Meru. Even though I recall the Honorable Edwin Sifuna asking her last year, how do we reconcile the aggressive governor we see in the videos with the meek, humble, vulnerable governor that appears before the Senate. And I had the Honorable Sifuna again ask yesterday something about for how long? The question was for how long, Mr. Speaker, can we in good conscience allow Meru County to be in this perpetual suckers of a crisis in which their governor, on average, every four months, has fallen out with the MCAs, has fallen out that time with all the elected leaders, the same problem now, that time with the church, now with our own deputy, and the point I'm trying to make, Mr. Speaker, it cannot be, it cannot be said, at least not honestly, that the Honorable Governor Kawira Mwangaza is being falsely accused, is being harassed, is being intimidated, and whatnot, and what not. 
I have said many allegories, some of which have put me in trouble with the Senate. I'll tell you a few more, and hope this time I won't fall in trouble. Mr. Speaker, there is a famous book by Robert Greene, which I'm sure many of us here have read, called The 48 Laws of Power. And it describes many world events, many leaders, their successes, their failures, their mistakes, and whatnot. One of the stories I love in that book, because it is relevant to the matter before you, but also because of the event it describes and how it changed the world history. The world will be very different today. There will not be a Republic of Kenya today. Perhaps Britain and France will never have emerged as superpowers in the 18th, 19th century. Perhaps the United States will never have emerged. But for the failure of a leader in antiquity called Cyrus the Great, to observe a simple rule of life called knowing when to stop. Mr. Speaker, it is our humble submission that if there was an impeachment motion in October last year, highlighting misconduct of the category now before you, that motion failed because, of course, the High Court stopped the Assembly from debating it. But the point I'm making is issues were flooded about how the governor was running Meru County in that motion. She persisted, as a result of which a second motion was tabled and it reached this house. She was given very many kind lessons. I recall yesterday citing lessons from the Honorable Senator Tobiko. I recall many lessons from the Honorable Senator Karungo and indeed many other senators. And when we came again, just like today, the look was of that of a humble, meek, polite, vulnerable governor. And she promised, as she has just promised now, that if I recall her words, Mary will be a shining example in terms of good governance, in terms of calmness, in terms of everything good. Then as they say in the medical world, people with conditions, sometimes they use a word called relapsing. The governor, after making that promise, and admittedly after the county, a joying brief moment of honeymoon, relapsed yet again to the very things that were in the first impeachment motion, to the very things that were in the second impeachment motion, and hence the reason we are before you for the third impeachment motion. Cyrus the Great, who is our lesson on leaders should know when to stop, when to change tact, when to turn a new leaf. Of course, we all know Cyrus the Great. The reason he is called the Great is that he was a great conqueror. He conquered the known world then from Babylon to Mead to Achaemenids to Lydia. And basically, he was the ruler of the world as it was known then. But then there was one small country he discovered that didn't seem to be part of the known world, of a people called the Masageti. 
And instead of being content, he declares war on this country. For the record, Mr. Speaker, this country was actually led by a woman called Tomiris. And Tomiris, when Cyrus assembled his mighty army, Persia then was the superpower, assembled it on the river separating the boundaries of his empire with his small kingdom, was sent a message telling him, be content with your victory so far and the fact that you have conquered the world and please stand attempt to tolerate seeing me rule my small miserable country with its little resources with its more army and don't attack and he was warned in that letter that if he attacked nothing good would come from it Instead of learning when to stop, Cyrus insisted on a war. Tomiris told him, then if you insist on a war, I want peace. I will allow your forces to cross the river without any resistance and will fight from my side of the border on one condition that will fight a conventional war. Cyrus agreed, but because he could never stand another leader enjoying any form of glory, just like our governor cannot start an MP, an MCA, or anyone anywhere else in leadership, she must bring them down. Cyrus was obsessed with bringing down this little kingdom that, for no good reason other than his own vanity and his failure to know when to stop. So he pulls a trick, and we have seen many tricks on this podium, of a meek, humble, vulnerable looking governor, who is a victim of very many things, whose defense is, it wasn't me, it was someone else. So Cyrus' trick involved throwing a lavish bash, and setting up the soldiers of this small kingdom to a drink, and then while they were inebriated, he massacred them, leaving only a few, and took the prince of that other small country as a prisoner of war. Even after this, the leader of the small country still offered them peace and told him, you broke the rule that it will be a conventional warfare and won by a trick, I still give you another chance to return my son and will still declare peace. Cyrus refused and the son of course of Queen Tomiris unable to live with the indignity of being a prisoner of war committed suicide. When the people of this small country heard that the crown prince had committed suicide, small as they were, weak as they were, vulnerable as they were, they organized a violent battle in which their army, which was about a hundredth of Cyrus's army, actually won the violent battle and Cyrus himself was killed. Because of Cyrus' inability to know when to stop, Persia, added as a superpower, and that is how Rome became the dominant country, and of course the world and human civilization as we know it today, is based on the Roman civilization. That's why he said, Mr. Speaker, there would have been no Britain, no France, no America, but for the mistake of one leader, not knowing when to stop. Our greatest fear is that the history of Meru may take an irreversible, tragic path 
We saw very violent slaughters of animals, threats of slaughtering people and whatnot. And we don't know, as I was telling you, as long as our governor keeps relapsing to these confrontations, when things will take a turn for the worse in a manner that is irreversible. Is it fair that the people of Meru live in this state of anxiety? For how long can we subject them to the situation that has now prevailed? Governor Kawira Mwangaz, of course, will tell you she knows when to stop. The record is clear. You have seen the videos from our side. You have seen the videos from our side. It is clear. She will not stop. Of course, right now she will tell you she will stop because our career is on the line. But we know better. She will not. Mr. Speaker, a story is told about a frog and a scorpion and a swollen river. The scorpion couldn't swim and asked the frog who is an amphibian and therefore capable of crossing the swollen river to assist the frog to cross the river. And the frog tells the scorpion in the story, but you will sting me before we are done with crossing and we'll both die and drown. And the scorpion promised, no, I can't do that. Because if I were to sting you while you're carrying me on your back to cross this swollen river, we would both die and because it would be mutual destruction, as the Americans and the Russians called it during the Cold War, I have no incentive, there is no rational reason why I would sting you. And poor frog bought this story, just like you're being invited to buy the story. I will pray for them. I will forgive them. We only need a month. So frog took scorpion on his back, and frog started swimming across the river, and right in the middle, scorpion oyster his tail and stung the frog. And of course that poison disables the nervous system and the frog couldn't swim and they both started drowning. And frog asks in the story, why did you sting? You promised that you wouldn't sting. And you are also aware by you stinging we would both be extinguished. And Scorpion gave frog a simple answer. I stung because it is in my nature to sting. We are submitting to you, Mr. Speaker, with all the humility. Kawera Mwangaza keeps relapsing to these violations of the law and the constitution and the vilification. We can call whatever the specifics we want. The reason she keeps relapsing back to the same thing is because, like that scorpion in the story, it is in the nature of Kawera to sting. So even if you give her another chance, whether it is on account of pity, whether it is on account of sympathy, whatever the reason, she will sting again. And I swear, Mr. Speaker, there are no prophets in my family, but I can tell you, if you forgive her, she will sting again and will be back in this assembly. And the question is the one, therefore, asked by the Honorable Sifuna. For how long can we endure this embarrassment? Is it fair? I had the Senator ask, do ones have 
consequences. Of course, wars have consequences. Wars have been fought because someone said wars that they should have said, have said. That's why there is an adage that says speech is silver, silence is golden. Mr. Speaker, you are told kaende kaende means development and other nice things. I invite any of you because it's an open country. Kaende kaende is not an English word, it's not a Swahili word, it's not a native word from any of our native languages. It is sheng, street slang in Nairobi. And I told you yesterday, all you need is pick your phone, call a young person, ask them what is the meaning of kinder, kinder. And I told you the meaning is, I don't care. Na liwe liwalo. Kusera, kusera. And I recall telling you, because it is in the nature of Kawera to do these type of things. When I mean it is in her nature, I mean she can't help it. It's part of our chemistry. Unfortunately, we have human beings like those, and they are our beloved brothers and sisters. We can't get rid of them, but we can't allow them to be governor. We can't allow them. They are our beloved mothers, sisters and brothers. But the very reason chapter 6 of our constitution and all these laws we've cited is an acknowledgement that not all of us can be a state officer. Some of us may be very intelligent. They may be very eloquent. They may have very good mobilization skills. As a matter of fact, they may be loved by the people. Barabbas was so loved that the people chose him over the Son of God. But it doesn't mean they are the right holders of certain offices. And if, by what I called in the last impeachment that seemed to bring me into trouble with the Senate, an aberration of democracy. Mr. Speaker, Article 181 exists because the drafters of our constitution in their wisdom realized democracy can produce aberrations, counterintuitive products. And governors like the one before you, I very humbly submit, Mr. Speaker, they are an aberration. They are not the type of product our democratic system of government was designed. And because the makers of our constitution knew this sort of problem can arise from time to time, this august senate and the county assembly were given a counter-majoritarian power to remove state officers for violations such as those before you. I told you about Shaggy yesterday and his song, It Wasn't Me. And true to my prediction, even though there are no prophets in my clan, the governor came here and uh, the common denominator was that it wasn't me. I haven't done a single thing. Luckily, Mr. Speaker, today while cross examining our own legal man, Dixon Monen and Kanata, we were able to show the Senate, not my words, but Section 30 of the County Governments Act, and we were able to demonstrate to you it is immaterial that the acts in question 
who are not personally committed by the governor because that section says the governor is responsible for those acts. Those are not my words. The section we read says the governor shall be accountable. Those are not my words. The word used in the statute is the governor shall be accountable. And why this defense cannot hold, Mr. Speaker, is you would be setting a very dangerous precedent. In fact, you will have guillotined and killed chapter 6 and article 181 because anyone who walks in our villages, in our streets of our cities, you don't need to be very knowledgeable to know senior state officers invariably act by instructing someone else. You rarely ever find a governor, a president, or whoever directly doing something personally. Yet our constituencies, they are accountable to parliament in the case of the national government. They are accountable to the county assembly. Those are the words of the law. Mr. Speaker, if you are to uphold this defense, it would mean no one would ever be impeached because all you need to do is act through others. Luckily, Mr. Speaker, we also cited another law for you that expressly speaks to acting through others. And in short, all we are trying to tell you, Mr. Speaker, is that there is no valid defense to the charges against Governor Kawira Mwangaza. What she has done, which is what she has done all along, is to tell you, it wasn't me. Even if she was caught on camera, it wasn't me. Even if she was caught in various places, in Shaggy's song, the man engaging in Anki Panki is caught in the bathroom, on the sofa, and in yet another place, and it's all recorded, and his persistent reply is, it wasn't me. We have shown you that defense is not available as a matter of plain law, but it is not also available as a matter of principle. I propose to leave it at that point, Mr. Speaker, to share the remaining minutes with my learned colleague, Mr. Movenge Jacob Ngwele, who will take you to the specifics of what is the case we brought before you, what is the response to that case, what are the admissions the governor made at the county assembly, and when all that is done, we shall beseech you in the name of God, whether it is the Christian God or the God of the Nyamben and Mount Kenya hills that they are made worship before the current civilization, that the time to stop this madness in Meru has come. And if there is no reason, if we haven't proved or satisfied you, the governor is the bishop in the holy book. In the event we have not persuaded you on the evidence, Mr. Speaker, I hope we have persuaded, wherever the truth lies, there is an unsustainable crisis in Meru. And even if you must jettison one person to save the ship, called Meru County with the one million inhabitants, your act is still justifiable, even under the early book. I now cede the floor to Mr. Jacob Ngwele. Just to remind you, Council, your time terminates at exactly 8.50. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. 
Uh, my name is Jacob Nguela, I'm an advocate of the High Court. I've been given this honor as responsibility of uh, taking the House through the evidence which has been submitted uh, before the August House. Mr. Speaker, the Senate is sitting here, Pass 1 to Article 81, 181 of the Constitution, which provides for removal of a governor from office. The question which arises and which begs this House to look at what is the standard which this House should apply on the evidence which has been submitted uh, by the County Assembly of uh, Meru? Uh, my learned colleague, uh, my learned senior, uh, Elisha Goya, when we started, he did inform the Senate that this House is sitting in quasi judicial proceedings. I beg to differ. The test applicable when you're evaluating the evidence which has been submitted here has already been established by the Supreme Court in two cases. That is, the first one is the case of Wabora, and the other one is Mike Mbuvi case, whereby the court was clear that impeachments are a tool of political accountability. Impeachments are not criminal. Neither are they civil proceedings. And therefore, the standard, the applicable standard, before this house has already been established that the burden of proof, the standard of proof, is slightly above that for civil cases. That is on a balance of probability and below the beyond reasonable doubt. So we are not this house is not evaluating the governor's criminal capability, but it is subjecting the governor to political accountability political accountability for the actions of the office which she occupies and the deeds which has undertaken throughout that period of time. It is our submission that the County Assembly of Meru has demonstrated and proved its case in accordance with the standards and tests which I've laid out by the Supreme Court in the decision. And I'll proceed uh, to take this house through the specific violations which have been submitted. Mr. Speaker, the charge sheet before you has got seven counts. And out of the seven counts, those seven counts consist 39 specific violations. And the first count, which of course is going to be read later on, is misappropriation and misuse of county resources. Article I can't read the time. You have 30 minutes. Ah, good. Go. Thank you. Article 181 of the Constitution provides the grounds which the governor can be impeached on. That is gross violation of the Constitution, gross violation of the laws, uh, uh, that is a uh, conviction, criminal conviction on breach of the national law. We do submit that on count number one, that is misappropriation and misuse of county resources, this charge has been substantiated and proved. And I'll proceed to explain to this house or demonstrate to this house how this charge has been, has been uh, substantiated. When you look at the charges, we have drafted them that the governor has engaged or, con or by con 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 connivance or complicity. So the governor is implicated either directly or indirectly. What my learned colleague Mr. Mudomi has said that it's not about the governor's direct action so that if the Senate finds there is no direct or individual responsibility on the part of the governor, then the governor is going to be acquitted. No. There are instances when the governor is complicit or connivance or part of that violation. And that is what we are going to prove. This charge, the first one, is about embezzlement of county funds and withdrawal of county funds. A lot of energy has been dispensed here to demonstrating how a total of 78 million was, I can use the word, looted, swindled, plundered, or cutted away from the Meru County Treasury. And this Swindling involved a scheme which comprised a clique of two groups. One was a clique made up of governor's relatives, 
and all of you have had names Miriam, Rose, Kenneth, the Guatai, and also Meme. This was a clique, an inner circle, clique of the governor, which was used to pilferage money from the county treasury in the name of impressed or prepayments. The other clique was a group of officers working under the office of the chief of staff. Collectively, this group of people swindled an amount of 78 million shillings over a period of one financial year. The impressed, the if missed data which has been produced, if you do a total computation, and this amount of money has not been disputed, none of the witnesses from the governor's side has disputed the totality of this amount. What they have done is that they have only submitted evidence to justify an amount or to account for an amount of two million only. What they have not done, what they have not done, they have not brought evidence to justify the balance of the 70 million. This group, the first clique, was responsible for 6.5 million shillings. The other group, that is the chief of staff and his officers, they were responsible for the balance of the amount. And in that group, you'll find a person, I'll just single out the individual, by the name uh, Kadure Rukaria. Individually, over a period of one year, she was paid in form of prepayments an amount of 21.8 million shillings. We have sat here for two days. No document is in front of you justifying that payment. Nobody has disputed whether this payment was whether withdrawn from the county treasury. Nobody. No documents in form of a payment voucher, an impressed warrant, has been submitted to justify. There has been a deliberate attempt to distort the story and to focus the attention of the Senate to the impressed. And the narrative is this amount of money was being paid as a form of facilitative impressed for the governor's entourage. Can a governor's entourage collect a totality of 78 million? The amount of money which has been accounted for is only 2 million shillings. Where are the documents? Where are the vouchers? And when we asked, when the assembly requested for the documents through their summon in powers, they were told that the documents are with the auditor general. And in the letter which, has, which is in the document, uh, which, is in your, which is in the bundle of document, indicates that the documents are being used for preparation of financial statements. Everybody who has got elementary accounting knows very well that you don't generate financial statement using vouchers. Financial statements are generated using cash books and ledgers. And even if these documents were taken to the Auditor General, where is the delivery book? No evidence has been submitted to show where that amount of money uh, to support that expenditure. And in absence of such document to controvert this allegation, we do most humbly submit that this allegation of investment of funds has been proved. There on their defense, what they attempted to do, they submitted documents here, a bundle of document, which we have raised issues about its authenticity. We do submit that these documents were afterthought. They were generated ex post. They were ex post creations to justify those two. And they were not, in the attempt to justify, they only justified two million shillings when they had an onerous obligation of justifying 78 million. Those documents were not signed, they were not examined, they did not comply to elementary accounting standards applicable to any accounts department in a public institution. So we do ask the Senate to disregard that defense which has been put forward and know that 70 million shillings as we sit here today has not been accounted. They had the obligation, they had the responsibility of calling in the chief officer of finance. They had the obligation, they had the opportunity to call in the CC finance. They had at their disposal the entire county treasury to come and explain those amounts of money. They have not, and for that reason, we do submit that this allegation, that is count one, has been proved. I'll swiftly move and quickly to the other parts of the other count. The next count is count two. That is nepotism and, relate, and related unethical practices. We do submit again that this count has been substantiated and proved. 
This count involved fraudulent uh, uh, two violations. I'll just pick up two violations because of the interest of time. One was fraudulent misrepresentation of the governor's relatives as technical team. When the governor received an invitation to go to China, to visit China and do a benchmarking on a cancer machine, instead of governor sending a technical team, that is a top-notch oncologist or other technical team, the governor decided to send members of the same clique, which was made up of our relatives. Two sisters, one brother. These are the team which was the inner team. This is a team which was sent to China. And you look at the documents which were presented to the Ministry of Devolution, there was apparent misrepresentation by the county secretary that this is a uh, th these are technical officers. These are technical team. And the document is there. You have been shown the document. And we do submit that the argument has been raised here that no public funds was lost. But the County Assembly of Meru states that an opportunity was lost. Those who have done accounting or maybe economics, I think it is in economics, there's something called opportunity cost. The cost of not doing something. The cost of not doing something. That is the cost which was incurred by the county of Meru. And there was that violation of misrepresentation. The letter was addressed to the governor. The governor cannot run away, as my colleague Mr. Mudomi has said, and say it was not me. The letter was addressed to the governor. She minuted it to the officers, and the officers went ahead and misrepresented, mis misrepresented the, 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 those members of the clique as county technical officials. The other violation in this particular uh, count is the designation of Nefad Kinwa, who is part, who is a member of the clique. This is a clique which had access, power, and influence. This, and the clique involved the sisters, two sisters, and the brothers. It's the one which runs Meru today. So Nefad Kinwa, in order to reward him, when he was in a small job group, without competitive process, and the governors admitted in cross-examination that his appointment was not sanctioned by the County Public Service Board. It has been admitted. Kinwa was appointed as a director, external linkages, without a transparent and competitive recruitment process. We do submit that count two has also been substantiated and proved. I'll move Quickly again, because of the time we have been given, of course it's so difficult to condense all the evidence which have been given within the short period of time uh, which I have, but I'll try my best. The third count is a count three. That is bullying, vilification, and demeaning other leaders. Chapter six of the Constitution was not made in vain. The chapter 6 of the Constitution operates within with other laws. P principles are uh, key above them is the uh, Public Officers uh, Ethics Act and the Leadership and Integrity Act. If you look at those provisions of the law, and I've actually, and those are the ones we have said the governor violated, I'll direct the Senate to Section 9B of the, of the, leadership, of the Public Officers and Ethics Act, which states that a state officer shall not bully any person. It's there. There's also a call for professionalism within the Leadership and Integrity Act. There's also the professionalism means that a state officer shall, shall treat the public and his fellow public officers, now these are public officers, with courtesy and respect. The aspect of acting through others has also been brought forward within those laws and it makes it an offense for causing everything to be done through other persons. My, co my colleague, Mr. Mudomi, has mentioned that the governor is now hiding that it was not me, it was the county secretary. The county secretary has become the bogeyman. But the law, the drafters of the law knew very well that state officers and public officers who hold positions of powers will draw away responsibility. They'll shift responsibility to their juniors. And that's why the law says that you cannot run away from that responsibility. One of the violations under this particular account was actions against the deputy governor. I'll just 
uh, bundle them to that. We've put several violations against the deputy governor. Key among them is that the governor made the deputy gov uh, the governor made his uh, uh, made a deputy the bogeyman, the symbol of hatred in Meru, and by that she orchestrated a well organized campaign to vilify the deputy governor and excluded him from performance and discharge of public duties. That is, attending CC's meetings uh, and performing and discharging all the other functions. Evidence has been adduced. Sufficient evidence has been adduced demonstrating how these actions were perpetrated. The hands out of the county assembly, their letters by the deputy governor writing beseeching the deputy president of this republic, beseeching the chair of the council of governors, to the speaker of the senate, asking for reconciliation, asking for these institutions to facilitate a reconciliation between her and uh, between him and, uh, and his, uh, uh, the boss, that is the governor. There are memos which we have submitted demonstrating whereby the deputy governor is asking for simple facilitations like repairs for his cars, fuel for his car, staff, and, this, and the like. We do submit that this uh, violation, this specific violation has been demonstrated. What the governor has done has turned the battle on the deputy governor. Instead of justifying or explaining, now the deputy governor has become even the the author of this impeachment proceedings. They have created a narrative around WhatsApp messages where the governor proceeded to engage in cyberbullying. Cyberbullying in WhatsApp. The governor is on WhatsApp group and there she has not disputed those screenshots. She has not disputed authenticity the context of those screenshots. You can see the governor posting and talking about and the DG mobilized fewer levies. Some people will find a way of defecating avocado seed. It's there. She has admitted that. She, she, is, she has admitted that. Another posting. He thinks I'm the type of person who can be scared. That's a governor. And this is on a WhatsApp forum or WhatsApp group which consists public members, members of the public, senior officers of the county, junior officers of the county, and here it is the governor now vilifying a, past, a, state, another, a, a fellow state officer, which is in clear breach of, in clear breach and violation of the provisions of the leadership and integrity, chapter 6 of the constitution and the public officers ethics act. The other violation which falls under this particular account is that, and this is a violation which was there, and this is a violation which was before this house in the previous impeachment proceedings. That is, persist, the governor has, been, has persistently been making demeaning public utterances against other elected leaders. Apart from the deputy governor, who was the bogeyman, who was that who was the center of attack by the governor, the governor had other leaders at across airs. Those are the elected leaders of Meru. All of them, the 12 of them, including this member of the Senate, the women rep, and the elected members. And this one was done through falsely accusing them of cartelism. The governor has grouped these leaders into one group and calls them a cartel. And this one, evidence has been produced or adduced before this house in form of videos. And I'll Take you through one of the videos which has been played here about Wanyonge. When you weave, Wajinyonge. And you can see the, the spouse of the governor playing a guitar and the governor behind dancing. And when the spouse talks about when you weave Wajinyonge, she does it. So it's basically mocking the leaders and telling them you can do nothing. So that is kind of evidence which has been produced here. We've submitted that. The issue of the governor's spouse has been a hot issue in Meru. What happened is that the governor provides the spouse with the platform. The spouse is used as the attack dog. Instead of the governor attacking these leaders directly sometimes, she uses the spouse to attack them through music 
and in windows. The other video was during the presidential function in Larry, whereby the governor, it was played here, and the governor singled out the 10 leaders, singled out the 10 leaders and called them names, huh? called them names and falsely accused them of being members of cartel and trying to blackmail a regime. Honorable Speaker, we do submit that this, this count three, that is bullying, vilification, and demeaning of other leaders has been proved. Before I jump to that one, we brought a witness who is a member of parliament. That is Honorable Mugambi the Indikiri. He is a chair of uh, the Meru uh, the members of parliament caucus and explain to details the pain and suffering they have undergone as leaders by the actions of the governor vilifying them and what he felt together with the other members when they were vilified during the presidential meeting when they, he felt insulted demeaned humiliated when they are not provoked the governor we do submit that this allegation has been substantiated I'm moving quickly to my fourth count. The other count, but a speaker, the other count which was brought before this house, which we believe is something which this house needs to look at deeply, includes the violation of the law. Count four is illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers. The violations are there in the chat sheet, the specific laws which have been violated. I'll mention a brief, I'll, a brief violations, a few violations which are there. One is the legal appointment of the chief officers. A chief officer, and a name has been brought, evidence has been adduced, that is on page 296 of our of our document that is on volume two the appointment of kenneth riungu as chief officer without the approval of the county assembly honorable senators and mr speaker the county government act that is section 45 provides for appointments of chief officers and the method the governor nominates nominates from a list which has competitively been sourced by the county public service board and once the nomination has been undertaken the name is forwarded to the assembly for vetting under the provisions of the public office uh, uh, that is the county assembly's uh, public approval act this particular chief officer nobody has disputed his appointment nobody has said here the governor the witnesses nobody has said that kenneth mwingi riungu mwiti riungu has not been appointed or does not discharge the functions of the chief officer this evidence has been produced we do submit that the appointment has been produced uh, the evidence of the appointment has been produced in form of the letter dated 23rd august 2023 which contain a list of appointments which the governor made and in that list you will see the name of kenneth riungu being appointed as a chief officer the county assembly of meru has never vetted this particular individual and this particular individual still discharges the functions of a chief officer in meru this is a violation of section 45 of the county government act the other appointment was the appointment the acting appointment of chief chief officers mr speaker the same letter contains the names of several chief officers who were appointed that is edwin mutuma murangiri kenneth uh, gitobu nikata these were appointed as acting chief officers without the requisite competitive recruitment and recommendations by the county public service board evidence has been produced in form of a memo by the county public service board warning the chief officers against making acting appointments without the authority of the county public service board and the county public service board in the same letter in the same memo says any appointments made without the approval or without the authority of the county public service board such appointments shall be null and void this individual the governors admitted that these were directors 
We found them there as directors and they appointed them as chief acting chief officers. Mr. Speaker, I've never in my history, in my brief history in life, that is, I've never seen a director being appointed a permanent, that is a principal secretary. In case there's a vacancy in the office of a principal secretary, one of the principal secretaries doubles in that particular office because the appointment for that particular office is special and specific. You cannot pluck in an individual from the ground and you make that particular individual an acting uh, chief officer. So this one is a demonstration that the governor usurped the powers of the county public service board and made this illegal and irregular appointments. Of course, there was the issue of appointment of uh, traffic marshals. That, that, that violation has been demonstrated. The county public service board, in their letters, they are very clear that they have not approved such appointments. They have demonstrated the same. But in the bundle of document, you can see the same traffic marshals wearing uniform, riding motorcycles, and the governor posting on WhatsApp that these are going to be the frontline officers to make Meru the next city. Who appointed them? The governor circumvented the powers and functions of the county public service board and by herself appointed these particular individuals. The other appointment, the other violation was in regard to the, that is, the, with regard to sending this, the four CEOs of uh, the corporation, that is the parastatos in Meru, that is uh, Dr. Ntoiti, the CEO of County Revenue Board, Paul Mwaki, who testified here, the CEO of Lika Board, Kenneth Kimadi, the managing director. These are CEO of statutory corporations. They are employees of the boards. They're not the employees of the, of, the, of the governor. What the governor did, through the county secretary, of course, they were sent on compulsory relief with pay. It only took the intervention of court after one year. That's when they have resumed their duties. The boards are the ones which recruit. The boards are the ones with the statutory powers to suspend or exercise disciplinary control over they are CEOs. It is not the governor crossing over. I've never seen it in this country where a head of a parastate or the CEO of a parastate, when there is a duly constituted board, is sent home by its state house. Maybe this one is new. The other one, the other violation is this particular one. Those are the violations. We do submit that this is the second time the governor is still being accused of usurping the powers and functions of the board. And with respect to count four, but speaker, we do submit that the count has been proved. The last two counts, which I'm going to move quickly, is contempt of court. Evidence has been submitted here. How, th despite the existence of court orders from Nyeri, Employment and Labor Relations Court, the governor for one year disregarded those orders. And what the court has done, the court has convicted the governor. As we sit here today, the governor of Meru is a convict. She has already been convicted for contempt of court. That is a violation of Article 181 1B of the Constitution, whereby, which constitutes a ground that where there is a, which, which provides that where there is a serious reason to believe in that a county governor has committed a crime under the national law. The governor has already been convicted by the High Court in Meru. She's only awaiting sentence. She has not discharged the conviction. She has not appealed the conviction. That ground has already been proved. That is a, that is a contempt of court. The last, uh, the other one, of course, was... Uh, Legal naming of the road, that one is okay. That one, we have said it's there. The evidence has been produced. The governor has been shown the Facebook posting whereby she's naming the name, the road in the name of her husband. Lastly, I'll take uh, the last one is contempt of the assembly. Mr. Speaker, Section 22 of the County, County Assembly Powers and Privileges Act provides an impeachable ground for anybody who is a public officer who violates, who dishonors the summons of the assembly. The governor was invited to appear before the committee of the county assembly. And what she did 
when she was invited, she wrote back a letter and said, there is no provision of the law which requires the governor to appear before the committee of the assembly. Yet, Article 195 of the Constitution is very clear that a county assembly or any of its committees can require, can invite, can summon, the word is summon anybody to appear before the committee to provide evidence or to give information. Section 18 of the, of the County Assembly Powers and Privileges Act provides, enacts the same provision and uses the word any person. When the governor, our officers were invited, when the governor specifically was invited, her defense was that the assembly goes to the high court, files a constitutional case, seeks a constitutional interpretation whether the governor can be invited, can be summoned to appear before the assembly. Yet the constitution uses the word any person. Act section 22 says that where the assembly passes a resolution against an individual for violating that particular provision, that shall constitute a ground for removal from office. And that's why you see this ground, and Honorable Sifuna does it, what is the content of county assembly, where it, whether it constitutes a violation. That is the only violation I've ever seen on law whereby it makes it an impeachable ground for violating, for failing to honor the summons of the county assembly. It, the assembly can pass a resolution and request and impeach you. And that is what the county assembly of Meru has done. And we do submit that this count, together with the other six counts, have been substantiated. The assembly has demonstrated the same. And finally, my colleague Mr. Mudomi has asked, has mentioned about, is the governor individually liable for that particular violation? She has said all these things were done by the county secretary. He has mentioned about the provisions of section 30, subsection 3. Section 30 or subsection 3 of the County Government Act, which will be my last section that way. Uh, I just want to repeat what you have said. Section that talks about the governor shall be accountable for the management and use of county resources. The governor cannot run away and say, I was not the one. It was done by this officer. It was done by the county secretary. The law places the accountability at the hand of the governor. So the, Meru, the governor of Meru cannot run away from these allegations and say that they were done by others, that it was not her. Mr. Speaker, with that, I rest my case. The counsel for the governor, you may now proceed to make your closing statement. You have exactly one hour, starting now. It's okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and thank you, distinguished senators. My name, for the record, is Alicia Ongoya. I'll be making the governor's final submissions. Mr. Speaker, sir, before I delve into the substantive part of my submissions, and because looking at the program of this house, this may be the last time I'm standing here to address on this matter, allow me with great humility to begin by thanking you, Mr. Speaker, and the distinguished senators who have given us audience despite the great time constraints that we have had to go through in making this case. I'll be failing in my responsibility for courtesy if I didn't thank the administrative staff, the secretariat staff of this Senate who have given us significant support both within this house and in the corridors of these precincts as we found our way around. Mr. Speaker, sir, at this juncture, allow me to proceed to the more substantive parts of the governor's closing submissions. 
Allow me to begin by pointing out that as a young Christian fellowshipping at Esrave Church of God deep in Vihiga County, and as a middle-aged Christian fellowshipping somewhere in Amalemba Church of God in Kakamega County, I have gathered some enduring lessons from scripture, and I will start by drawing inspiration from those lessons. The wise man who authored the book of Proverbs, at chapter 18, verse 17, guides us as follows when we are confronted with matters such as this. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward to cross-examine him. That ecclesiastical wisdom has found pragmatic rendition in these proceedings as I will demonstrate shortly. Mr. Speaker, sir, the governor was presented in the opening remarks by the county assembly's council to this assembly, for lack of a better word, as some form of scoundrel. Fortunately, in this august house, both parties have had an opportunity to present documentary and electronic evidence. Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, when the history of this attempted impeachment of the governor of Meru County, Her Excellency Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, shall be authored, one word will be repeated in that historical text. That word is a mere word, Kibiri. I'm told, in its innocence, it is a stick that is used to stir porridge. Sadly, in that historical text that I've alluded to, that word will have no aura of innocence. I beg to pose the following questions to the hearts, the minds, and the conscience of these distinguished senators. Are we, in making a decision this evening, going to dignify the Kibiri movement that we have seen today by impeaching this governor? Are we, Honorable Distinguished Senators, going to dignify the acts of Honorable Mpuru Waburi that you had occasion to watch today live by impeaching this governor? Honorable Senators, are we today going to dignify the act of the Honorable Member for Buri constituency that we have seen today supporting the other acts of Mpuri Aburi that you had observed by impeaching this governor. Are we going to dignify the acts of the deputy governor for Meru County openly and in the company of the young people of this country that we ought to give proper moral guidance, calling a governor a prostitute. Are we going to dignify that person by impeaching this governor? The governor has been accused of being a leader who disrespects other leaders. Video clips of the alleged disrespect have allegedly been played here, including a song, Wenye Wivu Wajinyonge. On the other hand, the governor has demonstrated to you the scenes that have been committed against her by those very leaders she is accused of disrespecting. Distinguished Senators, 
in good conscience are you going to vote that this governor is a greater sinner than she has been sinned against in good conscience How many of us can reconcile our conscience, distinguished senators, with the fact that it is the men you saw today uttering the words you saw them utter and projecting the actions that you saw them project as against the governor that have actually come to this house to complain against that governor? I've heard of the claim of pots calling kettle black. I never knew in my living history I would come across a pragmatic rendition of what that means. Today was my answer. I invite you to have that reflection, distinguished senators. I have asked myself, I invite these distinguished senators to ask themselves, Mr. Speaker, sir, where did these leaders get the moral high ground to invite this house in view of the sins that they have committed against the governor to find that the governor has sinned against them? Distinguished senators, technology has been deployed in these proceedings. We are beaming these proceedings live to the whole world by medium that will preserve them to eternity. How shall the members of this house, individually and collectively, account to their children and children's children that they ever dignified the acts of these people who have leveled a war against the governor by confirming the impeachment of the governor. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to the peace of our conscience to make a decision that takes that into account. Choices have consequences. Or so, it is a truism. By impeaching this governor, if you so decide, the logical consequence is that that person you saw chanting with the young Mer men of Meru, calling the governor a prostitute, would rise to the office of governor. Is that the desirable outcome you want out of your decision this evening, distinguished senators? Members of the county assembly have brought the governor here. I speak the governor's heart. We do not begrudge them. They have the power to do that. They have exercised that power. Have they rightly exercised that power? Distinguished senators, that decision lies in your hand. You are told that the governor did not present the evidence that she has given before you to the county assembly. Fortunately, this house is a house of record. Fortunately, Mr. Speaker, you have fantastic rules of procedure that of course we can make better as we have seen, and, and I would strongly recommend, hoping time will permit, that we relook at the timelines for impeachment of governors if we have to do absolute justice in terms of filings, in terms of argument of the case. These are reform issues because we are in continuous improvement as a society. But putting all the factors on the scale, we have done well in presenting some records before this House. When you retire, and before you vote tonight, I invite every senator to open volume number four of the county assembly's documents and turn specifically to page number 146 of that volume 
and look at the conversation that is taking place at that page. This is the Hansard of the County Assembly of Meru of 25th October 2023. If you turn with me to page 146, you will see this conversation. Elias Mutuma, advocate for the governor, says, mine will be brief, but I will not proceed until we are given a ruling on the two issues raised by my seniors. We seek direction on how to table the evidence that we have and how we will get a ruling on the public participation. The governor is pleading to be given a chance to table her evidence. The speaker, Honorable Ayub Bundi, says when your brother Omari was speaking, he mentioned a difference between honorable members and your team. He stated that he knows the division in this house and he cannot step on the other side. Anything you'd like to table in this house must go to the House Business Committee. You cannot do it when you're on that side. You must be on the side where the members are. I was wondering, Mr. Speaker, sir, how was Mr. Mutuma possibly supposed to get to the side where the members are? Was he supposed to organize a mini election in Meru County, become elected a senator for the temporary purpose of participating in these proceedings? I, I don't know. I am a career learner, and I learn every day. It is only allowed for honorable members. We are being told only honorable members are allowed to table evidence. You are not allowed to table evidence. We are going to make a reference to the Hansard systems because everything that you talk is being captured. You can proceed as a speaker. The speaker, we don't begrudge him. He had power to make a ruling. Mr. Speaker, just as you have power to make rulings here. Did he use that power correctly? That is the question I pose to the conscience of the men and women bestowed with the adua's responsibility of protecting devolved governance in this country, sitting in this house as distinguished senators. The conversation continues with Elias Mutuma, advocate for the governor, making an argument. My understanding, therefore, is that we will not lay the evidence that we have. The speaker answers him, how will you table it, Mr. Mutuma? Mutuma is asking him, you are the presiding officer in this house. Guide me on how to table. Mr. Mutuma is being challenged. How will you do it? You are not an MC, eh? That is why MCS enter through the main door, and you enter through the back door. This was no longer differentiation. This was apartheid. Discrimination on the basis of the door you entered through. Whoever entered through the main door had a chance to table evidence. Whoever entered through any other door was denied a right to table evidence. Mr. Mutuma, exercising the persistence of a lawyer that we teach in law schools, continues. My hope is, is now, is now pleading hope, my hope is that you will guide me on how we will lay the evidence that we have, because I'm a stranger in this house. The speaker answers him, we are going to rely on the Hansard system. As you talk, be aware that you are giving your evidence. He says, in desperation, well-guided, a very well-trained lawyer. Whether you agree or disagree with the judge, you say most obliged. Well-guided. May we then have a ruling before we proceed. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, believe me or not, it is this assembly that has come here to ask you, why didn't they table their evidence before the assembly? 
we may agree or disagree with the governor on many things. We owe her a moral duty to be fair to her. The governor has been unfairly treated by the county assembly of Meru, as demonstrated by the county assembly's own records. And that is why we are here. You'll be told, you've been told, in cross-examination, there are other women out there, Embu, Homa Bay, Nakuru, Kirinyaga, are they also facing discrimination? Don't throw the gender card here. That's what the governor has been told in your hearing. Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, those things were said to the person you saw with your own eyes and felt with all your other senses, including the sense of hearing, being told what was going to be done to her by the Kipiri. Those things, those questions. One day, I will teach about the moral obligation of counsel in cross-examination, particularly when particular evidence is now available. Will this Senate, in good conscience, completely overlook the evidence of Honorable Mpuriaburi in the presence of the Senator for Meru County, in the presence of the Deputy Governor of Meru County, in the presence of Honorable Mugambi Muridhania Rindikiri, demonstrating what they did with their hands holding the kibiri against the governor. Shall we ignore that and say she's simply throwing a gender card? Shall we ignore the overwhelming evidence of the deputy governor chanting with youth in Meru, saying how the governor is a prostitute? Isn't that the locus classicus of a sexist remark? Will this Honorable Senate ignore the video clip that was played regarding that purported tree planting event at which no single seedling was seen being planted, but in which clear sexist remarks were made against the governor of Meru County? This, Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, before you is a fellow citizen, sinned in the matter you have experienced with your own senses and presence, being brought to trial before you. Allow me now to proceed and highlight the contradictions in the case of the county assembly. Distinguished senators, when you retire in your private sessions, have these conversations among yourselves. Ask yourself this question, number one. The governor before you faces a charge of usurping the roles of other agencies in the county, doing the work of other functionaries in the county. Same governor, then faces other charges that requires her to take responsibility for the acts and omissions of other functionaries in the county. How will you, distinguished senators, reconcile your sense of logic to that case? When you retire in your private chamber, distinguished senators, Reconcile this for me kindly, because I'm a career learner. The governor is accused of making payments to county employees who are named for in number. Those county employees, one of them steps here and says, he is complaining that he was paid. He told you that yesterday. Then you will be confronted with evidence 
that he is the one who went to court to obtain an order to compel the county government to pay him. That person who is complaining. I've been struggling whether I'm a slow learner, good people. But I want you in good conscience to tell me, if you sat in the shoes of this governor, how will you learn a lesson from that? Because this governor is a human being. She's not a perfect person. She can make mistakes. But she must be confronted by logical claims from which she can draw logical lessons to become a better leader. That's what we do in oversight institutions such as this. But, but if you confront this governor with this kind of contradictions, how does she sit with her team and tell them this is the program of action on how we can become better? Same governor is accused of disobeying a court order because that payment was delayed. And the act of purging was the payment must be made. While at that, and I'll review this issue later, I am glad that in front of me, including yourself, Mr. Speaker, sir, are honorable members of the Senate of Kenya who have served as governors. I have a plea to those particular ones. Please convey the message to your members in your deliberations of just how many cases the governor of your county, being you, was named as a respondent. If for each of those cases, the governor was to be brought here and be impeached, how many governors shall survive in this country? Is that even a sustainable way of oversighting counties? The office of governor is a standard respondent, so to speak, in virtually all claims made against the county government. At the end of it all, as was the case in the case of the four petitioners in Meru, a specific officer of the county government was singled out and told it was your duty, the county secretary, to ensure that these things are done. Go back and comply and come back here to tell me you have complied. Shall we ignore that direction of the court? My learned colleague, Dr. Mudomi Tiankolu, has a legal philosophy called legal sophistry. Legal sophistry, according to Mudomi Tiankolu, is a process where people make technical legal arguments that technically make sense. But when you look at them substantively, they are unjust arguments. Sadly, he has advanced those arguments here today. We don't begrudge him. He is acting on his client's instructions. The Senate, you are to act on the instructions of the Constitution. Shall you buy into that legal sophistry? Or shall you buy into the Constitution? Mr. Speaker, uh, my, my sight is not very good. When my 30 minutes reach and it's shown, I, I would beseech that I, my attention be drawn to it so that uh, I manage my time better. I, I know I still have some time. Yeah, Let me have, deal. You have 35 minutes to go. Thank you. That's consistent with what my chronometer is telling me. Let me deal with the assembly's witnesses one by one. Arimi Mwaki Paul, you'll find the person who came before you denying the obvious fact that his salary was paid pursuant to a court order, even when he is told to read the court order saying the salary be paid. You'll find him complaining that he was in fact paid, that that is his grievance. Why did you pay me? You'll find him the person who went to court to get an order to be paid. You'll find him saying, although I'm complaining that I was paid, I did not return that money to the county government. You'll be told, impeach this governor on the strength of that evidence. He then plays a video clip of the county's 
first gentleman apparently saying that some people will not be returned to work. His name is not mentioned in that clip. The governor is not present in that meeting. The person present in that meeting and not condemning those things is the deputy governor. The person whose case has been argued here more than the case of the county assembly. I sat here and I was shocked at how the county assembly's lawyers spent copious minutes arguing the case of the deputy governor than the case of the assembly. But as the person was in that meeting, Paul Arimi, for the sake of this impeachment, is prepared to forgive the deputy governor who was present there. He's prepared to crucify the governor who is not seen in that clip. Allow me to engage with the, my views on Honorable Mawira Evans Kara, the person who moved this impeachment motion. He has come here to tell you how Okolea Katoto Kameru is such a bad thing. You have seen his active role in Okolea Katoto Kameru up to May, up to sorry, August this year. You'll be told, impeach this governor on the strength of the testimony of that person. At some point, I asked my colleagues, what kind of people do these assembly members think senators are? Don't they have some residual respect for senators? Doesn't there come a time where you say, it's okay, I brought a very big case here, but I was misled. Now I am withdrawing limp one, limp two, limp three, because I'm embarrassed by my own evidence. Let us focus on the following two issues so that we save time. They didn't do that. We don't begrudge them. We take confidence in the fact that this distinguished house is answerable to the Constitution and shall be faithful to the Constitution. Think about this, distinguished senators. Mawira Evans Kara Mweshimewa tells you that Nefat Kinywa is the governor's brother-in-law. He then invites you to take judicial notice of that fact. It is in the public domain. I don't know. If I had a chance to engage senators one by one, I would have asked Senator Haluale, do you know that fact in the public domain? But I have no chance to get an answer to that. Good people, in legal practice, we take judicial notice of notorious facts. Facts like the sun rises from the east and sets in the west. Only a fool can counter argue it. The fact that elections in this country were held on 9th of August 2022 is a notorious fact. No one counter -argue, can counter argue it. To your utter consternation, at least mine, Mawira Evans Kara is asking you to elevate the marital status of Nefert Kenya to that and take judicial notice of it. Who do they take senators for? Will you buy into these distinguished senators? Even when confronted with evidence of a formal marriage certificate, he proceeds with this theory that his public domain hypothesis of the marriage of Nefert Kinyua outweighs that marriage certificate. I would have hoped that as people who have a duty to this Senate, the council who presented Evans Mawira here would have at least withdrawn that part of their claim to save us time. Now think about the minutes I'm spending arguing this fact. We have to do it because they have put it to us. They disrespect this Senate. That's why they are saying they must preoccupy your precious time with this issue to the wire. The star witness, Honorable Mawira Evans, then introduces an alleged relationship between the first gentleman and Edwin Murangiri. He calls Edwin a nephew to the first gentleman. He then asked, okay, somebody's nephew ordinarily is the sister's son. What is the name of the mother of 
Edwin so that we can see whether he's a sibling. He says, I don't know that name. Let me put it this way, Honorable Senators. This country inherited a common law tradition at the beginning of its legal system. <clears throat> we have shifted significantly from the common law tradition because of our transformative written constitution. In the old common law, there was the doctrine of parliamentary supremacy. In the new order, we have the doctrine of constitutional supremacy. But I say this, even in the traditions where parliament enjoyed supremacy, surely it had no power by fiat to impose relationships upon people. Tell somebody, this is your brother from today. This is your, you have been told to make that finding yourselves as Senate that uh, Edwin Murangiri is the nephew to the first gentleman. So what do you do when this man begins claiming inheritance from this family by virtue of your decision? Because these things have consequences. People will present this Hansard eh, to courts in future to prove relationships. Shall we manage the aftermaths? These people did not respect this house. This witness insisted that county vehicles were destroyed in an Okolea event. We asked him, some senators asked him, vehicles in this country are identified by their registration numbers. There is no other method of identifying vehicles. He said, no, he has another method. Which is this method? The method is the affidavit of number 113748PC Kevin Wafula is a method of recognizing or attributing ownership to vehicles. That was novel. I think the county assembly's star witness elevated jokes to legendary heights. The witness tried to introduce a theory that the governor had employed Edwin Murangiri and Nefert Kinywa, who he claimed were the governor's relatives. We've shown there, there was no evidence they were, and as a matter of fact, they were not. It then turned out eh, that these people were employed in 2017 and 2016, respectively, that the governor employed them in the county in advance of her election as governor. I'm just wondering, good people, what do people this protect Senate to be? Can somebody in good conscience sustain this case to the wire as the council of the assembly have done? Dr. Gitonga Jeremiah Ruturi came to this house. I would invite you to look at the affidavit of that witness, but I'll not read it because of time. The very first paragraph of that witness, the very first paragraph, when his memory is still clearest, he told the advocate drafting his affidavit that he is a director of IV Healthcare. When he stood here and was told to introduce himself, he took an oath before this Senate and from his mouth perjured himself on oath saying, I am a director of Ivy Healthcare. Landed Council Dr. Okubasu, exercising that power in the book of Proverbs chapter 17, confronted him in cross-examination. He asked him, if this Senate were to take the liberty and call a form CR12 from the company's registry, would you appear on that CR12 as a director of Ivy Healthcare? He started, and in that moment, he spoke about three other companies completely not mentioned in that affidavit. It turned out eh, he was not a director of Ivy Healthcare. At paragraph 8 of his affidavit, which was read to him, he says that he was surprised upon arrival in China that the, delegation of the, that the delegation that the governor had recommended to Ivy Healthcare were not a technical team. When he arrived in China, he learned that. 
It turned out the man never went to China. He stuttered. Honorable Mugambi Rindekiri Murudania will be remembered by this house as a leader who was captured on video supporting the most sexually offensive remarks against a woman in the 21st century before the country's Senate, asserted by another leader, Mpuri Aburi, the Honorable Member. This are the people that we have been told have mounted a convincing case. Let's, 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 let's face it. I used to be taught, Mr. Speaker, sir, that no one makes good deals with bad guys. Can you get credible evidence from these most incredible fellow citizens? Is it possible? Allow me, Mr. Speaker, sir, to now deal with the case, the charges presented by the county assembly before this house. <coughs> From the very outset, allow me to very humbly, very humbly invite the honorable senators to administer a caution to themselves individually as you consider this matter. <coughs> Individual senators, please caution yourself that the case of the county assembly cannot be permitted to mutate from the charges that were prosecuted at the county assembly. It cannot be allowed. <coughs> Rule 19 of the fifth schedule of the standing orders, which provides for the procedure of the impeachment process before the whole house as we are doing now, prescribes that in presenting its evidence, the assembly shall not introduce any new evidence that was not a part of the allegations against the governor by the county assembly as forwarded by the speaker of the county assembly to the speaker of the Senate. This case cannot be allowed to mutate. There must be logic behind this. The logic is there must be definitiveness on what the governor is responding to. Allow me to deal with charges one, sorry, counts one and five together. These counts are found in the Assembly's Documents, Volume 1. Count 1 has four specific allegations. Allegation number one, that the governor has violated certain provisions of the Constitution and the law, they are specified, they are not read them, by engagement, connivance, and stroke or complicity in the following. First, Honorable Senators, allow me to tell you this charge is duplex. It is a defective charge. If not for anything else, Mr. Speaker, sir, this means that you must discourage this form of drafting. It is poor drafting. The governor has to elect whether she is going to defend herself against engaging in those acts, against conniving in those acts, or against complicity in those acts. In law, that's an impossible task. What the Senate my apologies, what the county assembly has done is to cast a wide net in the words of the fishing vocabulary in the hope that it may you know, catch crabs, fish and perhaps you know some snakes so that you say anyway we may have grabbed a lot of snakes but there's one fish so vote for this fish it's a poor way of dealing with a case of this nature. A case of this nature requires military precision in the charges. Be that as it may, the governor is accused of doing those things in the form of 
embezzlement of county funds through the governor's sisters, Rose Kenya Guantai and Miriam Guantai, brother Kenneth Guantai Muragiri, brother-in-law Nefat Kinywa and nephew to the governor's husband, Edwin Mutuma Murangiri, all of whom are now collectively referred to as the governor's relatives, period. But the governor comes to this court and says, no, I want to give you evidence to show that I have not embezzled any funds through these people. How will I do this? I will give you vouchers to show what each of these people is being paid for. That is a sufficient answer to this charge. You are then told, no, he has not accounted for 70 million shillings. Honorable Senators, where is the charge for failure to account for 70 million shillings that the governor is supposed to respond to in that form? Number two, where is the charge of failure to account for 78 million shillings? Because if that charge came as such, then the governor would have been under an obligation to secure her finance people to give her material in respect of all the 78 million. Then we can interrogate the material one by one. Is this credible? Is this not credible? And so forth. Once we have supplied that, we must show a causal connection between that money and the person of the governor. The governor was taken through a fairly humiliating exercise. She was reduced to a clerical officer. You, you are senators, you are state officers, you get impressed. You know the clerical process of dealing with a single impressed at a time. Mr. Speaker, sir, if you were personally to be held responsible for the impressed process in this house, would you possibly transact the business of this house? That is a matter this house must reflect on in your private moment before you take a vote. Even the clerk who is the administrative head of this house, if he was told to personally explain each of the individual signatures in every signature of a hundred vouchers, would that be possible? Allow me to tell you why this charge is premature. An audit process presents a different environment because an audit process, the auditor comes, receives documents, reviews them, asks questions, people go back to the drawing board, review their own material, come back. The whole process takes time until we have a report. Now here is where you file documents and you are bound by those documents. There's no feedback. So in this case, we have no audit report. The county assembly should have been patient for the auditor to audit these accounts, raise specific audit queries, fail to get answers to those audit queries, then mount a case based on the specific audit queries that are not answered. What has happened by counsel for the assembly before you is a sad commentary on how not to prosecute an impeachment motion. The council, governor is accused. Council, you have um, 15 minutes. That's okay, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you so much. The governor is accused of withdrawing county funds under the guise of payment for various supplies by the governor's relatives, yet they, the governor's relatives, are ineligible to tender for or supply any goods or services to the county. Council for the assembly, in cross-examining the governor, completely misled this house. And I was saddened because council have a duty of candor. Despite our sectarian interests, council have a duty of candor. When you retire, honorable senators, look at volume two of the county assembly's documents. When you look at volume two of the county assembly's documents, you will discover that from page one to page 29, from page one to page 29 is a letter by Turanira Salesio Mutuma to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission and some attachments. 
that is crucial, honorable senators. Among those attachments is a table prepared by the said Celasio, Salesio, running from page four to page 14. Page four to page 14 is not an if miss extract. Page four to page 14 is a table prepared in word format, in Microsoft word format by Salesio. That's important because that question was put as if this is an if miss extract. It is in this table, good senators, that at page six, at, in row number four, you will find an entry called hospital supplies. This is Salesio writing those words. It is not if miss in which this is entered. It is Salesio. A person who was not brought here, we were wondering whether he's a, a real human being or he could just be taking care of his God somewhere. At page 11, in row three, you will find hospital supplies, another entered record by Salesio, not from the IFMIS. The governor's case before you is this, that if you proceed to page 17 to 29, where the IFMIS extract is, and you look at the corresponding voucher numbers to these things Salesio has written, you will find in the IFMIS extract, these are hospitality supplies. That's the governor's case before you. So the impression created by my learned colleague, Mr. Mud Dr. Mudomi Tiankolo, that this entry hospital supplies is an entry made by the county staff in IFMIS is a pure lie, sadly, from council. When you continue looking at those charges, I'm more interested in count one, because the other counts, they, they, they are the kind of counts that I can say fall on their own weight. But this one here, somebody tried to point at invoices in a manner that was rather frustrating for anyone who understands this process. In fact, when I sat where I was sitting preparing my submissions, because I was not in this house, I presumed that either counsel for the first, for the assembly did not understand the impress system of government. Fortunately for us, this Senate works on impress systems. Count C, sorry, allegation C. So, 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 sorry, Mr. Speaker, before I forget. So the charge here is making various supplies. And that's why we supply only vouchers that show you what these payments are for. They are not for supplies. They are for particular recurrent expenses, that's all. So we are not accounting for 78 million shillings. We are just responding to this allegation. Thirdly, we are accused of paying full salary and benefits. In fact, those vouchers and those if miss entries are only relevant in respect to allegations A and B. When it comes to C, I have already mentioned to you that these payments were made pursuant to a court order. The lesser I say about that, the better. Count D says diversion or misuse of county resources, including funds or motor vehicles, to run the governor's private entity. You asked yourselves which motor vehicle, you are told no, go to the affidavit of police constable, you'll get it there. A very strange way of identifying a motor vehicle. I'm open to learning. I was not willing to learn that one. Allow me to demonstrate. Sorry. Just speak at once, so I have 10 minutes. Thank you so much. The governor was accused of nepotism and related unethical charges. Sorry, practices. Before I argue that, when counsel for the county assembly, Mr. Nguele stood here and told you that they have proved that Kathure Rukania is among those who are paid money that's not accounted for, 
I asked myself, look at the 39 allegations before you, 39, and point out to me where the name Kathure Rukania appears, even appears in the 39 allegations, so that the governor can now take the task of explaining him. The county assembly has taken a strange stance before this assembly. I'm saddened if this is the trajectory of impeachment. Charge two is about nepotism and related charges. One of the claims here is that the governor sent her unqualified technical team to China. Even when the county assembly witnesses are given their own documents saying the purpose of this trip or this request for clearance was to prepare and guide on the visit. They will express words. They insisted that no ignore those words in their own documents. They were shown the invitation letter to China at page 79 of volume 2 of the assembly documents. They were asked, show us which part of this invitation is inviting technical cancer experts. They were unable to show it, but they have come here in closing submissions to insist that that was the nature of the invitation. It is a rule of ethics in trial advocacy that an advocate must never submit outside the evidence. Counsel for the assembly have breached that rule of ethics. They have said that the governor misrepresented to the Minister of Devolution that these were technical people. They are told, okay, these people are said in a letter dated 29th May 2023 to be technical staff. Who is technical staff? Isn't the governor's security a technical security staff? Isn't the governor's PA a technical administrative staff? Where, where, which, where was that word technical staff defined as a term of art? They can't show you. Then they say, we ask them, okay, the, the next week, the same county government writes the Minister of Devolution specifying these people's names and their designation, which you confirm is correct. So if they intended to mislead, where are they now clearly spelling out eh, these people's designation before these people travel? They can't answer, but in their final submission, they still insist there was misrepresentation, a poor way of advancing the jurisprudence on impeachment. You'll be told this nepotism is in the engagement and employment of Edin Mutuma Murangiri, a nephew to the governor. I've spoken about that. The lesser I say about it, the better. Nefat Kinywa, the governor's brother-in-law, in public knowledge. I mean, what kind of behavior is this? Assigning diplomatic duties. You'll be told the evidence that diplomatic duties were assigned is in a Facebook post. You are told, okay, read that Facebook post. Where does it assign diplomatic duties to the governor's relatives. It is not there. It's those pictures you see there. If you look at them carefully, they are speaking. Those pictures are speaking about diplomatic duties. Surely, a Senate to be engaged in that? I was a little embarrassed. That's five minutes. That's okay. Bullying, vilification, demeaning other leaders. We have shown what those leaders have done to the governor. The less I say about it, the better. They actually dared and threw the first stone when they had sinned more. Illegal appointments, I'll, just, I'll, 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 I'll talk about this because this is statutory and I, want, um, I'm, I have an obligation to guide this Senate on the law. I will refer this Senate to section 64 of the County Government Act. It says, Acting appointments shall be made only by the lawful appointing authority and for a specified period. It then says, nothing in this section, nothing that that previous section has said shall prevent a public officer, like the governor here, like the county secretary, those are public officers, from deploying another officer to perform the duties vested in another office during temporary absence, during a vacancy that office, you will listen to the case of the county assembly. They will keep quiet on section 64, subsection 4, sorry, 
as if it does not exist. But let's move just further, Senators. Subsection 5 says, if it comes to the attention of the County Public Service Board that a public officer has purportedly made an acting appointment, delegation or deployment as the case may be, contrary to the provisions of this section, the County Public Service Board shall take necessary corrective action. This is something that the law prescribes its own procedure of remedying. Why would we use a sledgehammer of an impeachment when the law actually prescribes a lesser restrictive measure that can solve the problem? That's what the county assembly has engaged you in. Naming a public road after the husband. Show us the road. Oh, let's go to Facebook. You'll find the... Surely, Senate has been engaged in that argument. I thought they would drop it in their final argument, Kansas stood here and insisted we have produced compelling evidence in a Facebook post. That's elevating jokes to new house. Contempt of the assembly. One, task to explain where that offense is found in statute. The witness, of course, stuttered. The governor has contextualized all her responses to the county assembly. May I just inform the Senate? You have summoned governors here who have said, let us go to court and interpret the scope of your powers as Senate to invite us, to interrogate us. And you have engaged them in court. That is development of our law. That is not contempt of the assembly. The governor ought to be praised. Is this governor a peacemaker? You saw her with MCS, launching projects in their wards giving them the opportunity to shine by being the ones who read those projects. You are politicians. You know what that means in terms of dignifying and improving the stature of those MCS. I say, true to Howard, this governor is a foremost peacemaker. It matters not whether she shall be brought here a hundred times. You cannot victimize her because those who torment her are tireless in their torments against her. I beseech you, Senators, to vote against each of these charges overwhelmingly in the interest of your individual and collective conscience. I rest the Governor's case. Senator Akio Mutata, kindly take your seat. Take your seat, Senator Muma. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, following the conclusion of the closing remarks by the Council for the County Assembly and that of the Governor, Rule 27 of the Rules of Procedure when considering the proposed removal of Governor in plenary provides as follows that the Senate shall proceed into a camera session to deliberate on the issues raised. I now therefore direct that all members of public, including the media, to withdraw from the galleries and any form of broadcast from the chamber to cease forthwith. The camera session will be held for only 10 minutes after which the open session will resume as, as per the hearing program that has been circulated. Specifically, the open session will resume at exactly 10 p.m. Once we resume, the parties will be allowed to walk into the chamber and take their space Members of public will be allowed to walk into the chamber. Media will be allowed back to the chamber. That is at exactly 10 p.m. Now, upon resumption of the open session, a supplementary order paper will be circulated. The Senate Majority Leader will give a notice of motion to facilitate debate. Debate will then ensue on the motion in the usual manner. And at the conclusion thereof, the Honorable 
Her Excellency Kawira Mwangaza, the governor of Meru County, will be given an opportunity to be heard. Thereafter, the Senate will proceed, will proceed to vote on each of the impeachable charges. That is the direction of the chair. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that marks the end of uh, the hearing of the uh, motion for in the proposed removal from office by impeachment of Honorable, of Honorable Kawera Mwangaza, the governor of Meru County. Just a recap of uh, what uh, was happening for the past two days. The Senate was considering the motion for the removal of the and one by tweet. I still give you another chance to return my son and we still declare peace. Silas refused. And the son, of course, of Queen Tommy is unable to live with the dignity of being a prisoner of war, committed suicide. When the people of this small country heard that the crown prince had committed suicide, small as they were, weak as they were, vulnerable as they were, they organized a violent battle in which their army, which was about the hundreds of Silas Thank you. Honorable Speaker, I think we have not reached there. By doing that, we have killed the dreams of young men that are MCS today. We still have chance to unite and work together. Now, Honorable Senators, that um, wraps up as far as this witness is concerned. Honorable Senators, we, unless I gazette tomorrow as a sitting day, we will certainly overrun the runway. Looking at the time allocated here, if you lose just a minute, I will have to gazette tomorrow to be a date for us to sit to continue here in this matter. It's about the time factor. We only have up to midnight. So it is about the time factor here. I give you an extra 10 minutes, and we've messed it up. So for those who've, that's why I was giving opportunity to those senators who've not spoken a word uh, since we started, okay? So uh, at this juncture, you can have a seat, uh, His uh, High Excellency, Governor Kawira. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Now, we are moving to a different session where we are going to have the closing remarks, closing statements from both sides. Now, each party will be given one hour to make their closing statement. You don't have to utilize the whole of that one hour. The maximum is one hour. If you can do less than that, the better, so that we can meet the... Uh, midnight uh, deadline. So, counsel for the County Assembly of Meru, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As communicated yesterday in my opening, this is the third time we have an impeachment motion against the governor of Meru. And as I kept telling you, all through and through, from the time of the first impeachment motion to today, the governor's position has been that the problem is everybody else. To use our own words, she is the foremost peacemaker in Meru. Even though I recall the Honorable Edwin Sifuna asking her last year, how do we reconcile the aggressive governor we see in the videos with the meek, humble, Vulnerable Governor, 
that appears before the Senate. And I had the Honorable Sifuna again ask yesterday something about for how long? The question was for how long, Mr. Speaker, can we in good conscience allow Meru County to be in this perpetual suckers of a crisis in which their governor on average every four months has fallen out with the MCS has fallen out that time with all the elected leaders the same problem now that time with the church now with our own deputy and the point I'm trying to make, Mr. Speaker, it cannot be, it cannot be said, at least not honestly, that the Honorable Governor Kawira Mwangaza is being falsely accused, is being harassed, is being intimidated, and what not and what not. I have said many allegories, some of which have put me in trouble with the Senate. I'll tell you a few more, and hope this time I won't fall in trouble. Mr. Speaker, there is a famous book by Robert Greene, which I'm sure many of us here have read called the 48 laws of power and it describes many world events many leaders their successes their failures their mistakes and whatnot one of the stories i love in that book because it is relevant to the matter before you but also because of the event it describes and how it changed the world history. The world will be very different today. There will not be a Republic of Kenya today. Perhaps Britain and France will never have emerged as superpowers in the 18th, 19th century. Perhaps the United States will never have emerged. But for the failure of a leader in antiquity called Cyrus the Great to observe a simple rule of life called knowing when to stop. Mr. Speaker, it is our humble submission that if there was an impeachment motion in October last year, highlighting misconduct of the category now before you. That motion failed because, of course, the High Court stopped the Assembly from debating it. But the point I'm making is issues were flagged about how the governor was running Meru County in that motion. She persisted, as a result of which a second motion was tabled and it reached this house. She was given very many kind lessons. I recall yesterday citing lessons from the Honorable Senator Tobiko. I recall many lessons from the Honorable Senator Karungo and indeed many other senators. And when we came again, just like today, the look was of that of a humble, meek, polite, vulnerable governor. And she promised, as she has just promised now, that if I recall our words, Mary will be a shining example in terms of good governance, in terms of calmness, in terms of everything good. Then, as they say in the medical world, people with conditions, sometimes they use a word called relapsing. 
The governor, after making that promise, and admittedly after the county a joying brief moment of honeymoon relapsed yet again to the very things that were in the first impeachment motion to the very things that were in the second impeachment motion and hence the reason we are before you for the third impeachment motion Cyrus the Great who is our lesson on leaders should know when to stop, when to change tact, when to turn a new leaf. Of course, we all know Cyrus the Great. The reason he is called the Great is that he was a great conqueror. He conquered the known world then from Babylon to Mede to Achaemenids to Lydia. And basically, he was the ruler of the world as it was known then. But then there was one small country he discovered that didn't seem to be part of the known world, of a people called the Masageti. And instead of being content, he declares war on this country. For the record, Mr. Speaker, this country was actually led by a woman called Tommy Reese. And Tommy Reese, when Cyrus assembled his mighty army, Pasha then was the superpower, assembled it on the river separating the boundaries of his empire with his small kingdom, was sent a message telling him, be content with your victory so far and the fact that you have conquered the world and please stand attempt to tolerate seeing me rule my small miserable country with its little resources with its small army and don't attack and he was warned in that letter that if he attacked nothing good would come from it Instead of learning when to stop, Cyrus insisted on a war. Tommy Reese told him, then if you insist on a war, I want peace. I will allow your forces to cross the river without any resistance and will fight from my side of the border on one condition that will fight a conventional war. Cyrus agreed, but because he could never stand another leader enjoying any form of glory, just like our governor cannot start an MP, an MC, or anyone anywhere else in leadership, she must bring them down. Cyrus was obsessed with bringing down this little kingdom that, for no good reason other than his own vanity and his failure to know when to stop. So he pulls a trick, and we have seen many tricks on this podium, of a meek, humble, vulnerable looking governor, who is a victim of very many things, whose defense is, it wasn't me, it was someone else. So Cyrus' trick involved drawing a lavish bash, and setting up the soldiers of this small kingdom to a drink, and then while they were inebriated, he massacred them, leaving only a few, and took the prince of that other small country as a prisoner of war. Even after this, the leader of the small country still offered him peace and told him, you broke the rule that it will be a conventional warfare and won by a trick, I still give you another chance to return my son and will still declare peace. Cyrus refused and the son of course of Queen Tomiris unable to live with the indignity of being a prisoner of war committed suicide. 
when the people of this small country heard that the crown prince had committed suicide, small as they were, weak as they were, vulnerable as they were, they organized a violent battle in which their army, which was about a hundredth of Cyrus's army, actually won the violent battle and Cyrus himself was killed. And were raised by a later reference M C A R E S stroke volume one four uh, stroke forty three dated the twenty sixth of October twenty twenty three and received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on Friday the twenty seventh of October twenty twenty three. The Speaker of the Meru County Assembly informed the Speaker of the Senate of the approval of the motion by the County Assembly and further forwarded the, to the Speaker of the Senate documents in evidence of the proceedings of the Assembly. Further, whereas, pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, and Section and Standing Order Number 80 of the Senate, the Senate has had the County Assembly on the grounds of, for removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Kawera Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County, and further whereas, pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act and Standing Order Number 80. The Senate has also had the Honorable Kawera Mwangaza on the grounds for her proposed removal from office by impeachment as a Governor of Meru County. Now, therefore, Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution and Section 33 of the County Governments Act, Standing Order Number 80, the Senate resolves to remove from office by impeachment the Honorable Kawera Mwangaza, Governor of Meru County, on the following charges. Charge number one, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. Charge number two, nepotism and related unethical practices. Charge number three, bullying, vilification, and demeaning other leaders. Charge number four, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers. Charge number five, contempt of court. Charge number six, illegally naming a public road after her husband. And finally, charge number seven, contempt of the county assembly. Mr. Speaker, we have had an interesting two days. And on such moments, Mr. Speaker, having sat through the motions of an impeachment hearing, the 14th one that this August House, Mr. Speaker, has an enormous duty of having to make a determination of. I have been reminded many times, listening to the proceedings right from the beginning, Mr. Speaker, the words of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 17, which guides us that the first to speak in a contest seems innocent until the cross-examiner takes to stage. Listening to the conversation, Mr. Speaker, hasn't been an easy duty because we have listened to accusations, counter-accusations, further accusations, Mr. Speaker, and so on and so forth. The enormous duty before this August House this evening, Mr. Speaker, is to make a very serious determination. Honorable members, the 1.5 million citizens of Meru County occupying a space of 7,000 kilometers squared of this Republic of Kenya have their fate in your hands and are looking up to you, the 47 delegations of this house, to guide their county towards prosperity and lead them in a way that like the rest of all the citizens of the Republic can enjoy the fruits of devolution. Perhaps, arguably, one of the best gifts that Kenyans have bequeathed unto themselves since independence. There is no doubt, Mr. Speaker, having sat here the last two days and listening to all the things that we have had opportunity to listen to and seeing the videos that have been played, that there is trouble in Meru, that there are difficulties, that that county, Mr. Speaker, needs assistance of this house. How you choose to assist the people of Meru, my good friends and colleagues, 
is in your hands. It is you to make a wise decision. We were reminded that in the next 48 hours, when we went through the motions of an impeachment hearing trial by plenary yesterday morning, Mr. Speaker, that convert yourself from being just an ordinary senator and be a neutral arbiter, be a sober judge, and deliver wise ruling and judgment that will leave the people of Meru County happy. I don't envy you. In fact, Mr. Speaker, after the conclusion of a trial presented so ably by both lead councils for the Assembly and the Governor, people that I know so well and I've had opportunity to work with both of them in different forums, I actually had to seek solace in the Bible again, something that I do when I find myself at crossroads, and read the story that is found in the book of 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16 to 28, where two women, and I intentionally avoid to characterize them as the Bible does because of certain connotations, Mr. Speaker, that have been issued in the process of moving this motion, had a disagreement with both claiming that the dead child belongs to the other while the one that is alive belongs to them. And when they appeared before King Solomon, the wise judge made a decision that many of us do agree up to date, Mr. Speaker, that was incredibly wise and made the right decision in awarding the correct baby to the correct mother. Mr. Speaker, that is a duty that all the 47 delegations have today to make a decision and see to which mother are you going to give Meru County. Because there is a part of Meru that is dead, there is a part of Meru that is alive. The duty that is before you, colleague senators, is to determine who has killed their baby and which mother should be left with which baby. Colleagues, I do not intend to be long on this process because you all understand the constraints of time that we have, the very difficult decisions that we have to make tonight, and you know very ably that by the stroke of midnight we need to have made certain conclusions or at least have converted into the exercise of voting. Otherwise, Mr. Speaker, we will be forced to adjourn and wait until you gazette another sitting. And since it is not my intention, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, to get us to that phase, I want to humbly request my colleagues to take time and think about the citizens of Meru as you make your final determination on how this matter should continue. Because, like we have listened, <coughs> we have been properly advised that there are no easy decisions. Whether to impeach or not to impeach, each leaves us with a very difficult situation. In fact, in the course of consultations, many senators have walked up to me and suggested that majority leader, why don't you as a house invoke Article 192 of the Constitution and just ask the people of Meru that they have a fresh start, that you send all these people packing and have the county dissolved. And perhaps after that realization, then the people of Meru can enjoy the fruits of devolution. It's not an easy decision. It's not an easy task that is ahead of us. To save or not to save is not just about whether you have been convinced or not convinced because every decision that you make when you eventually press the button to vote either yes, no, or even I'm afraid, Senator Sifuna, even abstain has consequ uh, consequences today alike in other occasions. Colleague Senators, this is a moment I know that each of you pensively sat down, listened, and has reached a decision. But I'm willing to be convinced, and I guess that is the exercise that you're about to make in the next one hour. Listen to whatever points you have picked out from the trial that has gone on here, 
and hope that on any of the seven charges that have been presented, it will be good to hear from you. Do you agree that all charges have either not been substantiated or some of them have been? The eventual point that I make, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that eventually Meru will still need us, even after this vote, dear Senators. When we conclude on this exercise and the vote tonight, it is my humble submission, Mr. Speaker, that we'll still need to retreat and think through what options are available for that particular uh, county. I am particularly troubled, uh, Mr. Speaker, because to be sincere, I never knew of all those happenings until I saw the videos today. We must speak and condemn some of the things that we have seen in that particular uh, video. I am a father of two girls, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'd wish to live a safe and a better heaven for my daughters eventually when I am out of leadership. Some of the things that we have seen either leaders say or do, I'm afraid, Mr. Speaker, that is not the kind of world that we want for our sisters, for our mothers, for our daughters, for our wives. And I hope, Mr. Speaker, that because these videos have been brought to fore, it should not just end here in the Senate. I strongly believe that it is within the mandate of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, because these are ethics issues. When leaders say certain things about each other, EACC needs to pick Q and begin to question us so that we behave better and move from this kind of corruption of our moral fiber of our society. With those many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move and request the leader of minority, the Honorable Retired Justice Stewart Mazayo, to second this motion. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Asante Mwana Speaker. Mwana Speaker, kwanza nataka kwa shukuru ma senator kwa kwa utulivu wao katika hizi siku mbili ambazo wameweza kuchukua kusikiza ahu mjadala. Mwana Speaker, huni mjadala ambao kwa mbele ya senate ni mjare la ambao natakana sisi tuusikize na alafu tuweze kufanya uamuzi ikiwa iko uh, yako, yako yako ushahidi wa kutosha aidha kufurusha kutoka kwa ofisi ama ikiwa hakuna kuweza kupatia nafasi nyingine aweze kuendelea huyo ambaye ni gavana uh, mwangaza wa Meru Meru County. Bwana speaker kibarua hichi kama kuna wakati wowote ambao Senate inatakana kujitambua na kuweza kuonekana ikiwa iko kazini na inafanya kazi ni wakati huu ambao inahusikana na serikali zetu za mashinani. Manake wakati huu ni wakati wa kujitambua sasa ya kwamba mtu ambaye amefanya makosa anaweza kuchukuliwa hatua ama mtu ambaye amefanya makosa lakini si ada ya kiwango cha juu anaweza kupewa nafasi kuweza kuendelea. Bwana speaker cha umuhimu katika mjadala uh, la huu wetu ambao umeletwa katika kipengele cha moja na moja cha katiba na vile vile katika kipengele cha tatu cha katika serikali katika county government act na vile vile kulingashana na kanuni zetu za kudumu za bunge la senate kipengele cha 80 bwana speaker kibarua kilichokuwa hapa leo jana na leo ni kibarua kikubwa sana tumeweza kukaa ndani ya hii bunge letu la senate kuanzia mapema wakati wa saa na nusu na tumeweza kuendelea jana mpaka jioni tumefika saa sita usiku na hivi leo vile vile tumeanza mpaka sasa bado tuko hapa 
Wanaspika hili ni jamu nataka kuwapatia kongole maseneta wote walioko hapa kwa kazi yao nzuri walioweza kuifanya kusikiza mjadala huo. Wanaspika wa Kenya wote hivi sasa macho yako katika nyumba ya Senate. Na wanaangalia na wameweza kujionea katika wale mawakili wazuri, wakili abon majabali wa sheria wameweza kusema kwa upande wa Gavana Kawira na kwa upande vile vile wa County Assembly ya Meru. Tumeweza kuwasikiza na tuna hakika ya kwamba masenators wetu wataweza kuweza kuamua uh, mashtaka haya kwa njia inayotakana kisheria na kulinganishana na kanuni zetu za bunge. Bwana Speaker cha umuhimu cha umuhimu ni kwamba sote sisi ni wazazi. Na pengine ningeweza ningeweza kujiuga uh, pamoja na ndugu yangu hapa Aaron Chiriot aliyesema yeye pia yuko na watoto. Pia mimi niko na watoto. Watoto wawili wa kike. Ambao cha kwanza mimi sikuweza kufahamu kabisa ya kwamba kama kuna picha ambazo zinaweza kuonyeshwa na ukajitafakari we mwenyewe kama ni mke wako ni mamako ni ndugu yako wa kike ni mtoto wako wa kike lakini hayo ya kijiri vile vile kuna aina mbalimbali ambapo tunaweza kuangalia na kuona kama kulikuwa na kosa ama hakukuwa na kosa njia muhimu ya sisi kufata ni kuangalia kanuni zetu za bunge na katiba inasema nini kwa hiyo ndugu zangu maseneta mulioko hapa muko na wajibu mkubwa sana sisi tukiwa hapa nataka kuwaeleza wa Kenya wote ikifika time kama hii hakuna ya kwamba hawa wako pati hii hawa wako pati hii tunaangalia ukweli umesimama wapi na bunge la senate tunasimama na ukweli kwa hiyo mimi nataka kuambia wa Kenya wote wasiwe na wasiwasi. Tumesikiza na kila mtu atatoa wajibu wake. Wale maseneta ambao atatoa wajibu wake, kila mtu ataamua katika kosa la kwanza mpaka kosa la saba. kama wamekubaliana ama wamekataa na ukweli utadhihika wazi na uamuzi utafanyika hivi leo hapa hapa ndani ya bunge la Senate. Mimi tu ni kuwatakia kila laheri katika uamuzi wenu uamuzi wenu na imani nao ya kwamba wa Kenya wote kuanzia leo watakuwa na imani na bunge la Senate. Asante sana bwana speaker. Thank you honorable senators. I will now proceed to propose the question which is that whereas pursuant to article 181 of the constitution and section 33 of the county governments act on Wednesday, 25th of October, 2023, the Meru County Assembly approved a motion to remove from office by impeachment Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the governor of Meru County. Whereas by a letter reference MKS, stroke volume 4, stroke 43, dated the 26th of October, 2023, and received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on Friday, 27th of October, 2023, the Speaker of the Meru County Assembly inform the Speaker of the Senate of the approval of the motion by the County Assembly and further forwarded to the Speaker of the Senate documents in evidence of the proceedings of the Assembly. Further, whereas pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, and Standing Order 80 of the Senate, the Senate had the County Assembly on the grounds for removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the governor of Meru County. And further, whereas pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, and Standing Order Number 80 of the Senate, the, also, the Senate also had the Honorable Kawira Mwangaza on the grounds for a proposed removal from office by impeachment as the governor of Meru County. Now, therefore, pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, 
Section 33 of the County Governments Act, understanding Order 80, the Senate resolves to remove from office by impeachment the Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County, on the following charges. Charge 1, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. Charge number 2, nepotism and related unethical practices. Charge number 3, bullying, vilification and demeaning other leaders. Charge number 4, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers. Charge number five, contempt of court. Charge number six, illegally naming a public road after her husband. And charge number seven, contempt of the county assembly. Now, honorable senators, we may now proceed to debate. What is your point of order, Senator Cherange? Mr. Speaker, as per standing order number 111, I propose that we move limitation of debate and allow each and every senator to speak for three minutes. If you can push that one up to around 11.25, Mr. Speaker, sir, then between 11.25, by at least for, we give also chance governor to reply, and from uh, around uh, 11.40, Mr. Speaker, we can now move to vote so that we don't run afoul of the Gazette notice that you issue, and we are able to finish under uh, today so that we don't need to gazette another day. Mr. Speaker, I propose and request and uh, request uh, Senator Wambua to second. Why am I getting directions on what to do from all over? The speaker, I'm a ranking member in this house. Mr. Speaker, I, I second the, the motion by Senator Chalage. You know, Honorable Senators, I need not subject that motion to debate. I will proceed to put the question, which is, as many as of that opinion say I as many as of the contrary opinion say nay, the eyes have it. So three minutes per senator speaking. The Honorable Enoch Wambua. Good. Hey. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I will try to say a lot of things in three minutes. First of all, Mr. Speaker, I want to go on record on this uh, impeachment motion that it is clear to this house, to this country, and to the world that the relationships between the governor of Meru and the members of the county assembly of Meru is almost irreparably broken down. The speaker in the words of one of the lawyers, there is a state of madness in Meru. The speaker, the parties before the Senate to process this impeachment motion have come to us seeking justice. And that is what they must expect. Justice for the parties and justice for the people of Meru. The speaker, this Senate must decline the invitation by any party to take sides and move in a direction for whatever reason. This Senate, the Speaker, was available to the parties. They should, they had an opportunity to approach the Senate Standing Committee on Devolution to settle their issues. They passed that opportunity. Both parties, the Speaker, have treated this House and these members and the millions of Kenyans that we represent to a charade of accusations and counter accusations all aimed at self-preservation and serving certain political interests. The Speaker, I'll give, just give two examples. The County Assembly of Meru has come to this House with allegations of relatives of the Governor 
being used to embezzle county funds. When that matter was put to test, the evidence on record by the county assembly is that one, it is in the public domain that these are relatives of the governor. And secondly, the speaker, they said that we have seen them take photos. And from those photos, there's a display of public affection. How, how are we in Kitui supposed to make a decision on the relationship between the governor and our sisters on account of a photo that I don't even know where it has come from? The assembly failed a basic test to just draw a family tree and show us the relationships. The governor herself, Madam Mr. Speaker. Your, your, your time is up, Senator Boni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, Honorable Senator. Senator Boni, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, so much. Mr. Speaker, the violence, the inability for leaders to work together in Meru is not new. What is new will be how we shall manage it. It happened in Makueni. Professor Kibuda Kibwana was treated in exactly the same way that Governor Kawira Mwangaza is being treated. And he ended up being the best performing governor in the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, sir, the only thing we got from the impeachment of Nairobi was to be settled with a debt of 250 million shillings for the Green Park terminal that has never been used, that will never be used. Impeaching governors is not always the best solution. Mr. Speaker, sir, Kiambu, the, richest, the second richest county in this republic, lost five years because this Senate was in a hurry to respond to political feelings outside the Senate, and they brought problems in Kiambu for five years. Finally, finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to appeal to lawyers of the Republic of Kenya. When you are a lawyer, it doesn't mean you are everything. I have listened to the presentation of Dr. Tiangulu, my own friend, about the evidence of IFMIS. I'm shocked, completely, Mr. Speaker, and as the longest serving chairman of public accounts in the Republic of Kenya, I can confirm that I know IFMIS. Mr. Speaker, if you indulge me, no IFMIS report comes out with one transaction, impressed, 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 up to the end. No. IFMIS report, Mr. Speaker, comes out with what was spent on impressed and what was spent on other expenses. And Mr. Speaker, everything that comes out on IFMIS does not turn out to be genuine. There is something at the end of IFMIS, Mr. Speaker, where the IFMIS report rejects. Mr. Speaker, if we go by that report without subjecting this to an audit report, your time is up, your time is up, Senator Boni. You're off record. You're off record. Senator Kavindu. Order, order members. Order members. Order member. Order Senator Boni. Order. Senator Boni, can you take your seat? Order. Order, honorable senators. Order. Senator Boni, Senator Mundigi. You will be watching this session from your lounge if you proceed that way. Senator Kavindu, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. I want to say that it has been a good time to listen to both parties, the 
Count Assembly and the Governor's side. But Mr. Speaker, if I may be very honest, if there is a day in this house I was disappointed is today. Because when I listened, these are issues that would have been solved at Meru level. Those are not issues to be brought to the Senate. Because there is no weighty issues that cannot be solved at Meru. The only issue that was very heavy for me is the abusive words that those men used on the governor. I cried. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to walk and go because I could not, I could not bear watching the abusive words that were being used to the governor. We are women, yes. We are educated, just like the men. Who, who is that who set an alarm? To wake up to go away. <coughs> Mi Ms. Pal Can you hold that time for Senator Kavin? Yes, please, hold Honorable the time Honorable senators, <laughs> put your phones on silent mode. Mr. Speaker, we are women. We are women. We have daughters. And we need to be given space in political arenas that we may also portray our potential like any other person. We are leaders and we can lead. But we don't need this kind of bullying. Because even if, you know, if, if we are given space, we can work. People Machakos today ask me, was this potential within you all those years because of what I do? I am sure the way I've seen the, the MCIs working with the governor, if they are given humble time and no insights from anywhere, they can work and they can deliver. Mr. Speaker, I'm very disappointed and I don't see anything that can make anyone go. Thank you, Mr. Senator Ali Roba. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, you know, we've listened for the for the the last two days on issues that have been raised by the National Assembly, I mean County Assembly of Meru, and the Governor's team. And as an experienced Governor, I've listened very keenly on issues that touch on you know, the running of the office. And I've picked three very critical issues that uh, com came to light. <clears throat> and also, as I watched, the, you know, the peri meditated position of leaders within Meru uh, that came out very clearly in terms of, uh, you know, a position that really indicated that the governor has become an unwanted person and at whatever cost they needed to get rid of her. That has also come out extremely clearly. And, uh, you know, as I listened very keenly, the examination and cross-examination, and because we used the plenary format, the senators were just at the mercy of trying to internalize what is being shared and the cross-examination that was being shared. And the time to cross-examine was not sufficient for us to get out the information that was required. However, it has been in the last one, 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 one year and few months, we've handled three impeachments in this Senate. By far, this will be the most difficult, the most testing in terms of conscience and decision for the senators in this house. However, what is in question is a very weighty matter, regardless of which direction we are going to take as senators. 
I don't see a solution ahead as a governor who has served for 10 years. Whether the governor is impeached or the impeachment uh, you know, of the governor is not approved by this house. I see sadness moving forward regardless of whichever way we're going to vote. And that has been consciously the most disturbing position for me as a leader who has served as a governor for 10 years. Because I've said, if we go this way, what will be the result? If we go this way, what will be the result? And I don't see light at the end of the tunnel. Next. Senator Ledama. Mr. Speaker, I speak here today as a father of two lovely daughters whom I'd like to see grow, become leaders like the way God has blessed me. What I witness today, Mr. Speaker, is something which negates that dreams if we do not stand and to be counted. What I've witnessed today, Mr. Speaker, is this Senate being reduced into being an internal audit. Mr. Speaker, the lawyers presented something which negates the Public Audit Act Section 31, which is quite clear on the process of audit. Mr. Speaker, sir, Article 228, Section 5 is very clear. It says the control of budget shall not authorize any withdrawal of funds from the county revenue fund unless she's satisfied that that withdrawal is authorized by law. Mr. Speaker, sir, we've been entertained by a charade of just nuendos. There was nothing that you can be able to prove. I am a member, I'm a ranking member of the Senate Public Accounts Committee. And I know the process. I know what IFMIS is. I know the PFM Act, Section 153, 103, establishes a county, uh, county treasury and it puts in the treasurer or the CMC as the head of that fund. Mr. Speaker, sir, I sat down here, and to be honest with you, when I, when I watched those videos, something came to my mind. And I said, you know what? That conference of 1885 in Berlin conference was ill-advised. The British should, just le should have just left us with an uncouth and civilized behaviors. To see a honorable member, someone who calls himself a honorable member, walking across the streets of us, civilized nation, what we call civilized, and saying that certain weapons or certain tools should be used to be able to punish a woman. It's uncouth and uncivilized, and shame on them. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have gone through the seven allegations, and none of them, Mr. Speaker, sir, has been substantiated. We are being, we are being introduced, we are being invited, Mr. Speaker, sir, to get into a conflict of manhood and womanhood. Mr. Speaker, sir, I second the sentiments of the majority leader when he said that it's about time that if these people of, these leaders of Meru cannot get their act together, we might as well call a commission of inquiry to suspend that county. It is ridiculous, Mr. Speaker, sir, and we cannot allow this Senate to be reduced to that. Mr. Speaker, sir, we should know better. Senator Nyamu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have listened very carefully to the submissions from both sides since the beginning of this matter. Mr. Speaker, the million dollar questions for this house and my colleagues is, does this matter before us meet the threshold for impeachment. And I want to quote, I want to quote the guidelines given by the Supreme Court of the threshold of, of uh, conduct of the, um, what the, the MC, the M, the, the council for the county assembly alluded as gross misconduct. Mr. Speaker, is the conduct of the county governor of Meru, is it grave? 
Is it disgusting? Is it heinous? And is it audacious? And all that appertains gross misconduct? The answer is no. Mr. Speaker, we must not, as a house, drown in the murky waters that is Meru politics. We must be very careful that we do not drown as a house in those murky waters. Mr. Speaker, the MCAs of Meru have failed to demonstrate that they can be independent and they can make decisions that are not influenced from outside. And we must not join them. Mr. Speaker, I want to say tonight that the matter before us should not have got here. I do not see how this matter got here because this is pure politics that should be handled at the ground in Meru. I am very saddened, I am very disappointed, and I am not going to be part, let it be known, by those I am disappointing tonight, that I cannot be, as Senator Karen Nyamu, I am not going to be part of ending a young career of the woman governor of Meru simply because she did not take a tea invitation from so-and-so, she does not get along with whoever. We, have, we are experiencing that in Nairobi. Your time is up. Your time is up. Senator Kajuang. Order. Order, Senators. Order. Order, Senators. Can Senator Kajuang be heard in silence? Senator Kajuang. Mr. Speaker, I first want to congratulate the County Assembly of Meru. They have done their constitutional mandate. And if this parliament did half of what the County Assembly of Meru has done over the last one year, Mr. Speaker, the cost of living would be much lower. And some people will not be living in the houses they are living up on hills. I want to congratulate the County Assembly of Meru that whatever the outcome of today, they should not go home feeling that they did the wrong thing, they, they, they undertook their constitutional mandate. Mr. Speaker, today we are damned if we do, we are damned if we don't. Let me make it clear. The misogyny that has been demonstrated in some of the videos, the chauvinism, the incitement to tribal hatred has no place in a modern Kenya. And Mr. Speaker, those are things that we should not be massaging. Those are criminal actions. Gender-based violence is such a grave criminal action that if I had an option to ask the governor a question, I would have asked whether she reported those matters to the police because impunity breeds in silence. Mr. Speaker, from the submissions, it appears as if everybody in Meru is mad. We are in a season of madness in Meru. And that, Mr. Speaker, the only sane person in Meru today is the governor and the spouse. That is what has come out of the submission. But Mr. Speaker, could that be true? That all the great men and women of Meru, including the deputy speaker of this house, are mad, are in a season of madness, and the only lucid person can be the governor. Mr. Speaker, that presupposes and that indicates there's a big, big problem that an, uh, uh, an impeachment cannot solve. Mr. Speaker, we have a patient with two damaged kidneys. We take out one kidney, the patient will not survive. You take out the governor, you leave the assembly, you still have a problem. You remain, you reinstate the, the kidney, the, which is the governor, you still have a problem. Mr. Speaker, Article 192 says that where a county government has irretrievably broken down, that county should be suspended, that county should be sent to a fresh election. And Mr. Speaker, even though we do not have the original jurisdiction on that, I want to encourage the citizens of Meru to call for a suspension of the county government, to send Governor Kawira Mwangaza back to the people, and to send the MCS back to the people. We have been told a lot of stories about who is popular and who is not popular. But finally, Mr. Speaker, let us not forget 
that in 2010 this nation discharged Nancy Baraza of a role as a deputy chief justice of the Supreme Court of Kenya on very spurious allegations. But that has set a precedent that has been part of our jurisprudence. If we were to go with that threshold, then Governor Kawira Mwangaza should go home. Senator Wakoli. Asante Mheshimiwa Speaker. Nashukuru sana kwa nafasi hii ambayo nimepewa kujadili hoja nzito za usawa haki na ukweli. Mheshimiwa ukipewa nafasi kutafuta amani kati ya wenda wazimu wawili. Unashindwa utaanza vipi? Ama iwapo wewe ni muhubiri na unamuombea mwenda wazimu mheshimiwa speaker utafumba macho ukiomba ama utayakodoa macho pima ukiomba hiyo ndiyo hali tumo sasa tunakashifu matamshi mabaya dhidi ya wanawake lakini pia lazima tukashifu matendo mabaya yanayotendwa na wanawake iwapo kuna ubadhirifu wa pesa lazima tuseme Iwapo kuna matusi dhidi ya wanawake na jinsi ya zao lazima tukashifu. Iwapo viongozi hawawezi kaa pamoja na kujadiliana lazima tuseme ukweli. Kwa sababu sisi katika jamii yetu tunasema maji yasipotifuliwa hayawezi tulia. Haya maji ya meru yametifuliwa mheshimiwa speaker lazima tuwache yatokote na yatulie. Yamefika hapa mheshimiwa speaker yanatokota lazima tuamue ya tulie watu wa meru wasonge mbele haiwezekani viongozi hawa kusema yale wanayosema pasipo shinikizo ama kunyoshewa vidole na viongozi wengine iwapo wewe unasema ni bishop na unasema wenye wivu wajinyonge ni mahubiri yapi tunaendeleza katika nchi ya Kenya Lazima tuseme ukweli tumejadili mambo ya uhubiri wa uhubiri wawe wa ukweli viongozi wawe wa ukweli na bado nitasema fisi aliambia mawe hata tukinyamaza vipi mumesikia na lazima tupige kura turekebishe mambo ya meru Asante sana mheshimiwa speaker Senator Mogeni <coughs> Mr Speaker if there is an image that had stuck with me ever since this impeachment trial started. It is the image I saw of some acts against the governor of Meru. Mr. Speaker, I can be rough in politics. Mr. Speaker, I can make mistakes in politics. But I will never, and I have never descended to the level I saw in the videos that were displayed before this house, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, however much you hate a human being, Mr. Speaker, if you are Christian or you believe in the Almighty God, Mr. Speaker, there are some utterances you cannot make against some other human beings when you are a leader, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, despite the things, the wrongdoings we have seen, against the governor of Meru, Mr. Speaker. We must ask ourselves, Mr. Speaker, when history is written, Mr. Speaker, and we are the 47 of us who sat here, Mr. Speaker, how did our conscience respond to the videos that were played before us, Mr. Speaker? How will the people of Kenya, Mr. Speaker, judge us? Because it is not just the governor who is on trial, Mr. Speaker. It is the Senate of the Republic of Kenya that is on trial tonight, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I want to state at 11.45, Mr. Speaker, without fear of any contradiction, that the vote I have tonight, Mr. Speaker, the one delegate delegation from Yamira, Mr. Speaker, I owe my vote, Mr. Speaker, to the great women of this country called Kenya, Mr. Speaker. I owe my vote, Mr. Speaker, to the women who have faith in me from the count of Nyamira, Mr. Speaker. I owe my vote, Mr. Speaker, to the great woman who raised me, Mama Yamokami. And Mr. Speaker, I want to give confidence tonight to the woman who will receive me when I go home, my wife Jacqueline, that I have respect 
for the women of this republic, Mr. Speaker. And when I cast my vote, Mr. Speaker, is to give assurance to my two lovely daughters, yes. Nyamokami and Aliero, that we must treat the women of Kenya with honor and respect, Mr. Speaker. That is the vote that I carry, Mr. Speaker, tonight. I rest my case, Mr. Speaker. Senator Tobiko. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. And uh, Mr. Speaker, throughout this uh, impeachment uh, uh, petition, Mr. Speaker, I took my time to listen to both sides without trying to take, um, to give my advice to my sister, as was expected by many Kenyans and by many people in Meru. Mr. Speaker, uh, the council for the county assembly, Thiangolu, has said that quite a number of uh, charges were like repetitions of the same charges that were in the first impeachment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, then I don't know whether this was just an appeal of what this House had already made a decision on, Mr. Speaker. They could be allowed by law, Mr. Speaker, but I don't think they should have then taken uh, wasted the time of this House, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, because of time, my submission this evening, Mr. Speaker, is that there could be administrative omissions and commissions. But Mr. Speaker, do they meet the threshold of impeachment, Mr. Speaker? As far as I'm concerned, these are non-impeachable offenses, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we have uh, seen it to the, throughout these two days is hounding of a woman out of office through emotional abuse, through intimidation, through slander, Mr. Speaker, through threats on her life, Mr. Speaker. We have also seen tribal and ethnic profiling, Mr. Speaker, issues that I think NCIC should pick up, Mr. Speaker. And I would want, Mr. Speaker, to advise uh, the governor of Meru that whatever happens to you this evening, there are cases here that you should take to court, Mr. Speaker. This is very scary to aspiring women of this country. Mr. Speaker, I, I kept asking myself, is this what is awaiting the women governors in this country, Mr. Speaker? Those who will try to get into the political um, uh, in, uh, positions that are the domain of, of uh, men in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would say that what the county has continued to pursue is what the Angolu had uh, uh, mentioned the other time, that the, the election brought undesired consequences, Mr. Speaker. They must live with their choice, Mr. Speaker. As far as I'm concerned, the Meru people elected Ka Governor Kawera Mwangaza, and, and the will of the people is supreme, and they must live with their choice for the next five years. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Sifuna. Mr. Speaker, on my first day in this house, I took an oath uh, to protect this constitution. And I'm sure the people of Meru will appreciate because they also know about oaths. Why I would insist on defending this document on every occasion. Mr. Speaker, under Article 94 of this constitution, I'm enjoined to be a protector of counties and the interests of their governments. And that is exactly what I'm going to do, whether I know anything about any of your counties, whether I have ever been there, whether I know anyone from there or not, because that is the oath that I took, Mr. Speaker. It has set a very high threshold for the removal of a governor under Article 181 on gross violation of the Constitution and the law, gross misconduct and abuse of office, or where there are serious reasons to believe that the county government, governor has committed a crime under national or international law. Mr. Speaker, my expectation from the county was to meet a case that demonstrates this particular, uh, uh, this particular standard that has been set by the Constitution. Now, there is one telling thing that came from the submissions of counsel, uh, my good friend uh, Siankolo, that in fact the motivation of the MCS does not matter. I want to try and persuade this House that motivation is everything. The reason why human beings do things is absolutely critical to the doing of those things. Mr. Speaker, because what motivation does, it sets a goal for you. 
and then you look for a means to get to that particular goal. We have seen the evidence that has been laid here demonstrate clearly that a decision was made that Kawira Mwangaza had to go as a governor of uh, Meru. And then steps and plans were put in place to be able to meet that particular goal. And that is something that I cannot abide as a senator sworn to protect the interests of counties. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak to two analogies that have, you know, uh, you know, been used quite extensively by the team from the county assembly. One, Mr. Speaker, is the analogy of the scorpion and the, and the frog. I cannot think anyone, I do not think anyone can ascribe the innocence of the frog in that particular analogy to the county assembly of Meru. At the very minimum, it is a scorpion c being carried by a crocodile on its back because both animals are extremely dangerous from the evidence that we have seen here. Mr. Speaker, secondly, it is this much repeated song by Shaggy called It Wasn't Me. In fact, in that particular song, uh, council forgot that there was a collab. There's another gentleman who's singing in that song as well. That gentleman says, I was caught live. There are photos. There is evidence. That is what we expected from the county assembly. In the evidence of the photos of this gentleman on the counter, in the shower, as the council sang, Mr. Speaker, it is difficult for me to get behind the case by the county assembly. I rest my case. Senator Keroche. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, for giving me this opportunity. And for me, I agree there's something wrong in Meru. There's something wrong in Meru uh, County, the, 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 the Moi County. But two, there's a saying that says two elephants, when they fight, the grass is the one that suffers. In this, sense, in this case, the grass is the Meru people. So we must ensure that we make the right decision in a very sober, sober manner. The two, both parties, may I can say both parties, their representation was not, uh, was not uh, convincing both parties. And whatever they brought in here, it is something I believe, as Senator Cavindo has said, could have been solved at the Senate. The two videos at the, at the Meru, uh, at Main Meru, the, two, the videos that we've seen, they've portrayed the Meru men be very se uh, sexual, sex abusers. But for me, I can bear witness, I can bear witness that in Nakuru, we have over 5,000 5, uh, male men, and they respect women. So in that video, please, I ask Kenyans just to know that it's only those male men that were in those videos that uh, <laughs> it's not on the male men. I, I want to take this opportunity. I really want to take this opportunity and advise my, my sister, Her Excellency Governor Kawira. To rise, I mean, in, this, in the world we are living in, women, to rise to the top, it takes a, a while. Or it takes, a, you work five times to reach to the top. But when you reach there, ensure you become a role model that where women want to become like you. Men want their girls to be like you but not their wives because they only admire the power in you but they don't like the, the power. So exercise the power that you've been bestowed by the male people very responsibly so that the men can support you and walk with you. I've walked that journey so I know. So look, going forward, ensure you go and unite the people of Meru. Unite all the leaders of Meru. Because believe me, believe me, in case of any... Senator Ojenda. Senator Ojenda. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker for according me the opportunity to make a contribution to the debate before the House on the impeachment of Senator Mwangaza 
under Article 181 of the Constitution. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is clear that the seven charges leveled against the uh, Governor of Meru have a set threshold that must be established in now settled decisions of the Supreme Court on the impeachment of Governor Sonko and set by the Court of Appeal on the impeachment of Governor Wambora. Mr. Speaker, sir, I participated in both cases. I've also had the advantage, Mr. Speaker, sir, of participating in the impeachment of the governor of Wajir, the, the, uh, Mr. Mohamud, who is successfully returned to office after impeachment. The threshold question, Mr. Speaker, sir, is therefore important. And I just want to address myself to that question. Mr. Speaker, sir, the charges included misappropriation and misuse of county resources, nepotism and related unethical practices, bullying, vilification, and de demeaning of other leaders as, as, as set out under Article 75, 2 and 3, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers, contempt of court, illegally naming a public road after husband, uh, 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 and lastly, contempt of the county assembly. It is imperative that the threshold set or that should be set and as properly defined in the Songo, Songo case should be above, uh, somewhere above uh, uh, the, the doubt and somewhere below, uh, 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 below the, the threshold required for criminal trials. But Mr. Speaker, sir, turn to the effect of impeachments, and this is what should guide this assembly in voting. The effect of an impeachment is to permanently bar an individual from holding any public office. So whatever you do today, you'd be barring Governor Mwangaza from holding any public office in the Republic. Is this a fair act that this Senate should sit back and undertake when voting? I think that is the, 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 the six million dollar question. Mr. Speaker, sir, the gender question, and I think this is something, and I don't want to talk about scorpions and crocodiles and frogs. But in my understanding of what is before this, uh, this uh, uh, Senate, the levels that have been defined... Is up, Senator, Senator Charanke. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, one, I want to congratulate members of County Assembly. I predicted in December that we'll go back where we are today. Uh, during the first impeachment. I want to thank the MCS, Mr. Speaker. It is a constitutional right. Impeachment is a political process. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy gender is not on trial. It is about the competency, the ability, and discharge of the work of the governor. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the loss of 78 million, Mr. Speaker, the county assembly has gone beyond and proved that the governor could not account for 78 million. Mr. Speaker, that charge has been proved. Number two, Mr. Speaker, on the appointment, I was shocked, Mr. Speaker, under Article 183, Article 65, Article Section 30 and Section 45 of the County Government Act, Mr. Speaker, you have been a governor. It is very clear that the governor abdicated. And in fact, on the record, the governor said she had delegated her role to County Secretary, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, number three, it goes to the point, where is the 1.5 Meru people, Mr. Speaker? It cannot be that you don't agree with the MCS, you don't agree with the church, you don't agree with Jurinjeke, you don't agree with elected leaders, 10 or 11 of them, Mr. Speaker. It is not that all others are wrong, Mr. Speaker, until you disfranchise, humiliate, vilify, bully elected leaders in front of the president. Mr. Speaker, the deputy president and the president on several occasions have tried to reconcile what is it hard for governor to work with the rest because they whenever a problem comes they only come up with a gender guard and i tell you there, there is a saying that is popular that what a man can do a woman can do more what has happened there were insults from the men but did you see mr speaker on record and whatsapp the governor herself said to the deputy governor 
you will defecate avocado seeds, Mr. Speaker. So which insults is better than the other, Mr. Speaker? We cannot hide, Mr. Speaker. We must lift the veil. For Meru to move forward, we must stand with the MCAs and give them the confidence to ensure oversight, Mr. Speaker. I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, if today Governor Gawira Mwangaza, Mr. Speaker, is shown the door, Meru will heal and will go for the better going into the future. Mr. Speaker, I submit. Senator Osotsi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, because of the short time, I want to start by saying that... Uh, from the onset, this uh, Senate agreed that we are going to listen to this case, the merits and demerits of the case, and make a decision. Mr. Speaker, I've spent hours here, sitting here, listening to the presentation from the two parties. And I want to say that I was shocked, Mr. Speaker, as an IT expert in my other life, that the county assembly presented to this house an extract from IFMIS. An extract from IFMIS. Order, honorable senators, may the senator be heard in silence. A, a, an alleged extract from IFMIS that is not verified. Mr. Speaker, this house has passed a law called the Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act 2018. And I participated in uh, in uh, uh, in processing this bill. Under section 14, subsection 2, it is very clear that any data from a computer system, especially a computer system that is categorized under section 9 of the same act as a critical information infrastructure, that access must be based on a concept. Mr. Speaker, we have been presented with an extract from IFMIS which has no concept. Yes, they made an attempt to get a concept, but there are other offices which could have provided the concept, like the Controller Budget Office, the Treasury, and even the IFMIS Directorate itself, they never made that effort. Mr. Speaker, this particular extract was provided by an anonymous person called Salasio. This man has not been brought to this house to testify. This man is not known whether this money exists or not. The House cannot, a House of Parliament is a House of Record. We cannot be made to sit here for hours listening to submission based on a document that is not verified, a document that is unlawful. Mr. Speaker, this House has to be respected. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, there were some submissions given us evidence of WhatsApp. And this matter was questioned by Senator Gloria. And the counsel on the other side brushed over the issue. But if you go to another law that was passed by this House called the Data Protection Act, Section 26 of that Act talks about the data subject rights. Senator, Senator Mutinda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I start want to first want to start appreciating the County Assembly of uh, Meru County uh, for the far they've come from. It's been challenging. It's been evident out there. It's been tough. They've walked a journey, like any other journey that you can walk. Every journey has turbulence. Every journey has ups and downs. I note that we have very few women governors. We have only seven. Kawera is one of them. Governor Kawera, this is the second time that you've been returned to this house. I do not agree in any capacity in regards to the videos that we've seen, especially with some of the Meru leaders who are men. Mr. Speaker, I speak as a married woman, one married from the Meru community. 
Meru men are respectful. What we've seen is among the few. It is sad. It should not happen. I speak as a mother, as a mother of a girl child. It is sad. As women, we are very few in this house, only 21. Our positions in this government, they are few. And I want to say and urge, in the event, Madam Governor, you get a chance to go and work for the people of Meru. I challenge you and ask you and request you, bring your house in order. Because as a leader, it is not the members of parliament you will work with. It is these MCAs who have to pass your budget. It worries. If then you cannot work with them, then the budgets will not be passed. Developments will not be done. Services will not be rendered. It will be unfair for the people. If this house decides that it will be a sad affair, the worst to happen, it will be sad because we'll be, have reduced from seven to six governors. So I request you, I urge you, that with whatever results that shall be there, we try as leaders to ensure that we try and work together because without working with these same MCAs, there is no opportunity. I worked with you last time up there, and that is why all the time you'll find that the cameras, the gazettes, will always have my point. Senator Faki. Asante mwishimu wa speaker kwa kunipa fursa hii kuchangia mjadala huu muhimu ambao kumbele yetu. Kwanza na pongeza pande zote mbili. Pande ya assembly na pande ya governor kwa kuja bunge la senate kujaribu kutatua matatizo yao. Na upande wa wote uamuzi utakotoka hapa ni kwamba hakuna upande ambao utakua umeshinda. Ni kwamba uamuzi utakotoka hapa utakua ni uamuzi wa bunge ambao lazima tuukubali na vile vile pia utekeleze kama itakavyo kubalika. Mwishima speaker, sisi kama islamu tuasema kosa moja haliachi mke. Haliachi bibi, kosa moja haliachi bibi. Na tunasema pia kwamba talaka ni mara tatu. Uneza kumpa bibi talaka, akenda, akarudi, kampa ya pili, akenda, akarudi. Ya tatu tuwe na kuwe ya mwisho. Kwe mwishima speaker, governor Kawira alikuja hapa mara ya kwanza a, a, mwaka jana na fikiri na talaka haikuweza kupita. Kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker ana fursa nyingine kuja hapa kuja kuangalia ni vipi ambao tatokea matatizo yake. Mheshimiwa speaker ni kwamba ni masikitiko kwamba ushahidi uliotolewa haukuweza kuthibitisha makosa ambayo yamedaiwa kufanyika na governor Kawira. Mheshimiwa speaker tukiangalia makosa yote ambayo yamezungumziwa hapa na ushahidi ulioletwa haukuweza kufikia kiwango ambacho kimewekwa na mahakama ya upeo kabisa yani Supreme Court katika kuangalia masuala kama haya. Kwa hiyo Mheshimiwa Speaker itakuwa ni dhulma kubwa kuweza kumpeleka nyumbani Gavana Kawira kwa ushahidi ambao haukufikia kiwango unachohitajika na mahakama. Mheshimiwa Speaker uamuzi utakaofanya usiku wa leo hautasaidia yale matatizo ambayo yako embu. Meru samani. Na ni jukumu la viongozi ambao wamechaguliwa wote kuhakikisha kwamba tatizo hili wameweza kulitatua wao kama viongozi wa Meru kwa sababu matatizo ya Meru hayezi kutatuliwa na viongozi wa kutoka Isiolo, hayezi kuchaguliwa na viongozi wa kutoka Mombasa wala viongozi kutoka sehemu yoyote isipokuwa watu wa Meru wenyewe wakai chini waangalie matatizo haya waweze kuamua ili watu wa Meru waweze kupata maendeleo kama ilivyotarajiwa na katiba yetu ya mwaka 2010 na, na kumi. Kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker kwa kumalizia ni kwamba tumepata fursa ya kujua matatizo ya Meru. Na fursa hii ni fursa ambayo iko katika kaunti zetu zote ambazo uh, tuko nazo katika nchi yetu ya Kenya. Na isiwe kwamba wakitoka hapa mmoja amesema mimi nimeshinda la. Watakokuwa wameshinda ni watu wa Meru kupata uongozi na kupata viongozi ambao watasaidia kupeleka kaunti ya Meru mbele. Asante sana mshima speaker. Senator Metho. Uh, thank you very much uh, Mr. Speaker for giving me an opportunity to speak to this motion 
Honorable Speaker, this evening I've been called upon to make a very difficult decision. A decision that uh, if he's in Governor Kawera home, then her career comes to a grinding halt. Honorable Speaker, as it has been said, the threshold of an impeachment has been set in Article 181 of the Constitution of Kenya. It has also been very well spelled out in the uh, precedents that have been set in the decision of the High Court in the Wambora case and in the decision of the uh, Court of Appeal in the Wambora case, uh, case Honorable Speaker. Well, I thank the County Assembly for, uh, uh, because it is within their uh, functions to process an impeachment. When I looked at uh, the charges that have been placed against the Governor of Meru, uh, Honorable Speaker, as a person who sits in the Public Accounts Committee, I looked at the evidence that was adduced in charge number one, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. And Honorable Speaker, as a member who sits in that, uh, in that committee, we all agree that an infamous extract cannot become evidence as to why and how the Governor of Meru is corrupt on this particular charge, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on the charge number two, on nepotism and unrelated ethical practices, when the council and the team from the county assembly was, put, was called upon to come and uh, uh, give evidence in chief as to how the governor of Meru is a nepotistic honorable speaker, they told us that uh, it is public knowledge that the people that are in, that vid in those photos are her relatives honorable speaker. So honorable speaker, how am I supposed to know that uh, you know, a person that appears in a photo is a relative of uh, Senator Olekina, is my own relative, Many people have said that the person who was playing guitar on this, on this video looks like myself. How am I not? Uh, <laughs> how, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> is it that uh, finally, Honorable Speaker, on charge number three, on bullying, vacation, and demeaning of other leaders, Honorable Speaker, the evidence that was brought by the county assembly was of a man playing guitar here, singing when, when you were in Yonge. You know, that was the accusation that uh, uh, the Governor Kawira demeans other leaders. On the contrary, Honorable Speaker, the video that was played by the defense of the Governor, Honorable Speaker, it printed an image of a patriarchal community, you know, deep, painful images that I would never want. My own children, my own wife. Honorable Speaker, that is not the society that we would want for our daughters, Honorable Speaker. It is not a mistake for anybody to become a leader and she is a woman, Honorable Speaker. It is not a mistake, Honorable Speaker, and this is not the way that uh, we can encourage our girls to become uh, uh, leaders, Honorable Speaker, that when you are a leader, if you disagree with other people, they use sexuality to harass you, Honorable Speaker. Now, Honorable Senators, at this juncture, I will call the Governor. Governor Kawira, you have 10 minutes to address the Senate. The Order, order, honorable senators, order. Honorable Kawira, you can take the stand, you have 10 minutes. Order, order, honorable senators. Order, order, senators. Senator. Senator Gloria Oroba, leave the chamber immediately. Heston, please. Heston or the Sergeant at Arms will help you. Proceed, uh, Governor. Speaker. Order, Senators, let us hear the Governor in silence, please. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, Order, Senators, let us hear the Governor in silence. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Senators of this House, 
I want to take this opportunity to really thank you for your time. I know it has not been easy for you. God bless you for your time. Honorable Speaker, I'm here today pleading with this house. And I want to say it in Kiswahili. Matenso ni mengi. Lakini mungu tusaidia. If I have wronged any person in this house, in Meru, in Kenya, I pray for forgiveness. As a mother, a leader, it is my duty to unite Meru people. And I pray for more grace that God will give me power to bring all the leaders together. I pray unto our Father to give me more energy, to give me more grace. Na mungu alipe kufumilia kwingi to see Mary people happy. The members of parliament, our dear deputy senator of this house, the MCS, deputy speaker, if I've wronged any one of you, forgive me. Honorable Speaker, I was elected as an independent governor. I know I need MCS. I've tried my best and I still, still, still continue trying my best to see that I work with everyone. Honorable Speaker and this Honorable House, no one is an angel. I'm not an angel. Each and every one of us has his or her own weaknesses. It is my prayer to God that the weaknesses that they might have, God will help me to as we work together as a team and make many people happy. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of this House, I take this opportunity again to say thank you, thank you, and I pray that you give me a second chance. God bless you. Honorable Senators, I will allow the Senator for Meru five minutes to address the house. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity also to make my contribution to the motion. And uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, on the onset is maybe to challenge the procedure because I wish we are making these comments after we did the voting because, Honorable Speaker, if we hear the comments of uh, many senators here, even the Madam Governor, it's like we have concluded the business and still we are to cast our votes. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, nevertheless, I want to say that this House, on uh, Article 96, one of the Constitution, the Senate, represents counties and it serves to protect the interests of the counties and their governments. And Mr. Speaker, I wish before any governor is brought to this house to prosecute any impeachment procedure or process, 
this house can be able to go to that particular county understand the issues that have been released by the members of the county assembly of that particular county. Mr. Speaker, you know I live in Meru and even tomorrow I'll be traveling to Meru. All the 47 or the 67 senators who are here, they don't live in Meru. So Mr. Speaker, I wish during this process, at some point before the, the governor is brought to this assembly or this, this house, there is a process that can be an intermediary in a way that these issues can be canvassed. And I want to thank uh, Senator Omtata in his, uh, what he is trying to do in his petition. I wish a tribunal can be set up. A tribunal can be able to sit with the MCs, with the governor, with the leaders of that particular county so that they can be heard by that tribunal. But when we, any governor is impeached and brought to the Senate immediately and directly, members of that particular county loses that opportunity to prosecute the issues on our speaker. So on this particular case, let me say that Meru, where I live, we have a problem, and a big one, Mr. Speaker. And you have also, you have one, the governor has confessed that she has some weaknesses that she will pray on to help her overcome. So that tells us that there is a problem in Meru, and Mr. Speaker, it is not the way we put our steps, we clap, we shout, but Meru has issues that need to be addressed. And because Meru is not living in a vacuum, I want to address the end of state, His Excellency the President, to take charge and understand what is in Meru, what is hearing Meru County. I want to thank the MCS. They have done their work excellently. There is no way that 59 MCS can be locked or manned by the impeached the governor for the second the third time. The MCS have issues that they have raised in their petition. But also, Mr. Speaker, you know, and it is these gentlemen and ladies are hand, then we can never solve many issues. As I speak here, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell this house and convince them enough that Meru has issues, has problems. And also, Mr. Speaker, when we see creep sprint in vernacular, I also want to actually challenge also that process of executing these witnesses. When a creep is sprint in vernacular, some are not audible, and then what is translated might not be what was said. So what do we have to say that this creep is very articulate. So, Mr. Speaker, what I want to request my colleagues here, as we make this decision, look to all the counts. Let us not bring down to only one issue about women. This thing called Kebiri, is this, is it an instrument or uh, this used to, 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 to stand porridge? Porridge or Maziwarara? So, Mr. Speaker, so, Mr. Speaker, that particular, that, particular, that particular creep, I, to me, as a Merulinda, I think there was a misrepresentation of the meaning of that particular creep, Mr. Speaker. So, as we also make our decision, I hope the Senate can still review those creeps. Can uh, Honourable Deputy Speaker, your time is up. Now, Honourable Senators, at this juncture, I will call upon the mover to reply. Mr. Speaker, sir, um, I've had opportunity to listen to colleague senators, and of course the views are far and wide, as you'd imagine. Many agree, many disagree with what has been spoken about here. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to humbly plead with the House that immediately after this procedure, please let us conclude the impeachment procedure bill. We cannot be the House that is castigating county assemblies for not having lived up to the dictates of our Constitution, yet as a Senate for three terms, 
we have not been able to guide our county assemblies on how to properly carry out an impeachment. It is my humble submission, Mr. Speaker, that the county assembly of Meru did their job exceptionally well. In fact, Mr. Speaker, because you are drawing close, to me, there are certain charges among the seven that the county assembly has proved beyond reasonable doubt. Mr. Speaker, it is unfortunate that we find ourselves in such a situation where I think like one senator has said, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And I want to reiterate as I conclude, Mr. Speaker, what I prescribed earlier in my moving notes, that either way, whether we save Governor Kaweru or whether we impeach her, Meru people will still need the guidance of this house because there are no easy way out of the current situation. The failure that exists in Meru is far and beyond either saving or impeaching a particular governor. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I want to request our colleagues that let's conclude this exercise. Cast your vote with your conscience. Listen to what the people of Meru are saying. You cannot, Mr. Speaker, openly side and say that certain leaders have spoken about things that do not impress you. While we have seen that actually it appears to be a culture in Meru where every leader, including none other than this Governor Kawera, who's here with us, say very foul things to each other. That is a bad culture that we need not encourage in our politics. Therefore, my final words, Mr. Speaker, to Governor Kawera. I don't know whether we will survive or fall, but Governor, take time to read the Bible. Don't just preach. If you read the Bible, you will find answers to some of the questions that continue to follow you. It cannot be, like many have observed, that all these 59 MCAs that are saying in less than one year, on two occasions, that you are unfit to hold office and they be thoroughly wrong. There is something that you need to soul search and find deep within yourself to reflect Madam Governor and should perhaps God grant you grace and you continue to serve these people, please change your ways and find it in your heart to work with other leaders. That is not to say that I know how this vote will go. It is now the opportunity of the 47 delegations. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm being told to talk to the MPs, but they are our colleagues, uh, Madam Speaker, and you know, many of them actually, anyway, I don't want to be, Mr. Speaker, we are really pressed for time, and I want uh, senators to vote before midnight, and I think I have said everything that I, I need to say. I think if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. I thank you. Now, Honorable Senators, pursuant to Standing Order 84-1, I do make a determination that this matter indeed affects counties and therefore voting shall be by dele delegations. I will direct the Sergeant at Arms to ring the bell for 10 minutes. Now, the reason why the bell needs to be rung for 10 minutes the system needs to reboot. It has been overstretched beyond its limit. If we start voting now, it's going to collapse. So for those 10 minutes, the system will reboot, and then voting shall be done electronically. Thank you. Well, a debate on the motion on hearing and determination of uh, the proposed removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Kawira Mangaza, the governor of Meru County, has just come to a conclusion. The speaker has uh, directed that a 10-minute bell, this is a division bell, 
because once uh, the debate is over, then the members will be going into voting on uh, the charges that have been leveled against uh, Governor of Meru, Honorable Kawira Mongaza. These charges are seven charges. And what we have just seen is that uh, the members, a few members, of course, uh, going by the time uh, constraints, a few members of the Senate managed to uh, give uh, their opinions and views on uh, the evidence and uh, the uh, presentations that were done by both uh, parties, that is the County Assembly of Meru and the executive, that is uh, the governor's side. <clears throat> the charges include misappropriation. meaning other leaders, illegal appointments and usurpation of uh, statutory powers, contempt of court, illegally naming a public road after husband, as well as contempt over uh, the assembly. So these are the seven charges that uh, the uh, governor of uh, Meru County is facing. And um, the 10-minute bell, that is the division bell, is just uh, to put in place the measures that uh, will be guiding in the voting process. Remember, 47 of uh, the senators will be will be taking a vote as directed by the speaker indicating that the vote will be by delegation uh, by delegation this uh, is under the standing order number 83 on county uh, delegation that each county delegation shall have one vote to be cast on behalf of the county by the head of the county delegation or in the absence of the head of the delegation by another member of the delegation designed by the head of the delegation. So in 10 minutes, these members will be going into division. The speaker has already directed that division will be done by electronic voting. Uh, this is pursuant to standing order number 86 uh, that uh, indicates that unless the speaker for the convenience of the Senate uh, otherwise directs voting on any division in the Senate shall be by electronic voting. When the speaker directs that an electronic vote be taken, the division bell, which is what uh, is currently underway, uh, 10 minutes in this manner, uh, but in the standing order, it indicates that when the speaker directs that an electronic vote be taken, the division bell shall be rung for five minutes and the Senate shall proceed to a vote at the expiry of the five minutes or such further time as the speaker may for the convenience of the Senate direct. And that is exactly what the speaker has done for the convenience of the Senate. The speaker has directed that the division bell be rung for 10 minutes as you can see, members are there preparing to be able to come back and take that vote. Remember, these are seven charges, and each charge will be voted on. Members will be taking a vote on each and every charge and give their views and opinion on how uh, these uh, charges have been, how each and every charge has been substantiated or not substantiated uh, with regards to the evidence and the presentations that have been done by the two parties both the governor's side as well as uh, the county assembly side so each member will be uh, casting a vote on each of uh, this charge depending on how he or she feels whether it has been substantiated or not substantiated standing order 86 part 3 indicates that during electronic voting senators shall cast their votes by presenting the yes, no, or abstain button. So as we do this broadcast, uh, there, is, um, there, there will be a broadcast of uh, the uh, voting process, and we shall be showing you how the uh, voting is uh, counting or how the voting is taking place, uh, how many senators will be voting yes on each charge, how many senators will be voting no on each charge, and if there is any that will choose to abstain uh, from voting on any of the charges uh, that will be read out by the Speaker as he guides the House into voting on these allegations that have been made uh, by the County Assembly of Meru against the County Governor, that is Honorable Kawira Mwangaza. We understand that both parties are still in uh, the chambers. <coughs> And they will be witnessing uh, this uh, voting. 
as it uh, takes place. So we will be seeing uh, three uh, uh, results, should I say, or sides, those who are saying yes to a charge, those who will be saying no to a charge, and those who may choose to abstain uh, from voting either yes or no. Standing order 86 on electronic voting, part four indicates that at the expiry of uh, the five minutes, or as soon as the result of the voting appears on the indicator board, uh, the speaker or the chairperson, as uh, the case may be, in this case is the speaker, shall announce the results of the division forthwith. But of course, we understand that we will also be able to view the results as they trickle in, in this case, each and every member will be directed uh, to will be directed to take a vote on each of uh, the charges. And once uh, the voting starts, then we will be able to broadcast and show you how the numbers are trickling in on that particular board. And once the speaker reads out. Uh, the results of uh, the division, then we will be able also to see uh, that uh, the vote has been cast in uh, one way or the other. A senator who is not able to cast his or her vote due to any reason considered sufficient by the Speaker may before the result of the division is announced and after obtaining the permission of the Speaker have his or her vote recorded verbally by stating whether he or she is in favor of or against the question. Remember, once in a while we have seen division taking place at the Senate and uh, there have been challenges on the electronic voting uh, that uh, has sometimes necessitated the House to go into roll call voting. Uh, so we are not hoping that or we are not um, uh, seeing any challenges at the moment, but should such a challenge arise, then a, a senator will be given an opportunity to cast their vote verbally. If uh, the electronic vote refuses to work altogether, then members of the Senate will go into division through the roll call voting. This is also an option that is uh, available in the House Standing Order 88, uh, where in case of a failure of an electronic voting, then uh, the House can opt to do the roll call voting. Remember, 47 members, that is the county delegation, 47 members of the Senate, Senate uh, these are elected members, will be casting their vote. And in this case, for... Uh, for a charge uh, to be uh, to be termed as having uh, been substantiated or not substantiated, uh, then the number has to be 25. Uh, this is more than half of uh, the senators in the uh, chamber or the elected senators. So we are looking at uh, 25 members to be voting in uh, one way for it uh, to be uh, having uh, termed as a, a complete vote or a complete decision by the senators. So once we go back into the division process or the voting process, then the members will be looking at um, having a 25 number there for it to be able to move to the next stage in all the charges that uh, have been forwarded to the Senate with regards to the removal uh, from office uh, by impeachment of Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, who is uh, the governor of Meru County. So once the bell, once the 10 minutes quorum, uh, or rather division bell lapses, then the speaker, of course, uh, will call the House to order and each uh, senator will be required to log out of uh, uh, their electronic devices and then again log in uh, by that then that means that the process will be picking up at the same time and each member will be allowed to be able to cast uh, their uh, vote uh, and then the numbers will be showing on the board and we'll be able to broadcast it to you wherever you are and you'll be able to see the votes as they come in on that uh, particular board. Remember, this is um, a live uh, broadcast that uh, uh, has been brought to you by the, by the 
uh, Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit in partnership with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, we have been broadcasting this uh, two-day trial uh, for you uh, live and you have uh, been uh, keenly following these proceedings. Uh, we have seen members giving their opinions and views with regards to the presentation that has been made. Uh, some uh, indicating that uh, they will not uh, uh, be allowing what has uh, been termed as uh, uh, gender-based violence in a way uh, following the videos that have been broadcasted as evidence in the chambers. And of course, uh, that is one of the issues that we have seen senators uh, extensively uh, touching on in their uh, debate as uh, the uh, presentations were over and uh, the House had gotten into the uh, debate uh, session on the motion. Uh, that is uh, the motion on the removal from office by impeachment uh, of the Meru Governor Kawira Mwangaza. So if you are just joining us, then just remember that we are at the tail end of this two-day trial. There have uh, been uh, processes from uh, uh, Tuesday at 9 a.m. when the hearing process uh, began. And uh, uh, today, remember, it was a two-day trial, uh, two days appointed. That was the 7th of November and the 8th of November appointed for this particular uh, hearing or other impeachment hearing. And uh, at this moment, uh, the Senate is rushing against time. Remember, it was only two days, that is the 7th and 8th of November, to have completed this particular hearing, uh, investigated the case, and uh, did make a determination and uh, find out whether they... Uh, allegations or accusations that have been leveled against the governor can be substantiated or not and uh, give a communication on the same. So what will be coming up after the bell is that the senators will be taking uh, their vote on this uh, particular uh, day in, in a manner that has been termed to be an electronic voting. But should there be any challenges in the electronic voting, uh, then the House may opt to go the roll call voting way. The roll call uh, uh, standing order number 88 indicates that when the speaker directs a roll call vote to be taken, the division bell shall be rung for five minutes. Uh, but uh, currently it is a division bell that members are putting themselves in order to be able to come back and vote electronically. That is uh, the first approach that members usually use in such uh, a case. Uh, uh, once, once they choose. All right. Allow me to hand you over. It seems like the ten minutes is done. Allow me to hand you over for the voting process.
All the honorable senators, kindly take your seats. Honorable senators, kindly take your seats. Senator Mandago, why are you holding hands? Order, honorable senators, let us take our seats. Sergeant at arms, kindly proceed to close the doors and draw the bars. Now, honorable senators, before we proceed to vote, allow me to bring clarity to this process so that there are no mistakes as we proceed to vote. We are voting seven times because the charges are seven. So we'll call one charge, you vote. We move to the other charge, we vote. Until we come to the very last seventh charge. Now, I want to make it clear. These are seven charges. If one of them is substantiated, Her Excellency Governor Kawira seizes being a governor of Meru, even if it's just one charge that has been substantiated. If I call the charge, if you vote yes, it means you're saying that charge has been substantiated. If you vote no, you're saying that charge has not be substantiated. So that clarity is important so that we don't make mistakes as we proceed on this very important uh, Now, honorable senators, voting shall be done electronically. And this juncture, therefore, I will call upon the delegates to log out. Sergeant Tatams, I want you to go around and pull out any card, any delegate card that is still inside the delegate unit. Once you have done that, Sergeant Tatams, kindly confirm so that we move to the next step. At this juncture, honorable senators, you must be holding your card, your delegate card, in your hands. Sergeant at arms, you are waiting for your signal. Good. Now, honorable senators, proceed to log back. Log back into the delegate units.
So before you proceed to vote, I will now put the question, which is that whereas pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution and Section 33 of the County Governments Act, on Wednesday, 25th of October 2023, the Meru County Assembly approved a motion to remove the, from office by impeachment Honorable Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County. Whereas by a letter reference M, Stroke Cares, Volume 4, Stroke 43, dated the 26th of October 2023, and received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on Friday, 27th of October 2023, the Speaker of Meru County Assembly informed the Speaker of the Senate of the approval of a motion by the County Assembly and further forwarded to the Speaker of the Senate documents in evidence of the proceedings of the Assembly. Further, whereas pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, and Standing Order 80 of the Senate, the Senate had the County Assembly on the grounds for removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County. And further, whereas pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, and Standing Order 80, the Senate also had the Honorable Kawira Mwangaza on the grounds for her proposed removal from office by impeachment as the Governor of Meru County. Now, therefore, Honorable Senators, pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, and Standing Order 80, the Senate resolves to remove the, from office by impeachment the Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County, on the following charges. Charge 1, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. Charge 2, nepotism and related unethical practices. Charge 3, bullying, vilification, and demeaning other leaders. Charge number four, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers. Charge number five, contempt of court. Charge number six, illegally naming a public road after her husband. And lastly, charge number seven, contempt of the assembly. Honorable Senators, I further guide that we shall have a separate vote for each charge. There will therefore be seven separate votes. We shall now proceed to vote starting with charge number one, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. You may proceed to vote. Honorable Senators, after you've voted, you sit in silence.
Now, honorable senators, we shall move to charge number two, nepotism and related unethical practices. You may proceed to vote. Honorable Senators, we shall now proceed to charge number three, bullying, vilification and demeaning other leaders. You may proceed to vote. Honorable Senators, we now move to charge number four, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers. You may now proceed to vote. Honorable Gataya, you're out of order, and I call you to order.
the Honorable Senator Tom Ojenda proceed to dispatch and cast your vote. Honorable Senators, we shall now move to charge number five, contempt of court. You may proceed to vote. Honorable Senators, we shall now move to charge number six, illegally naming of a public road after her husband. You may proceed to vote.
Now, honorable senators, we shall proceed to the last charge. Now, to the members of public, depending on which side you are, and depending on how the voting will be done on this last charge, you must be silent. To the parties, it matters not the outcome of the vote on the last charge. You must be seated in silence. To the members who are seated in the speaker's gallery, it matters not the outcome of the vote on the last charge. You must sit in silence. Charge number seven, contempt of the assembly. Senators, you may now proceed to vote. Senator Siango, take your seat. <coughs> Honorable Senators, the results of the division are as follows. Charge number one, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. Eyes 19, nays 28. The nays have it. Charge number two, nepotism and related unethical practices. Eyes five, Nays, 42. Abstain, 0. The nays have it. Charge number 3. Bullying, vilification, and demeaning other leaders. Eyes, 3. Nays, 
44. Abstain, 0. The nays have it. <laughs> Charge number 4. Illegal appointments and, us and usurpation of statutory powers. The ayes, 20 votes. Nays, 27 votes. Abstain, 0 vote. The nays have it. Charge number five, contempt of court. The ayes, three votes. The nays, 44 votes. Abstain, zero. So the nays have it. Charge number six, illegally naming a public road after her husband. Ayes, four votes. The nays, 43 votes. Abstain, zero, so the nays have it. Charge number seven, contempt of the assembly. Ayes, 10 votes. Nays, 37 votes. Abstain, zero, so the nays have it. Now, honorable senators, Section 33.7 of the County Governments Act provide as follows. If a majority of all members of the Senate vote to uphold any impeachment charge, the governor shall cease to hold office. Honorable Senators, the result of the division indicate that the Senate has not upheld any of the impeachment charges. Pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33.8 of the County Governments Act and Standing Order 87 of the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate has failed to remove from office by impeachment Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County. And the Governor accordingly continues to hold office. You may now withdraw the bars and open the doors. Now, to the parties, you shall stay seated as the senators exit the chamber. Likewise, the people who are in the public gallery, you will stay seated as the senators leave the chamber. And for those who are seated in the public gallery, you shall stay seated as the senators leave the chamber. Honorable senators, you may now rise. Senator Sotsi. Order, honorable senators, order. Honorable senators, there being no other business on the order paper, the Senate stands adjourned at till Tuesday 14th of November 2023 at 2.30 p.m. I thank you. That communication was communicated here by Senator Moma. For those who attend sessions, they know. Well, that is the end of uh, the two-day trial of uh, the proposed removal from office of uh, Governor Kawira by impeachment, a resolution that was reached by the County Assembly, but the governor has survived the impeachment. Uh, the speaker has uh, just given the results of the division with the seven charges and the 47 senators uh, participated in the vote. None of uh, them chose to abstain. And in all those seven charges, with all the 47 senators uh, participating in the charge, none of uh, the charges was substantiated. All of them turned out unsubstantiated, thereby saving the governor. And the governor, of course, will continue to... Uh, uh, do her duties as uh, uh, demanded uh, by the position she holds. But we understand, uh, of course, uh, with uh, the 
uh, standing order 80 the speaker uh, will be communicating uh, standing order 87 indicates that if a vote in the senate fails to result in the removal of the governor the speaker of the senate shall notify the speaker of the concerned county according and the motion by this assembly for the removal of the governor on the same charges may only be reintroduced to the senate after the expiry of three months well that has been the end of this live broadcast of the two-day trial and the result is as you have seen the governor has survived that particular impeachment on behalf of the directors uh, for the P PBU and KBC, Doris Gitonga, Bernard Timbe, and Mudoni, the sound, Evelyn Chialo, Ruben Musimi, camera persons, Jim Modiambo, David Geshagwa, Alan Kigali. My name is Kamche Menza. We've been glad that you've joined us throughout uh, this uh, proceeding, and I will now hand you over back to our studios at KEBC. Uh, that's it from here. Bye. Good night.